All right, now we should be live. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well today. Do I start every stream by saying that? Uh, not every stream. But most of them. Yeah. Hmm. No, we start every stream with, now we're live. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's only because we've had so many problems. I mean, yeah, that's fair. Late and possibly homosexual. Well, there you go. You're breaded. You're at least one slice, Cree. No. No slices. <laughs> no bread. Well, it wouldn't be a stag stream if we weren't late. Have we ever been on time? Yes. We, yeah, we've been early before. Yeah. Oh. Huh. We've just gotten progressively worse at our job. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, everyone. But that's the thing, too, is um, we, we can't always be, like, perfectly on time, either. Like, there's going to be times where we're, like, for whatever reason, we might be, like, a half hour or an hour late, so we might just schedule it for that time. So that, yeah, don't don't expect it. Don't expect the streams to start every time for, uh... 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Oh, Pagan. Uh, Pagan, you're oh, straight yes. today. I'm sorry. Just I was like, just about to call that out. I was like, oh no. I'm straight today. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that reminds me. Of, that meme has come back of uh, the guy looking at the, Oh, it's a cute doggy. And then the dog says something. Oh no, it's retarded. <laughs> 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 that means they're making a comeback. It's been fucking great to see. Nice. Yeah, that's always been a classic. Yeah, I remember back when you used to make memes with that template, Cree, <laughs> to yeah. make fun of people. Yeah, there's uh, definitely some people. New for, uh, profile pick when? Uh, eventually. Um... There's an artist that I'm wait that uh, I have to to pay to do some stuff for me, and once I get that, I'll update it. Yeah. Um. Oh God, that reminds me of the of the Sergal version. Oh, what a cute doggy! Actually, I'm a Sergal. Oh no, it's retarded. <laughs> yeah, I went with the horniest profile picture I could find for this week. Why? Because. Yes, fuck you, that's why. That, that's a horny profile pic. She's just, she kind of looks happy, like, oh. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what? She just looks happy. Oh. <laughs> no, not like that. Shut up. <laughs> wow. That's not what I meant. It's just like, oh. You know? Just like, hey, there's a thing there. Yes, there is a thing. Context there. creep. Con my <laughs> my co-host, my chat are all betraying me. Fuck all of you. Uh, two dollars for Rage versus ML. Thank you. How y'all doing today? Well, I was doing fine until like just thirty seconds ago, before I got betrayed by literally everyone. Oh, my thumbs up doesn't work as well. Okay, I won't, I won't use the thumbs up one then. It's like I, I I make an innocent comment. Did you all turn it weird? You had to know it was coming. You had to. I didn't. This is why I chose the fucking the I would profile like to, picture I did. I God like damn it. To recognize that that was a lie. <laughs> uh, Jacob, uh, welcome to OWL membership. Thank you. Um, there we go. That works. What works? Change the profile. But the, the thumbs up one doesn't work as well, but this one, the laughing one works better. Ah. Uh. I actually wasn't even paying attention to that. I didn't choose the profile picture. The profile picture chose me. <laughs> only, only Pagan can answer that. Oh no, I definitely chose this one. <laughs> so happy you're all streaming right now, making my day at work bearable. I'm oh, glad we could help. Um, I suppose we should just go on with the videos, because... This is probably going to go on long enough. 
Yeah, probably. Alrighty then. Um, I've heard some not so great things about this video, but I guess we'll see how uh, see where it goes. Two dollars for Scoopmeister. Thank you. Pagan wants Bug Horse Thing to be his bride. Well, <laughs> Pagan is. Yeah. Pagan is a sexual homo. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'd make an exception for her. Wow. Oh, so there so there is a little bit of buy in there some. Yeah, there's definitely some buy in there. Like I, there there's a few there's a few female characters I've seen where I've been like, "Oh, you know what? Slap a dick on that and I I'd marry it." <laughs> <laughs> God. Well, okay then. That's um <laughs> that's certainly a way to uh start a stream. I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right. Uh, we all ready? We all in the watch together? Yep, yep. Here's stretching over six canon video games, four spinoff video games, five tabletop games, two comics, numerous strategy guides. Wait, 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 wait. I Str had a brain fart there, but did he say what I think he said was canon? Hold on. Well, yeah, it's all 76 is canon. What the fuck? No. Is, hold on. Yeah, because the, the very first second of the video skipped. Yeah. Do we want to try and, let's, do you want to try and go back? Let's, let's try it. Yeah, let's try and get that. Yeah. With a franchise that's been around for 25 years, stretching over six canon video games. No. Ooh. Or spin -off yeah, yeah, yeah. Games. Hold on, hold on. Six yeah. Six canon I mean, video it's... games. Um, I don't Call even. Six is not canon. No fucking way. Even Bethesda considers it to be non-canon, right? As far as I know, yeah, because it literally goes against the Brotherhood of Steel's existence. Like it, it goes against everything. It literally destroys all canon. Yeah. By it existing. Yeah. Like even if Bethesda does say that it's canon, that just makes it even worse because um, yeah, the impact that has upon the lore is fucking drastic. Yeah. Chinese uh, Fallout Shelter? He counts as a thing, apparently. Apparently he does. Yeah. Wait, that's... No, that's some other game, because it says online. Yeah, but I think that's supposed to be, like, a Fallout Shelter, but with more multiplayer things on it. Fallout Shelter is I multiplayer think? in the first place? No, 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 no. With, I said more multiplayer. Uh. Well, more means, like... Fair enough. Okay, I should have said with multiplayer. I think that's what it is. Hmm. Yeah, it's not even six canon games. It's five canon games. And even two of those should really be suspect. Two of the... Well, more than suspect. Um, Fallout 4 definitely shouldn't be canon because I feel it's very damaging to the series. Fallout 3 would need a lot of fixes. A lot of fixes to uh, to be canon. Like, yeah. a fixed Fallout 3 wouldn't be recognizable as Fallout 3 as we know it. Yeah, um, I agree. Like, you could still have it in DC, but the Enclave of Brotherhood shouldn't be there. Mm. And probably not Super Mutants either. Um, $5 from Johnny Off 14 Thank you. Hello, guys. Long time no see. Wasn't able to see you for a while since my work keeps on scheduling me on Mondays. Ugh. Yeah. I, I know the feeling. Um... It's hard for me to have any kind of schedule due to the way my work schedule works. It's really annoying. Yeah, he has he has one of the goofiest schedules I've ever seen. Well, I'm not actually sure if this is better or worse than my um, my older work schedule. When I was again on a continental shift, but it was uh, straight days instead of two weeks days, two weeks nights. It was actually a uh, a three week rotating schedule so i'd work these were 10 hour days too by the way i'd work uh monday tuesday wednesday thursday i'd have friday saturday sunday off i'd work monday tuesday have wednesday thursday off work friday saturday sunday have monday tuesday off work wednesday thursday friday have saturday sunday off so two out of every three weekends i had off one of which was uh a three-day weekend and the third weekend would be a three-day work weekend. Um, 
Kratos says, even worse, Emil said that Creation Club was semi-canon, which fucks even more with the lore, given how there's a fucking BFG add-on in the Creation Club. Jesus Christ. Well, I think that's what they mean by semi-canon, is the stuff that's obviously not part of Fallout, like uh, the Doom stuff, is probably not going to be... This is my best yeah, faith... Yeah, you... This is oh, that's the best faith interpretation, is, like, yeah, the stuff that's obviously not Fallout, the Doom Slayer stuff, the whatever else that's very clearly not Fallout, is not canon, but everything that could fit in potentially is. Right? Yeah. I, I guess it's best faith, if we're going best faith. But it's a mill, and yeah. so I think it, it's literally just an excuse. I mean, that's all Bethesda really does when it comes to canon, because they clearly yeah. don't care about canon. Um, Five dollars from Skids. Thank you. What if I told you a friend of mine says Fallout 4 is his favorite game of all time? P.S. He also thinks Suicide Squad 2016 is good. Ooh. Um, well, I'd say your your buddy doesn't have very good standards, but he if they're his favorite, they're his favorite. But I'd be like, dude, man, you need to we need to get you playing some better stuff and watching some better movies. Yeah. But if they're your favorites, Godspeed, more power to you, but holy cow, man. Again, like, it's one thing to be like, yeah, no, I like them a lot. It's another to be like, no, it's my favorite game of all time. And then it's a game that's really, really bad. It's like, hmm. That's a bit weird. I, I'm, I'm curious why. I mean, I'd be sort of curious, but I don't think it's that weird. I think it's just more... Like, you can absolutely like something that is poorly made or is bad. Uh, even to the point of it being your favorite. Um, but my issue mainly comes in when people say it's good. Because a lot of people confuse, I like this for, it is good. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, I can see people definitely like falling in love with Fallout 4 and having fun with that if you ignore the story and just fuck around, build settlements and shoot shit. It's like, yeah, yeah it's just an open world sandbox. I could see why people could have fun with that. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's just, you know, it's like, but now my favorite game of all time? Hell no. Five tabletop Q comics. Numerous strategy guides and canceled projects as well. So, when you're talking about a series that spans so many years, I don't think you really include strategy guides into that. No, no, nah, you wouldn't at all. That, that's and you just really, really bizarre to me. And you wouldn't really include canceled projects. The only reason Van Buren gets brought up so much in the Fallout circles is because Obsidian cites it as a direct source for a lot of their stuff. So it's kind of hard not to talk about it because it's the thing that is cited in the canon video game. Well, as two different publishers, it's easy for some things that aren't exactly confirmed in lore to be spread around the internet. However, the problem with Bethesda is things that were confirmed in lore get retconned. That's a, that's a major issue. That yeah. Keep, it keeps happening. Yeah, because Bethesda seems to just, like... Th this is a problem they've had for a long time where they don't adhere that closely to lore. It's it's an issue of... Um, this guy's audio is so low I can barely hear it. Can you turn on subtitles? I could try. Um, uh, there aren't any in uh, Watch Together as far as I can see. No? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Because this is volume uh, maxed out. Um... Not only is this uh, Watch Together's volume maxed out, as you can see here on screen, but I've got um, the input from what what I'm hearing into OBS maxed out as well. This guy does talk really quietly. Yeah, I had to turn my thing way up because I could hardly hear him. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, Bethesda doesn't adhere too closely to uh, the lore. And they just kind of do whatever they want. So if something... If if they have an idea 
to write something in uh, Elder Scrolls 6 that tramples the fuck out of something written in Skyrim or Oblivion or, Mor or Morrowind or whatever else, um, they'll do it because they don't really care that much. Yeah. The lore is only as useful as the immediate quest relating to it, and anything else can go fuck itself, basically. Yep. Um, now, they do... They do this uh, because, oh yeah, history is not always written by, uh, you know, someone who's going to be honest. But the problem is, some of the... Um, some of the lore that's being trampled isn't as simple as, oh yeah, a guy wrote a history book wrong for whatever reason. It's literally stuff we see in games that gets yeah. contradicted. Um, they could get away with this to an extent with the Elder Scrolls because it is a fantasy universe and there is a lot of um, questionable aspects to where it's like, okay, yeah, maybe this character in this lore book is wrong. But then we get uh, over to Fallout where it's like, a lot of this stuff is, like, a lot of the lore is documented really fucking well. And a lot of the stuff getting trodden over is from the original games directly. Uh, oh, Necropolis dies out if you don't get them their, uh, if you don't fix their water pump. Then yeah. Billy the Ghoul Kid survives 200 years in a fridge without yeah. food or water. He's just built different, Cree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Necropolis was just full of soy beta cucks who couldn't make it. Well, I mean, they are from California, so. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Today, I'm going to go over five misconceptions surrounding the lore of Fallout. Misconception number one vertebrates are post war. In truth, um, they are post war. They, they were. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact. That's not even arguable. The fuck? Yeah, that was clearly stated in Fallout 2. They're, they're post-war. Vertebrates did not exist in the pre-war era. <laughs> the fuck? Vertebrates are used by the U.S. military. I think this misconception comes from the Fallout 2 side quest, yet the vertebrate plans for the Brotherhood of Steel. The quest giver, Matt, claims that the Enclave has developed vertebrate technology, and the Brotherhood of Steel needs something similar in order to stop the Enclave threat. But there are a few pieces. Okay, you're so. Yeah, the, again, Fallout Two the... pretty much states that vertebrates come post-war, and this is brand new technology that's not I... been seen before. I already kind of love the framing of this. The misconception comes from the original fucking source. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? And, and again, it, well, the thing that's going to be real hard is that the Brotherhood of Steel were U.S. military post, or sorry, pre-war. They know what the military has. They were, in fact, they're in one of the um, army bases that would have access to higher levels of technology and everything else. That's kind of how they survived. So this is just going to be fucking weird. Yeah, what the fuck? How are you going to reconcile this? <laughs> well, I mean, we'll have to see. We'll, we'll have to see how, but mm, who fucking knows? This is a that while the Enclave may have developed their own vertebrate technology after the war, he's... Uh, hold on. I'm, I'm just Whoa. reading these comments on screen. So, uh, this is why you don't put text on screen. I know I'm guilty of this in my earliest videos. I try not to do it anymore. You don't yeah. put text on screen while you're talking, because while people are... People can only do so much. There are some people who can read and listen at the same time and take everything in fine. Most people can't do that. So when all this text is, like, jumping around on the screen, it's distracting me from what you're actually saying. Yeah, absolutely. But he was saying stuff there, like, this thing looks Still ugly. something similar in order to stop the Enclave threat. But there are a few pieces of evidence that I mean, come on. The Enclave... What are these rotors? They're, they're rotors. They look like... Yeah, six propellers. It's... Hang on a second. Hold on, hold on. We need to do the... It's obviously going to be a thing. Huh? He's talking about, what's with all these rotors and stuff like that? It's like, what's what's wrong with having... What's wrong with having six rotors? 
there's no, there's literally no downside to having that many rotors. What, what is, what's the problem? Which part is the rotor part? I'm not super familiar the, with like. He's talking about the the blades on it. Yeah, there's but seven of them. I think he even, I think yeah, he even fucked up the the number that is on it. Six propellers is like okay, no, it's actually is well, it, well is technically it pro- it's two. Propellers. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is it the propeller but, like the entire thing? But it's seven blades, so he's wrong on two different accounts. <laughs> I was gonna show the Osprey because I thought the Osprey had four, but no, the Osprey has three. The the um, Apache has four. So okay, it's like just different styles. Yeah, the the thing is basically uh, based off of the Osprey is what the Fallout Two uh, Vertibird is based off of. May have developed their own after the war. Again, it being ugly as heck does not matter. That does not matter at all. I also don't think it's that ugly. I really like the look of uh, God. It's Need backing up too far. To stop the um, yeah, but there are a few there. I don't think it looks that bad, especially for a military vehicle. Yeah, one yeah. that was invented after the nukes fell. Yeah, I've always liked the design of uh, the Vertibird. I always thought they just looked like a really big, like dragonfly. Yeah, kind of. So I, I just always thought that it, like, it was an aesthetic choice, and I was just like, oh, I get what they were going for. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's yeah, I get definitely it. imposing when it's in the air. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Enclave equipment it's looks of... cool as hell. Fuck yeah, it does. Yeah, a lot of it does. <laughs> Confirm the guy can't even count, so there'll likely be ten points he'll make instead of five. Oh no! <laughs> Paint oh, flames man, on it to make will. it fly faster. <laughs> yep. All right, let's see where he goes with this. Pieces of evidence that reveal Enclave may have developed their own vertebrate technology after the war. These flying military transports were around before the nukes went off. Okay, what's your evidence? Model XV BO- no, this is a game that came after. That doesn't work. Like, oh so this God. is a lot of says <laughs> that these. All two says that this is brand new technology. This, this is, does not work. This is a misconception because a later game said, nuh uh. Yeah, that's a retcon. Yeah, that's a. What the fuck? Yeah, a game by a different company, oh my god, that came later after this, proves that that's not right. It's like, no, that's that's the issue people have, is that yeah. they weren't paying attention. This isn't a fucking a misconception. It's them getting shit wrong. Yep. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Oh, how much you want to bet Jet? Is going to be one of the things. That has oh, to be. I it, bet yeah. you. I bet you that's going to get mentioned. Nirnon. Oh no. Near-non. <laughs> so so retcon creates a misconception. Who'd have thunk? Yeah. 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 This is one of the weirder ones I've like already. We're not even a fucking minute into this video, and this is already yeah. off the rails. I thought How he was going to f- say something in Fallout Two to be like. Yeah, here, but here we see that there were blueprints that are dated before the war or something like that. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. It'd be like, you would expect a, a, a terminal or dialogue somewhere to say, uh, yeah, we found pre-war blueprints of the vertebrates that we were able to build and uh, get working. You know? Yeah. Like, that would be like, okay, yeah, that is a misconception that uh, they're post-war then. This doesn't so- prove that. Yeah, and in fact, this this actually makes the Brotherhood of Steel worse because the Brotherhood of Steel are direct descendants of the United States military. They didn't know vertebrates existed. They yeah. didn't know how to make them. They didn't know anything about them. They, they only think about it now, now that they're literally on the verge of collapse. Well, Fallout 2, they were on the verge of collapse. So, yeah. But, you know, now they're, they're super strong now. All right, let's see... <laughs> Let's see, let's see what the argument is. Yeah. Go to Vertibird up here. Technology with a that that skipped for me. Tired of these skips. Around before the nukes went off. A model XV BO2 Vertibird appears in the Museum of Technology with a placard that reads, 
This is a scaled model of a prototype military transport vehicle being developed by the U.S. military. The XVB02 Vertibird is a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, with an extremely durable armored fuselage that can be armed with a variety of offensive weapons and defensive countermeasures. This is the most advanced aircraft of its kind ever developed, and the military hopes to press them into service by 2085. So I'm okay. going to say this so... before, before you get to that point. I, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to go on to the date. Reading the entire placard talking about the offensive weapons and defensive countermeasures, we don't need any of that for the point you're trying to prove. That is useless yeah. to what the subject is. But even more so, this doesn't actually prove your your problem here. The vertebrates can still be technology developed post-war. This says that this is a scaled model of a prototype military transport vehicle. So they didn't have vertebrates beforehand. They they had a nickname for it. They had a VTOL in mind, but if they're doing scale models and prototypes, that's not a production vehicle. It's not been created yet. These just... are these are prototype phases. So it literally this doesn't actually prove they were around before the war. They had the concept of it before the war. Sure. That's all this says. This is also kind of the lazy fucking Bethesda semi-retcon thing they do where they're like, well, this thing was a prototype before the war, and that's how we can have this stuff appear all over the place before the war. Yeah. All right. Five. Do you, perhaps prototypes, made it into military service, as in the opening sequence of Fallout 4? Again, it's a retcon. I'm sorry, dude. The, the games that came after fucked it up. It was not a pre-war invention. You need to use the game where it is first shown to showcase it as a pre-war invention. Oh my god. I don't understand how somebody can't understand what's, how time works. What's even better about this is this is actually a retcon of Fallout 3. Yeah. Because in Fallout 3, they were prototypes and models. No, they weren't actually in service. In Fallout 4, oh no, they're in service! Yeah, prototypes don't go into service, do they? No. You have a few prototypes that are built, maybe like five. If you're 10, if you're feeling really ballsy and you think that it's a really winning formula. But you're not going to see combat service with them. They actually tried to do prototypes in combat service. It was, um, what was it? The M24 Patton, I want to say, is what the tank was. I think it was the M24 Patton. Um, and it was terrible. It was It was absolutely dreadful. It was one of the worst performing tanks ever created it, it oh. was a, a huge embarrassment yeah wasn't that the one where like a bunch of different generals or whatever kept like giving their ideas and no, that, was the bradley. Like... that was the bradley oh yeah that was the bradley now this brat the bradley is a, is a scout anti-tank armored fighting vehicle troop transport thing yeah um, yeah, it, 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 there's a great one about the Bradley's film. It's not entirely accurate to how it went, but it's it's a pretty much like this is the gist of how Bradley's development was so fucked. Yeah, just, I just don't understand the whole like how do you not understand that when your story doesn't matter if it's a game, movie, whatever, when your story, your the lore behind your world doesn't have any logical consistency behind it. You fucked up. That's wrong. That's you've made an error. You have done something you're not supposed to. How does this not? How is this not a simple concept to understand? How yeah. the fuck can you fuck this up so bad that you don't understand the issue of? Well, just because this one game that came before it said that this is how it worked, and then this later thing is saying, well, this is how it worked when that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's just not a problem. How is that not a fucking problem? No, yeah. shut up, Pig, and it's the original that gave the misconception. Yeah, yeah it's the source that's the issue. Oh, my source is that I made it the fuck up. <laughs> the chaffy. Fuck. 
Oh, um, well, now, now my brain's spinning on which one of the prototypes was it? Like, I think it might be the Chaffee, actually. But yeah, the point still stands. It was it was a really, really terrible, terrible tank. And like it, they went, they put it in combat and it got fucking decimated. And it turned out that all that development was an entire waste of time. The have, Sherman was just better in every single regard. Have you guys seen the uh, Down the Rabbit Hole episode where they're talking about um, this British sub that was fucking terrible? No, I have not. I think it's like the Battle of May Island or something. It is uh, horrifying and fascinating and uh, pretty tragic, actually. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I'll link that to you after we're done. Okay. Yeah, I just remember there was... I, I wish I could remember what the designation was because it didn't go anywhere. They they got in some fights with some German tanks and they got massacred. And then, uh, yeah, they, it was just a... It was dreadful. It was horrible, horrible idea. No, the Bradley's way later. Bradley's a modern day, like, clusterfuck of uh, designs. That's why the Marine Corps uses the LAV instead. Yeah, I got the name right. It's the Battle of May Island. Um, it's an hour-long yep. video that uh, uh, Frederick Nudson did. I hope I spelled it, or pronounced his name right. Um, yeah. Ten dollars yeah. from Doctor McDingus. Thank you. Salve, furry fat, uh, feathery fat. Wow. <laughs> so, so he did it unprompted. No, but it's because he says furry fat every time. It's not what it is. It's not yeah, the name of the show. It's not what we are. He's, he's done feathery fat the last two times. I you read it the last two times. Yes, that is fair, but still. Today's emperor is Marcus Aurelius, the last of the five good emperors. The only thing he did wrong was make uh, Commodus his heir, who started the crisis of the third century. Hmm. hmm. Nice. Knudsen. Okay. Yeah, the Bradley is a pretty decent mess for for how much the good idea fairy pretty much fucked up everything uh, with it, and uh, my, that's my favorite story, the Good Idea Fairy. It's what happens to a lot of military um, issues, stuff like that. Uh, Bear, why the fuck are you spamming so much? Hang on a second, just have a little time out. Calm the fuck down, dude. Um, but yeah, in the military, you, you get what's called generals will go look at all the designs for the design bureau. The design bureau brings out all their designs, and then while they're sitting there, they'll have the little good idea fairy will whisper something to his ears. And it should have gun ports so the infantry can stick their rifles out and shoot at people with it. What? Uh, but, that'll, but that'll compromise the armor. It's brilliant, though. The infantry could then help protect the vehicle while inside the vehicle. It's like, uh-oh. Uh-oh, General's getting the good idea fairy. Sanctuary Hills. And if that wasn't enough, them is a crashed vertebrate with an audio log from the day of the Great War. Here it is for you. Again, these are retcons. They they fucked up. Bethesda didn't want to invent their own aircraft or use some kind of old timey aircraft at all. They they wanted to use the new Fallout thing because it's Fallout. We need the brand. Oh, the British Valiant uh, was there. Oh, there's the A35, which is one of the worst tanks ever designed. It was so bad that it literally failed every single test, including just getting the thing started was a nightmare. And they were like, why? Why did you invent this? Why is this a prototype? What the fuck is it? It almost took the foot off of one of the drivers. Jesus. Yeah, it is really bad. It had some awful turret monsters just everywhere. Um, I got a notification on my phone for our own stream. Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> um, the Zar tank is funny. The Zar tank is a gigantic wheel. What? Oh, I gotta show you this. 
This was a tank that the Soviets developed. Oh, no. Uh, well, actually, no, because this was right before the Soviet Revolution. So this is the Russians developed. That's more accurate. All right. Um, just... All right, I was in the wrong Discord thing. I had to go to the right... Re. Yeah, there you go. What? <laughs> it's literally a giant... It's a giant pair of wheels. This is so it could get over trenches. It looks like one of those fucking... old-timey bikes. Yes! Yeah. That... that ha you, mm. This image makes yeah. me uncomfortable. Like, I, I yeah. really... Hold on, I'm I just getting this on screen. So, hey, wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me give you the better version because you the that's just the drug. Well, there you uh, go. that's the better version. That's the one that won't do the the link shenanigans for your OBS. Actually, it already worked. I already put it in. Oh, oh perfect. Because you didn't. Um, I think it's like the Google link that fucks up. Yeah. Okay. Fair. There you that go. thing is so fucking weird looking. Hold, what hold, the fuck? Hold on, I see like on the on the top like round part. I see four. That's a turret. That's a turret. Yep. It, it's a turret that doesn't move. It just has machine guns pointed in four different directions. Oh. The fuck. And, and the sides, the side wings, those are actually moving turrets, swiveling turrets. I I get that. The the top ones don't move. Yeah. Well, they're just little, like I, ball mounts. They're little ball swivels. I could shoot north, west, south, and east, but At the I can't same time. aim. But I can't aim. <laughs> well, wow. have, you, have you seen the the German uh, World War One tank? Now, uh, if it's the one I think it is, I love those. I think they look cool as fuck. If it's the one I'm thinking. Of. I honestly do think these look pretty. There you go. It's the oh, no, those, are, those are not the ones I was thinking of. Yeah, see, it's the same basic concept because they, they didn't have a working like turret turret. They didn't know how to do a turret ring while being able to feed ammunition and not fuck things up. Uh, World War uh, Two, and I believe it was the French that first discovered how to do a proper turret ring. Go. What's the one that looks like a... This uh, just looks like a moving fucking like a fortress. fortress. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of what tanks were back then. No, I know, but I mean, like, it, it's just a giant box. Yeah. Let me see here. Yeah, the these British, things. Hold the on. British one was basically the same thing. It's just, only it was a really long box. Hold on. I have an image here. Copy. I like these. I think these look cool. Yeah, that's the British one. Those Ooh. are the Mark Fives. I want to say that's the Mark Five. Yeah, see, they're a little bit of like, see, it, it is basically a long box and then two like uh, trapezoids uh, slammed either side of it. And they're that long, so they they can go over trenches. That was their yeah. their point. Yeah, yeah. Because every time I've seen them, like I've seen them like going over trenches and stuff. That's Part of why I think they're so cool is just like that shot that they always do of them going over a trench looks really cool. Yeah. Wow. What, like what's fascinating is um, these these three tanks actually show a problem with the German design. The the biggest problem with the German design of them all. Um, sorry for cutting you off, uh, Cree. Do you uh, have something else to say? No, I'm just uh, saying that the the oldest tanks look funky. Like yeah. the the. These are bizarre designs, because cause when you say a tank now, you kind of picture in your head the normal, like, the typical design. There's basically uh, a small flat box with the treads on either side, and then the turret on top that could spin 360 degrees. Yeah. They didn't have the turret capabilities back then, not for a full 360 degree moving turret. Because see, all those turrets that you see on the sides, that a man has to actually heft the gun and move it. So you hear it grinding and sliding as he's moving it. Oh. Yeah, they're really... 
they're not they're not easy to be in. Uh, these things are like super hot, incredibly loud because you got the the sound of the guns going off is actually amplified inside of the tank and it reverberates. So they're very unpleasant to be in. But unpleasant is better than dead when you're crossing no man's land, so. Yeah. Um, but anyways, the design problem here, um, and the British tank and the the Russian tank actually have the same uh, climbing capability. The exact same. And the reason is because uh, tracks actually count as one big wheel if you bring the front wheel, the front drive wheel, up higher off the ground. So if you just imagine that that front track where it's it's currently elevated off the ground, imagine you're drawing an imaginary wheel and that's a part of the wheel that's going. The German tank on by comparison has a little tiny wheel, so it wouldn't be able to climb up anything. Any rough terrain really fucks over the German tank because it just doesn't have the ability to climb up over every, anything at all. And yeah. it's what, it's a problem you see in a lot of, of fantasy designs, uh, fantasy sci-fi designs for tanks, is they do stuff like the Halo Scorpion, which is a terrible tank design, uh, because it wouldn't actually be able to climb up anything. <laughs> it would be really, really awkward and terrible to use. Our tank will be great if we're fighting on a flat surface. Yes, basically. Yeah, it's just a fun little thing where uh, people don't think about that as a repercussion. It's something that the engineers, the the British, uh, discovered, and they thought of like, wait, if we do this, this basically counts uh, for purposes of leverage and everything. This counts as a giant wheel. It was a brilliant discovery. Um, by the way, that guy that was spamming in chat, he came back after his timeout wore off and continued yeah. spamming crap, so I just got rid of him. All right, um, that's yeah, if someone is spamming in chat, like, just the same bullshit over and over again, uh, and I guess this is to all the mods in chat, too, uh, just get rid of them. Like, I think time, they time them out once. That's yeah. Just kind of like, hey, stop that shit. And then if they do it again, then well, it's like, well, you had your warning. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, there's no reason to be spamming. Especially when it's, like, useless garbage, like what that person was posting. Yeah. Here it is for you. Personal log. United States Army Staff Sergeant Michael Daly. This past Saturday, October 23rd. Why are you playing sad music in the background? Fuck off. I can barely hear it. Like, there's a truck or something outside that's making noise so it's hard for me to hear the music go under um the voice audio yeah he's just got this like ah, wah, wah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to thing. listen closer press play again all right all right yeah uh, let's go back slightly but we don't no 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 we don't there's nothing there that we lost out on that uh we need to hear because it's just from the log Right. Sorry, someone was knocking on my window. I was like, hey, I'm about to start mowing. It's like, fuck it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Sorry. Yep. Okay. Army Staff Sergeant Michael Daly. This past Saturday, October 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> See? Why? Because this, 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 this isn't even a Fallout 4 track. It's Fallout 4. Fallout 4 doesn't actually have, like, sad music in it. So, yeah. this this was a conscious choice to put fucking sad music behind the stupid log. What? Yeah, it's this is just really, really dumb. It's Hey, guess what, everybody in chat, if you're playing the bingo, do uh, music makes feel. It's just such a weird point to put it on, too. Like, most yeah. people, when they do the sad music thing, it's for, like, oh, this this is such an emotional 
moment in the game. Uh, um, uh, Sean is dying as you're taking over the Institute to destroy it. And he's sad that it's life's work. And in the background, it's like... Da, 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 da. You know? It's like... <laughs> yeah. That... At least in that instance, someone is, like, using suitable music for what they're trying to explain. It's like, yeah, this is, like, a really sad and emotional moment, even though it's not. But, like, hypothetically, if someone were to talk about how great Fallout 4 is and how great of a moment that is, that would be where you would put it. Not, oh, yeah, here's, like, a, a, a random uh, voice log from a guy on the day of the war. Um, and this is proof that the vertebrates existed before the war. Yeah. It's just, it's just, God, I, again, this guy, you need to show this to be a misconception. You need to show this in Fallout 2. Your evidence has to be from the original material of it. Not from retcons and Bethesda fucking it up. You need to have it at the original source. If you had shown, hey, but in Fallout 2, we see the blueprints are labeled as this date, which is 10 years before the war and body, you know, that would have worked. But then you would have had to explain how the Brotherhood of Steel wouldn't know about vertebrates. Yeah. Yeah, it's not necessarily that... It, it's not saying that um, a later game in the series can't establish, like, an exact timeline for when this thing was created. The problem yeah. is that the later games in the series contradict the original implementation of it. Yep. to West Stock. A vertebrate crashed into the roof of this museum. The cause? EMP following nuclear detonation. Several, in fact. From the intel I've gathered, this was a global event. The co-pilot was... How would you know? Wait, wait, how? How did you gather intel that it's a global event? It, the EMP would have knocked out all electronics in the area. How? How did you... Did you, like lick your thumb and stick in the air. It's like, oh, yep, there must have been nukes went off everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is just Bethesda getting basic shit wrong yet again. It, like, people wonder why I don't, like, trust Bethesda when they do certain things in their game. It's like, it, the whole food one is a good example. Oh, well, clearly there's an ecosystem in Fallout 3 because there's creatures. It's like... Yeah, I'm sure Bethesda thought that out when they don't think out anything else. Yeah. Doesn't EMP, like, permanently fry electronics? Yes. Yeah. So it's not just, oh, we inconvenienced you slightly for a couple minutes. It's, this shit is fucking dead. Yeah. Which also makes you wonder how he's recording this log, but <laughs> they, they could make the assumption that it's... What is it? The the tape? But an EMP would demagnetize the, the recording tape, wouldn't it? it? It depends how a hollow tape actually works. Is like, is it actually a tape or is there another method of store? But either way, it would be like an electronic thing, so it should be fucked anyways. If, if there was any other method, it it's fucked no matter what. If it is magnetic tape that's used, I don't know if an EMP strike would demagnetize it. I guess that would be a thing to look into. Possibly. How did the EMP not fry every suit of power armor in Boston? Because... Well, there you go. There's there's Bethesda's answer. Yeah. Plot. All you need is the picture of, like, the old man shrugging, and that's Bethesda's answer to everything. Uh, yes. Some military equipment could be EMP shielded. However... This soldier just revealed that the vertebrate isn't. So why would the why would the the data recording discs why would the uh, data tapes be shielded? Why would the communications be shielded if the vertebrate itself isn't? You need a lot of stuff to EMP shield things. Yeah, that's what I mean, though. It, it could, as Lorander points out, an EMP might affect it, as EMP stands for electromagnetic pulse. That's what I'm thinking. It might demagnetize it, but I don't know that for sure. I guess we can... Oh, 
it. I'll see if anybody's done. Um, if you guys want to continue, I will look up if uh, EM if EMPs demagnetize magnet. I mean, I assume it would, but sure, let's uh, continue. I guess. Was killed on him. Pilot died of his injuries a day later. Day after that, Flaherty and Kanawa were shot by some scared, desperate survivors. Then Przansky took off running. Haven't seen him since. Now, it's my turn to go AWOL, if that concept even applies anymore. Hold on, if you crashed... Burned out, so... If you crashed in this building, um... Why would you just stay there? Why wouldn't you go to, like, the military yeah. base? Yeah, sorry, dude. That's not how this works. If you don't want, like, an enemy getting your hands on it, you would sabotage the vertebrate, and then you would fucking leave. You don't have to stay there. It's not going AWOL. Going AWOL is not returning to your post. Like, you're going AWOL right now by not going back. Fallout 4 really just gets worse the more I learn about it. Yeah. Like, every single fucking thing. Like, I, I've never listened to this holotape before because it's just like, it's whatever. It's the people who crashed here. I don't really care. Literally everything about this holotape is wrong. Yeah. Also, um, yeah, uh, apparently uh, people have done tests and EMP pulses do demagnetize magnetic tapes. So, yeah, so these hollow tapes wouldn't even be alive. Alive? Well, you know what I mean. They wouldn't <laughs> They wouldn't be uncorrupted, I, let's put it I, that way. I saw a chance to be a smartass and I took it. Yeah, I know, uh, and, and I, I walked into it. I, I walked into it. <laughs> <laughs> um... So yeah, everything should be fucked then, basically. Yeah. Now, the other guy going AWOL to check on family, absolutely. That's he, You're not going back to your post. You're literally checking on family. You're going against orders. Orders would be to RTB. Yeah, but, but, but why would you just, like, camp in this building because you crashed there? Yeah, that's, that's no. That's definitely, a, that's really dumb. <laughs> EMP is epic mega pint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This person, does this person really just make a new account? I don't know. Because it's talking about a Honda again. Oh, I mean, maybe. I guess my soldiering, I'm heading to Boston on foot to see if my sister survived all this. Yeah, She's that's going here. on Boylston Street. This is Mike Daly signing out. Good luck. And God bless America. <laughs> this is Mike Daly Bread signing out. Oh, fuck. It's like, God, Bethesda, why didn't I not just go the whole way and call him Mike Hunt? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know God, what this actually fair. proves for his point, though. What, they were in a vertebrate and got shot down? We can fucking see that. Be Not no, shot before, down, but you know what I mean. He's saying, he's saying, but then they obviously had this vertebrate before the war, because this was hit by the nuke, the EMP from the nuke. That was what his point is trying to be. He didn't need any of that hollow tape thing. I guess the hollow tape could be done as further reinforcing evidence that the vertebrate existed before the nukes hit. Yeah, but, but we literally one, see it in the intro, so he doesn't even need to reference this. Yeah, and it just and it actually makes Fallout Four look way worse. Yeah, I was about to say, game. I'm glad that he still showed it anyway, simply because it gave us more ammo against this horrible fucking game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I'm pretty sure I've asked this before, but if you're like a movie studio or a game studio or whatever, don't you have the option to just like call up a military expert to say? To, to ask questions so you get stuff like this in your game, right? Like, oh, hey, you crash in a helicopter and there. fucking the world is over. It's Armageddon. Uh, all systems of uh, government have collapsed. Do, would the people in the helicopter, like, just camp out there for a few days? Or would they try no. to go to their... Like, would their orders be to go to the nearest military base? Their orders would be to get in touch with uh, with government personnel, so likely police. If you're in friendly territory, get with the police, then make way back to the nearest military outpost. 
But here's the other thing of if if Boston didn't get hit to hit directly by nukes, which it didn't. So it didn't get hit directly by nukes. It just got EMP'd. People should just be walking around confused. So why does he think it's the end of the world? Yeah. There would be tons of people that'd be just walking around like, what the fuck happened? But it's out. Like, none of the cars work. Nothing. Like, what's going on? Yeah, at that point, the fact that the bombs dropped would have to be spread word of mouth. Because there is one that you see go off in the intro. But that's, like, yeah. way off away from uh, the city of Boston. Yeah, wouldn't it? Wouldn't they first think that, like, some accident happened? Why Why is he so... The best that I can tell from the information I've gathered, it's been a worldwide event. Yeah, there's how? no way he should be able to know that. Yeah, yeah. how? How did you that know that? That makes no sense. Hell, hell, the player base doesn't even actually know if it's a worldwide event. That's been one of the coolest conspiracy theories in the Fallout universe, is that this is just the the North American continent. Everything else is fine. North America got nuked well, out of existence, and nobody wants to go there. Well, until like, Fallout cool. 3 had the brilliant idea to do Mothership Zeta that shows the entire fucking planet is like oh, this disgusting, yeah. dead green cloudy ball of bullshit. Yeah, that's fair. No, it is. Seth, you're forgetting movie. about something. The guy was a time traveler. <laughs> also, I think Fallout 4 did the same thing where they, because uh, they, they have immigrants come in, and I think they talk about how their the country's ravaged just as bad there as it is here. Didn't so, um, Didn't Fallout 3 have that as well? Isn't. Um... Ten Penny. Uh, Ten Penny, yeah. Didn't he say he came to America from somewhere else? Yeah, he came from like England. How do you How? even cross the fucking sea? Yeah. Apparently they have ships, according to Bethesda's lore. They just straight up have like old timey ships that they can just take back and forth. But don't they not so... because we see the, the Finnish destroyer or whatever? Like has so, been blown ashore or something? Well, that would be like that just that one ship, I guess. But what I'm trying to process is if we have the ability to uh, travel across the sea, then wouldn't that be like a very major thing for the universe? It should be. Yeah, yeah it should be. But they make basically barely any mention of it. And yeah, it's somehow society is still not progressing everything everyone's still living in shacks and shit but oh but immigration we still have that though we can still go back and forth to other countries but actually building up our society and taking you know actually building new things nah yeah um and center every strong brings out we did we did fix a ship fall too yes in, in san francisco you fix the, the the oil tanker there yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have the ability to travel uh, travel across the ocean. Like, yeah, obviously fuel is limited. Um, you don't know what's going to be on the other side. You don't know what dangers are in the ocean. How many people are going to still have the ability to navigate the ocean without a compass or anything? Because all that stuff would be fried. Like, I, don't know, I guess the compass would start working again eventually. No, because it would demagnetize the compass. So no, yeah, I yeah, know that's that's fried. So you don't have compasses. So you'd need somebody who would actually know how to navigate the ocean based off the stars, assuming you can see the stars, which we see is inconsistent as all hell in the Bethesda universe. Naturally. So yeah, hmm. Yeah, and how, like the sea? Honestly, after a nuclear apocalypse, the sea would probably be. The worst one? I can imagine the horrifying, noxious gases that would be coming out of the sea from all the death and everything. Like, that's actually one of the apocalypses that, you know, because scientists that have a lot of free time on their hands decide how is the world going to end. And one of the apocalypses is that uh, marine life starts dying, and then the marine life starts washing up on shore, and the noxious fumes from the marine life causes rampant disease and poisoning and everything. It's like, oh, yeah, let's get let's get real great. Yeah, you'd think in the Fallout universe that the 
the seas would be pretty fucked. Possibly. Well, with the way the nukes work in Bethesda, or in Fallout, yeah, the seas would probably be in a very bad place. Well, I think even with with normal uh, with normal things, it's like, well, yeah, the sea is protected, obviously, and all that life is down there, but when you put a big cloud above it, that life still needs some kind of nutrients and sustenance, so all of the seaweed and everything like that would die out so all those fish there would start dying out so then that would just cause massive chain reactions throughout the entire ecosystem hmm no just don't think about it yeah um rainbow hawk is in chat there's a guy who's been bothering and harassing me for four months and he said he's a fan of yours do you know who he is well i need to know his no, name that doesn't that doesn't matter to us either. Yeah. Like, do, do, do you have the name tell... of this person? I, I, we I don't tell right people there, but... to go to videos to to fuck with if, people. If anything, yeah. we honestly told people to avoid your videos. <laughs> yeah, we've openly <laughs> told people. Yeah, well, one, we, we tell people don't go and harass other people. We we outright said that before. But also, you know, we, we, we also made it pretty clear, like, there's nothing worth going over there for. Yeah. yeah. Don't bother. Um, I guess when we wait, we wait for that, uh, $10 from Chris Ellinger. Thank you very much. Thank you. Explain the T60, T51, X01 power armor inconsistencies. Did they exist pre-war? Also, Cree, what you're, what you're are talking about would be good question for those trained in SEER. What? So he's talking about the survival, um, oh, fucking hell. It's SEER school. Uh, oh. Survival, evasion, uh... Oh, um, Jesus Christ, I can't remember the... The person Rainbow Hawk is talking about, his username begins with Voka. Okay, so... Oh, God, I can't believe we have to explain this again. So, Rainbow Hawk, there's this guy who uh, doesn't like us and has been accusing us of weird shit for literal months. This person has to make a new account every single time he comes into chat... And oh, it's this, this, that guy? Yeah, yes. apparently this guy has been harassing Rainbow Hawk. Yeah, this person has oh. been irritating us too for fucking months now. Like, yeah, literally, he comes it's been our... three or four Oof. months and he pops up in every stream. And because he's saying, like, just straight out lies about us, we've been blocking him. So each week he has to make a new account to come in again. And with yeah. new lies, because, you know, the yeah. guy lies... Why does he got to get more extreme? Yeah, and they ch yeah he changes every week. That he gets something new to lie about, and it's like the fuck. Yeah, I, he just remember, keeps coming in. I remember at first when it was just them, and it was like you got me banned from Russian Twitter. It's like how? Yeah, the what? And then it was oh, and, uh, you got me banned well, hold, from hold. Twitter because I I am a cross dresser. It's like what? Hold on. And then before, it was before before you go any further. This is the same person who is uh, demanding we debate them because we um, slander other YouTubers or something, which we don't. But yeah, yeah. it was fucking. It was incredible. Is, yeah. Russian, is Russian Twitter even a thing? I don't fucking know. I'm just going based off of what they said. I don't know. I don't know if Twitter is even allowed in Russia. I don't have a clue. Yeah, it's just straight up schizo posting at this point. Like but, the shit that he says is just insane. Yeah, but then when none of that worked, it was, oh, um, these three were moderators in this other guy's Discord. The guy, the guy's Discord named Mortimer. It's his Discord. And it's like, it's like, who the fuck is Mortimer? We, we even asked, like, who the hell is Mortimer? And then they're like, yeah, but and then they, they banned everybody from it. And then it changed to, they were in Mortimer's Discord. And hi, my name's Mortimer. And it's like, wait, so you're Mortimer now? Like, can you keep your story straight? So were you not Mortimer before, but now you are Mortimer? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like so oh, funny. Dude. Yeah, it's gotten pretty I, funny seeing this shit sometimes. It's like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? I mean, it is kind of funny that a person who schizo posts in our chat um, commented on, or is bugging a person whose schizo video we covered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just, woof. That invitation's still open, by the way. You never did respond. Of course he didn't. 
But now that you're in chat, you could give us a direct answer. Oh, he won't. Yeah, I'm sure he won't. But hey, you're here, so might as well ask. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So explain the T60, T51. So seer training. Uh, people that answer it, and I forgot the last two steps, but it's uh, survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. Specialty training. So it's just it's your way of like if you get shot down in enemy territory, you know how to survive off the land, you know how to evade capture, so you know what to do, not to do, you know to bury your feces, you know how to move through terrain and stuff like that without without leaving evidence, just stuff like that. Um, but yeah, uh, but again, seer training wouldn't really kick in when you land in friendly territory. Uh, again, this is a crash landing, sure, but you're in you're in friendly territory, so. Why Why would you do that? I could see if, if these guys crash somewhere in Europe and you have no idea what's going on, then you'd be a little more like, okay, yeah, we got no idea what the fuck's happened. We'll stick with the bird. But you're in Boston. So go to the military base. Go to the police, and then go to the military base. Yeah. Also, all I could say, man, is just ban and block. That's all you can do. That's all we can do. That's all yeah. what we did. This guy just came ban down. And block down to my discord server and he's been saying stuff about me saying i'm a creep and a stalker yeah, yeah just... it, that's all this guy does that's all he does so you just have to ban him and block him yeah, yeah. unfortunately that's just where we're going yeah, yeah. He'll, that... he'll get bored of it eventually or i don't know maybe he'll get fucking put in an asylum at some point um yeah. but yeah. yeah yeah but uh ellinger they don't know that they don't know that the military base was destroyed. I don't even know how they know that this is a, a global phenomena. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, again, this doesn't make sense on multiple levels. Yeah. Also, I would assume that, you know, if there's enough people alive, you would assume that, oh, well, we're going to war. I should definitely go back to military base and prepare with the others, not just, I'm yeah. just going to fuck off and leave. Yeah. As for the power armor stuff, that stuff is so fucked because of Bethesda. Bethesda inventing like new types of power armor that didn't exist before. Power armor that's way better than the old power armor, except it's worse in every way. But we needed it so we can explain why why all this power armor exists here in in Boston. It's like okay. Yeah, I, I I don't know why they didn't just make the T sixty armor a post war thing. Like, you can do that. You could literally yeah. just be like, yeah, the Brotherhood developed new power armor. You could do that. You don't have to be like, oh, but it, it's actually this secret prototype armor that was only in, given in certain areas and it only saw limited use. And it's like, no, just just make it a post war creation. Yeah. God damn it. Same thing with the X01. Why did you have to go and retcon that X01 is a pre-war fucking power armor? Ugh. Yeah, a, a pre-war power armor that is better than all the other power armors is a prototype, but all of the all of the military police forces and everything in Boston have them already. Somehow. Yeah. It's, it makes and, no it's, sense. and it's just Boston, apparently. They actually had to double down on the retcon and say, "Oh, it was it was it was a shipment specifically for Boston." What? 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 Why? What? I look up information on this guy, and he from Germany, live in Lubeck, and he had a TikTok and post cosplay junk. Why I, did you I, dig that deep into this guy? Yeah. I that seems I weird. Even, I okay, two, 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 two things. First of all, I can't tell you how much I don't care at this point. Secondly, yeah. um, Rainbow Hawk's grammar is actually sounding uh, like is, that guy. Yeah, this is not Rainbow Hawk at all. I just went to yeah. their channel. It's not Rainbow Hawk. Sorry, since you're going to impersonate someone else. Bye-bye! Yeah, get the fuck out of here, you fucking freak. Yeah, I was starting to wonder. I was like, this is getting weird. I was like, I don't know. Why Why would you look this deep into this? I don't think this is... Uh, yeah, yeah the confirmed. moment he started saying that, it was like, no one gives a shit. And then I was like, oh, wait, no. It's because he literally just made this fucking account. How the yeah. fuck do you go to uh, someone's account from the YouTube comments? Because I can't do that. 
Uh, you look... click on the three asterisks and then go to channel. I don't have that. I have pin message, report, remove, put user in timeout, hide user on channel, and add moderator. Uh, that's weird. Like, you think the channel owner at least would be able to check someone's account. Yeah, you think. Yeah, it's ridiculous. YouTube system is shit. It always has been. But now here's the weird thing. I can't... I couldn't do that on some of these. But yeah, now I can go back to go to channel. I, I had lost... Put the user in timeout and hide user on channel. So that was weird. Alright, anyways... Yeah, so, again, again, this just doesn't work. The power armor thing is just really, really dumb. Sure, there can be prototypes. Like, X01, the whole stealth suit thing, it's totally fine being a prototype, especially because it's a prototype at a science facility. Like, okay, fair. Fair. It's a, it's a science facility that was developing weapons for the military. They have a prototype stealth suit. Well, that's fair. But the, the reason the Fallout 4 one doesn't work is it's a prototype of a new power armor that they only gave to Boston not military just, police. Not just Boston, not just the military police, but... Um, the police force too, right? But, Nuka World. Oh, well, I didn't know about Nuka World. But I think, oh, I think yeah. it was some civilian branch they also gave them to as well. Because they were supposed to be like police painted ones. I'm surprised you wrote that off so fast, considering what a big issue it is. It's like, this prototype armor uh, that we're developing, this prototype power armor. Yeah, we're just going to give a Nuka-Cola pra uh, painted variant to an amusement park. Like As a yeah. display item. Yeah. Yeah, th that's incredibly stupid, but I also never touched Nuka World, so that's why I'm more like... No, I know yeah, you didn't touch... Yeah, that sounds incredibly dumb. I can believe that they would do something that's stupid. I get what you're saying, though. Yes, why would you give it? It'd be like if we... Oh, it's a good example. The Polish 01 tank, which was a prototype stealth light tank that Poland was working on for a while. It'd be like <laughs> if they suddenly gave CD Projekt Red that tank. Yeah. Out of nowhere. It'd be like, what? Yeah. Why? Kratosis, what do you mean we can't give Disneyland a hypersonic hydrogen rocket? Yeah. Why the fuck would God. police need newest combat power armor? Would they get T-51 for special unit even if that? Probably not. No, I don't know why the police would have power armor to begin with. But if I, re I remember, like, again, this is one of those, feel free to correct me, chat, because this is one of the ones where I'm, I'm stabbing in the dark. I vaguely recall something stupid. I think it was an Oxhorn video that was explaining the power armor and that it was given to the police force and the military police at this base, which is why we see it before the nukes fall. Yeah, this was like the second video we covered, I believe, uh, on Stag. But it was something to the effect of, well, even if it was like an early model that was completed just before the war happened, that means there's enough time to deploy it. I actually like this. So, Disco Monkey is hitting on something that I actually find more fascinating. Disco Monkey says, if they would have added several new armors to the lore and said each region used a different model of the same power armor, that could be an explanation. But even that would break the lore. While, yes, it breaks the lore, it would actually be interesting if each state within the United States had different requirements for power armor oh. for, like, their National Guard or their State Guard units. Yeah. That could be interesting. And then you could explain, like, Hey, this is the the T95 for the Hoosier Guard. Hey, this is the T95 for the New York Guard. Like um, that that could be genuinely interesting. That would uh, be a way to get around hold, this problem. Hold on just quickly. Uh the light in my room just kind of it didn't flash like it it dimmed slightly for a brief second. So it's possible my power might go out at some point. Because okay. um, in the past, I've had power go up for a split second um, after I've seen lights do that. Because that doesn't normally happen. Oh, yeah. I should probably mention that. Yeah, that that could very likely happen to me, too. I've been having really bad rolling brownouts here where, like, at least once or twice a day, 
our power goes out. Yeah, that's fair. I'll I'll keep chat company for the point one second that your thing is on long enough for me to get the message out. <laughs> so I'm just saying, if it goes offline, I'll be back. Yeah, It'll yeah, just yeah. Take no a worry. minute. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's another there, there's another interesting aspect. Again, these are things that could be done to be like, hey, no, it's not it's not a retcon. This is for the this is for the Massachusetts State Guard. Yeah. Which trust me, if you want a laugh, look at look at the State Guard for the United States. So most people don't realize this. So the United States is broken into multiple parts. The United States militia is literally every single person and citizen of the United States is part of the United States militia. Every single state within the United States has a, a military force that is called the State Guard. The State Guard are fucking hilarious. Then you have a defensive force, purely defensive force, for the entirety of the United States called the National Guard. Then you have, of course, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard. But, yeah, um, the State Guard are fucking funny. Because there's no real, like, unifying force between them. It, it, it's literally whatever each state decides its State Guard needs to be is what the State Guard are. Oh. So you get really funny fucking ranks where it was like, oh, good morning, Lieutenant. Oh, good good morning, Commodore First, in area, First Easton of the 3rd Brigade. It's like, what? What? The fuck? <laughs> like what are you what so you can go from like you can be a private a private first class a specialist somehow a lance corporal like wait a minute uh, <laughs> a corporal okay then you have a sergeant then you might have a a brigadier uh, like a brigadier then you might have a, a commodore it's like what every single state guard having its own ranks is fucking funny hmm what happened if different state guards have to interact? Like, what if um, there's something going on at, like, I don't know. The border or something? Something where they have to, like, be on the same side. Yeah. Like, obviously, the states probably wouldn't be fighting one another, but, like, um... <laughs> have you heard a certain somebody talk? You, um, you could be referring to so yeah. many people right now, but yeah. Well, I, I was thinking of a uh, dim tool. Yes. Oh, dude, a guy who is, he's so on the right track, but he's so like, doesn't actually pay attention. He gets, he gets caught in like tracks real. Cree, don't forget really about civil wars. I know about civil wars. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I am aware that that's a thing that happens. I'm, the, the example I'm specifically giving is, uh, well, hopefully there isn't a civil war. And yes. uh, some interaction that would require, like, two states for their state guard to, like, ally together have, against have, a common threat. I have no idea how that would work. Because now, um, we it, state guard has gotten so deep and so, like, se separated from each other. I have no idea how it would work. No, I I wouldn't have the foggiest. So disaster. I think they would okay, probably, I've got it. Yeah, they would probably capitulate to whoever was the most charismatic. <laughs> okay. Like like I said, I have I have no idea like how the interaction would actually go. It would it would probably actually go like the National Guard gets called in and they just fall in order under them or something. Probably. Yeah. Um, holy shit, though, I just, uh, if someone asked, uh, would mayonnaise be a rank, and be like, you know what, if I ever get governor, if I ever get governor of Indiana, I will make mayonnaise a rank. It will be a punishment rank, but I will make it a rank. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty good name for a punishment rank. If we didn't have, yeah, uh, exactly. Railroad HQ already, I'd probably do that. Mayonnaise. <laughs> mayonnaise. <laughs> Is mayonnaise a rank? Yes, Patrick. <laughs> You're part of it. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, we have a video to get through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Love it. So yeah, vertebrates, them boys, they're pre-war. No, no you didn't prove that. 
You proved that Bethesda retconned it. You didn't prove that they're pre-war. They're pre-war. My, my, my daddy said so. They're pre-war. <laughs> yeah, no. And also, above Brigadier General unbreaded. Oh my god, that'd be a great rant. <laughs> also, uh, he's using a screen cap here from Operation Anchorage. I'm surprised he didn't use that as evidence. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're just wrong on this. A retcon isn't a misconception. The original established it. The later games changed it. That's yeah. not a misconception. That's the later games fucking it up. Especially when it comes from a different uh, developer and publisher. Very suspect. God, I'm tempted to say that the Operation Anchorage Vertibirds are actually a retcon within the, within the same game. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake, Bethesda, come on. Like because if it's a simulation of an actual like combat engagement, you would use equipment that's deployed in that simulation. You wouldn't have a fucking piece of equipment that doesn't exist yet because you don't know how it's gonna work in the final version. Right? Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh my god. Bethesda, what are you fucking doing? <laughs> this is actually pretty oh. blurry. I I am glad we've watched this video because uh, yeah. this is actually going to improve uh, part two of the Fallout 3 analysis once I eventually get there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah. Okay, alright, alright. Thank you. Thank you very much, and Orte, for uh, this terrible video. It has helped me immensely already. Yes. Okay. Or do vehicles don't work? What? 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 D but, but you literally use a car in Fallout Two. It's it's a really great car, actually. It really helps. It, yeah. It does really help. And I fucking love the fuck out of the theme that plays when you're uh, on the map yeah, driving the it. Yeah, the theme. Yeah, it's That's why great. I use it I in my videos. Love... Yeah, the My Highway Chrysalis, uh, Crispin. I, I, fucking hell. <laughs> 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 I got my fucking profile picture mixed in with it. Yeah, okay, good job, good job. Oh, uh, yeah, My Chrysalis Highwayman. God. You, you forgot to go full. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Yeah, fucking hell. My highway horse creature thing. <laughs> My highway horse creature. My highway <laughs> horse bug. <laughs> why is uh, it a yeah. sorry, why is it a horse bug? like what? They they're an insect that mimics things. Again, P Pagan will know more about this, but they're an insect race that mimics things and that's how they like infiltrate and sabotage things from the inside out. Okay, I get yeah. that they're like an insect race, but why are they insect horses specifically? Like they're like... because everything is like basically a horse type creature in this world, basically, unless it's like yeah. some mythological being. Yeah. So essentially, they are they don't have to change themselves as much because they already have the overall shape of the creatures they're going to imitate. So no. yeah. It, it, like, like, as far as I know, they never imitate dragons or anything like that, as far as I know. Yeah. So, it, it, would, kind of, it would kind of be like, in our world, it would be the equivalent of, like, a bug person. Mm. Like a yeah. bug humanoid. We have those. And, but yeah, they're, bug and they're, yeah, and they're humanoid because they, uh, that's their, their thing they imitate. So, they, it's just, it makes it easier for the imitation to work. They already know how to move that way and everything. All right. Yeah. Gorus just clinging to the top of the car as my head cannon. Man, I like Gorus. Um, yes, imagine him be... trying to fit into the back fucking seat, though. Yeah, I've <laughs> seen people like make like uh, art and stuff of like that. Like, I I even saw this one transitional slide thing that somebody made. It was like a little anime thing, and he, they pop the trunk, and he just yeah. sits in the back, that just kind of like with. <laughs> that actually makes sense. Yeah, they just pop the trunk and he just sits in it, like uh, with the with the top open. <laughs> All right, so let's see what point this guy's gonna make here. Yeah. 
a caution in the Fallout universe is that none of the vehicles you find about your travels in the wastes work. The reality is that there are vehicles that work well after the war. Prime example okay. is the topic of the previous mission. <sighs> because they were invented post-war. So, one, I already agree with you. People that think that no vehicles work, that is wrong. But it isn't because vertebrates. Vertebrates are a post-war invention. The pre-war vehicles that still work are your your Cadillac you get in Fallout 2. There's That's all you got to show. You literally just have to show that. Yes. Also, you should know... I mean, you literally, you just played an audio log that talked about EMP blasts destroying vehicles. It's like, yeah, a lot of your standard vehicles that were just on the road, yeah, they're fucking fried. That It's going to take a lot to fix them. It's like, generally, they don't work, but if, you know, if you could find one that wasn't within an EMP, EMP blast range, yeah, you could find one that works. You just have to, like, make sure that you do at least the minor repairs that are needed and get fuel. Yeah. It's not our fault that Bethesda isn't willing to fucking give you anything other than a vertiperd to use in these games. That's not that's not the older game's fault. That's Bethesda's fault. Yep. Yeah. Misconception. But you don't want to hear about that. You don't want to hear about the Pridwin. F I especially don't hear about that nonsense. Like, how? How does that even work? Okay. Again, that's also a post-war thing. They, that's that is expressly post-war. They fucking talk about that. It's literally made by the Brotherhood, and that they literally ripped the core out of Rivet City to make it. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just City. and I'm just curious. How does it function? How? Because it's like it's almost like it's supposed to be a blimp, but what? That's all armor plating. How does this thing fly? You don't yeah, understand. All... You you don't get it, Seth. There's like three gas bags inside there that hold up the entire thing. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a giant chunk of metal. Because keep in mind, you go inside, and during like uh, I think it's the um, the railroad quest, you actually go into that part of the ship to set bombs and stuff. Well, and yeah, it's straight up too, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's like it's straight up metal on the inside as well. It's all solid metal. There is no actual like blimp part. So, it's literally just has like anti-grav magic to fly. Man, I don't know why fucking Rivet City didn't harness that power before and just fly the ship into the air and kill all the super mutants in DC, but if anti, yeah, I guess the Brotherhood figured if, it out. If anti-grav was a thing, why wasn't that anywhere pre-war? Because that would be highly useful. Exactly. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Oh Balloons. Checkmate, science lovers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Also, I don't know if the mobile station at the Enclave base was post-war or pre-war, but either way, it's like... It's a giant fucking mobile base that you never really see move anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> There's a hover car in Fallout 76? Fuck off. Fucking what? Wow. The more oh, I hear about my... 76, the more I hate it. Like, there's yeah, not oh one thing from 76 I've heard of that I'm like, oh, hey, that's a neat thing. That's, that's, that's pretty okay. Not a single fucking thing. Isn't there also a, like a bubble gun or something in Fallout 76 where it traps like your enemies in a bubble and they float up into the air? What? Yeah, like actual bubble too. I'm not even talking about like an energy field that makes a bubble or something. No, I mean like a literal like soap bubble that you blow. Squirtle, so you can... use bubble beam. Yeah, basically. So, so you can mad parry out someone out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> I must go, my planet needs me. I still can't oh, believe they killed him that way. We're, like, <laughs> we're nine or ten months past that, and I still can't believe the fucking, uh, hey, Cowboy Bebop, let, let's let's kill this bad guy by just having him float into the air. Let's poochie him out of existence. Like, fucking why? <laughs> I know. Like... There is no fucking way on Earth that they that wasn't, like, intentionally done to be shit. It's like they had to know that was fucking garbage. Yeah, yeah. because... 
nothing even happens to him after he flies up there. He just flies away and flies out of out of shot, and we just never see him again. And it's like, did he fly into space? What happened? We don't know. He just flies up about like a hundred feet and then disappears. We never see him again. And it's like, what? He's just, that's how you kill him? What happened? Where'd yeah, he go? He goes, Mommy! He's <laughs> flying away. It's like, what? Okay. It's so the live fucking... action. The live action. Yeah. The way he dies in the anime is brutally creepy. Yeah, yeah. it is sad. It's it's actually really sad how he dies. It's like, oh, I actually feel really bad for you. No. But here it's just like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. And especially when he started quoting fucking Blade Runner in French. Yeah. Oh my god. That really killed it. Because it's like, yeah, this guy who's supposed to be like very childlike and, you know, not fully developed. Yeah, he's just going to recite Blade Runner in French. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that doesn't totally kill the whole fucking point of his character. Oh Ugh. god, yeah. All right. Anyways, let's just get back to this. So, yeah, the pride went. Trust me, these are not good points in your favor, <laughs> Norda. <laughs> Late epic Reddit moment. <laughs> or no, well, they said humor, but I just yeah. I just filled in moment, and it's like, yeah, that, that works. The mobile base crawler press. The repcon rocket. Mobile base crawler. <laughs> it went by so fast. I needed to get a look at it. Hold on. You don't want to hear about the pride win. The mobile. <laughs> oh my god what is that support structure okay so i, I know i, I, I want to say right now that's been a long time since i played uh broken steel what the actual fuck am i looking at yeah it is retarded it what is that support structure holy shit yeah and fighting through that thing is so annoying it all looks the same it's so easy to get lost inside of it Ugh. Okay, so, I hate that mission. Such, um, you know the most here out of all of us about like military vehicles and stuff. Can you point out any possible weaknesses on this thing? Besides <laughs> everything, it's it's the size of a fucking city block. You know how easy that is to hit with anything. What the? F Why would you have a mobile base? Like, the, the sheer amount of defenses you would need to have on you. Oh, my God. And you'd always be changing? Like, you, you could only go in certain areas. You couldn't drive this through anywhere because it's fucking enormous. you telling me that having an enormous mobile structure um, on land, a land vehicle, enormous mobile structure, that you're telling me that's a bad thing? Tell me that's yeah. uh, a little bit inconvenient for a war? How are you going to... Where, where? How is this thing going to maneuver? How? What? You couldn't take this on any roads? No, it's anywhere? Fine. Just, just do a three-point turn on a residential street. <laughs> how? Like, what, what, what cities what? would be able to handle Setch. this okay, thing? Okay, okay Setch. If you, if you were um, in command of, like, um, any, any kind of, like, military group to, to take this thing out, what would your first target be? Any of those fucking wheels at the bottom. Any of them. <laughs> you, you, you cripple one of those, and not even much, given how bad the weight distribution is on these things. You, you get a little explosion on that, and the whole thing collapses, and now you're not mobile on it anymore, and you'll also be tilted at a fucking angle. <laughs> and... <laughs> Genuine curiosity here, because that, that was the point I was going for immediately. Uh, but, if, if, like, general curiosity, what else would you go for? Like, well, just, I, I just how? I just want to keep talking about these tracks for a second. How would you <laughs> replace one of these tracks when they break? You just get, like, a normal car jack to, to lift it up a little bit. Like, replacing tank tracks is a fucking nightmare. Imagine replacing one of these tracks. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, are, are it's like they saw the, it's like they saw the Hitler like mega tank design and just said, yeah, let's make that but worse. Yeah, are you, are you telling me this is a poor design? Absolutely. <laughs> no, I would never say that. It's 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 ten out of ten design. Uh, very very uh, practical. 
Um, I, I am, I am like, it's just bizarre from like a science fiction perspective too. It's like, okay, you can, you have this mobile base thing that doesn't make sense, whatever. You would at least design it to make it look like fucking cool, right? No, let's just make a block. Let's make it a fucking rectangle. And, and even, even worse behind this, all of your vital infrastructure, your piping and everything like that is on the fucking outside. Not, not just like outside of the structure, but on the outside uh, edge where people are going to be shooting at it. Yeah. Yeah. So are, are any of these gas lines or anything? Because I tell you what, just just give me a twenty-two and I'll put a couple holes in one of these, and now your entire base is crippled. Like, yeah, it's what the fuck is this? So fucking bad. I love that this is one of his examples too of why uh fucking like yeah see there's there's vehicles and say yes this giant fucking stupid looking mobile base that makes no fucking sense and we never actually see move i oh, dude i wonder if at the concept stage they maybe had different designs for this where um it looked more imposing or interestingly designed you... but they maybe no, thought it looked you... too much like a spaceship and they were like no, we can't do that, so let's just do this instead. No, what would genuinely, genuinely be cool is if they had a battleship, okay? A battleship on its actual transport carriages. Like, if, if you've ever seen battleships that need to get transported on land or big, big ships that need to get transported on land for whatever reason, uh, Australia tends to do it a lot. Um, uh, wait, they'll wait, hold have on. Her... Why does Australia need to do it? They're a fucking island. I, I trust me. If I knew why they needed to do it, I you know I would probably it's, like be able to answer. It. I think it's fuel costs, honestly. I think the amount of fuel used to actually like take these things along the water it would be more expensive than just putting it on specially designed heavy hauler uh, big rigs. What? But I think that could be an interesting design. Maybe don't even you don't even need it to be a battleship. But what if it's just a cruiser, cruiser on a heavy hauler big rig, and it was being taken further away from dry dock to go to a specialty shop, like something that was only a couple miles away. The bombs hit. Well, now it doesn't fucking matter. But now you have this this cruiser that is now sitting here on this heavy hauler rig, and somebody gets the rig working. So now you have a mobile cruiser instead. That could be interesting. Yeah. yeah, that could have been really interesting. That now, would have at least made these... more sense than this fucking monstrosity. Yeah. Oh man, I you know I should show Just... you a picture of these heavy hauler rigs. They are they are fascinating design. Just like I said, it's been years since I've um, played Broken Steel. I remember the that there was a mobile base. I remember this. It was this huge fucking structure. I didn't realize it was literally a rectangular fucking block on four treads. Like why? Oh, I'm trying to. I want to try and find one because there was a really awesome. Uh, there was an episode of Outback Truckers. That actually had a really cool uh, showcase of these really heavy hauler rigs that are like. It, it's like as if you had you have your normal semi and then you have fifty like mini propelled wheels by themselves all along the entire length of your haul and then another semi at the back they are really cool fucking trucks they they look like they look like what you think a skinwalker be like oh they have heavy hauling trucks well this is clearly what they would look like it, it looks like one of those things like an alien designed them they are really fascinating to see but i think that could be really cool it'd be something unique something that actually exists in the real world but still looks like sci-fi and Something that not a lot of people would expect, because how many people see these heavy hauler rigs? Yeah. And hey, it, let's the, see this the, picture you brought up. I, I'm, I'm oh, trying to find Pagan. it. I think Pagan's got a picture, but I am trying to find one, because they, they have really cool, because you need an entire road crew to work with, where they're actually running up and down the entire length. Like, the, the entire convoy would move at, like, three miles per hour. They're very slow. But... You have somebody running up and down the lines, literally having to manually crank them if they see that one of the one of the mini trucks is out of alignment. So they run over to these thing that is literally like eight wheels on on like its own 
like dolly and they have to run over there jump on top of it crank the handle to turn it the correct way and everything they're really fucking cool Pagan, what the fuck is this image you posted so cal beck sent me that it's the bubble gun i was talking about in fallout 76 yeah so that's the thing it's literally just a bubble that you shoot at your enemy and then they float into the air what yeah uh okay here's kind of one it's not it's not the exact one I want, but here we'll use this one as an example because it's on. close. I'm gonna show this bubble gun on screen quickly. You sure this is from '76 and this isn't like a mod or something? I don't know. I don't know if it's a mod or not. I I wouldn't be able to tell you about it. I just know that I've seen it in '76 footage, and I'm just like, what is this thing? Uh oh, Cowboy just said it is a mod. Oh, okay. it is a mod. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, so that's... this is. And the picture I posted is kind of a heavy hauler, except they brought all. So imagine all of those wheels are separated out on their own little rigs, right? This one actually has them all together to hoist this whole thing, and they don't have the rear truck. But this is kind of what I mean by these like really weird like caterpillar extending trucks that extend out all of these like individual wheels hmm so you can kind of see you see how the caution tape is over the wheels only themselves well each of those separate into so each one of those wheels is its own actual like thing and that's what they separate out to carry some of these loads, these super heavy loads. I said, I wish I wish I knew what the exact term for these uh, trucks were. Uh, Australia uses them a bunch. Um, but yeah, I, unfortunately I do not. But yeah, I think one of these would be fascinating to have just like an American cruiser on the back of one of these. And then they got it working but instead of like, you know, they were like, okay, well, let's just take the cruiser with us. This is our mobile home. Let's go search for a better place. So like maybe if there was a fallout Kentucky or something like that, somewhere in the middle, like in the Midwest, you have this like come into the area. And it's like a big game changer because they have this mobile fortress that's coming through looking for a better, you know, for greener pastures, basically. That would be a fascinating storyline. Wait, is the bubble gun not in Fallout 76? I was almost certain it was because I've seen... I swear I've seen more than one video talking about Fallout 76 and then having footage of the bubble gun in the background. I swear I've seen at least more than one video about yeah. Fallout 76 where that was in the background footage oh an armored train i like that other suggest too an armored train an actual military armored train would be really fucking cool yeah i've like i said i've talked about my idea for a fallout game and that was one of the things that i said was like the plot should revolve around uh getting the railroads back uh in working order and stuff and then having like you know like reestablishing connections with the states and stuff and having a mobile or having an armored train that goes through and like, uh, you know, helps with all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, whoever controls the railroads controls the country. Yeah, like the and, one in uh, Boba Fett. No, not <laughs> not like the one in Boba Fett. Not the fucking yeah, no, dumbass no, not like train. That. Yeah, no, no, not, just... not the weird one in in Solo either. The weird like oh. it, it just turns oh. the freight down and you know, like the the freight spins around because reasons. Like, no, what? you don't get it, Sitch. Yeah. We have to do dumb, weird sci-fi fucking bullshit because it's sci-fi. Yeah. Yeah, basically like Snowpiercer. I think that would be a really cool idea, honestly. Um, Actually, we should get some of these super chats because some of them are getting up near the top. I think we actually did lose one at the top. Oh, we... Ooh, okay. I um, think um, I think there's one before QR 18s Well, I can check that quickly on my side. You grab the two that are there. All right, I'll grab, I'll grab Kiara's, and we'll keep going from there. You look for if there's one that we missed in there. Um, Kiara 18 with 20 Norwegian crowns. Thank you very much, sir. Remember, everybody, don't skip leg day. 
Oh, I didn't skip leg day today. I walk every day now, and oh my god, my legs about. I, I did something wrong with my left shoe. It literally rubbed all the skin off the back of my Ooh. left foot. I hate that. Yeah, I hate when that yeah. happens. You get rubbed raw. Yeah, I hate that. No, no. Every day for me is leg day. That's about all I work out is my legs. I need to work out my upper body way more. Uh, I do upper body uh, every every three days. I do a lot of weightlifting, and then uh, mm. I just I, now I'm walking every day. So uh, I don't do that. I got very, I have very poor upper body exercise work, unfortunately. But my legs could uh, could crush a cinder block. Oh, nice. Uh, five Canadian maple leaves from Yaluigi. Thank you very much. Thank you. If that thing's pre-war, imagine the gas that would have required that the U.S. doesn't have because of the whole resource war thing. Yeah. These things that's, are, like, ridiculous. That's the thing I find really frustrating about a lot of aspects of, especially Bethesda Fallout, where it's like, oh yeah, resource was scarce before, uh, before the war. Now here's all these resource-fucking-intensive things that we have running in the post-war where access to this stuff is even more fucking difficult than it was before. Oh god, somebody brought up Metro Exodus. It's like, yeah, it, it kind of like Metro Exodus is what I'm talking about, but it's annoying that they did that because I had my idea for that game long before that game came out, but now everyone assumes that Oh, so you saw Metro Exodus and just thought that would be a cool idea for Fallout. And it's like, no, I had that idea way before Metro Exodus was a fucking thing. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Stole yeah, my that, shit. That happens a lot. Um, because, again, it's that whole thing where where it, what happened in Deep Space Nine and Babylon 5. Both of the shows were airing at the same time and they both had this idea for a secret shadowy cabal things and deep space nine was using it as the would, would rename it to the obsidian order it was originally going to be called the gray order because the cardassians were grayish in complexion but then babylon 5 had the gray council and they're like oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> hold on how the fuck are we um ad limited already we didn't even say cunt this episode yet or retard oh there you go yeah, it's I even said pre I, preemptive I, strike. Yeah, I wanted to say like I wanted to say retard earlier, but I was like, ah, I'm gonna say fucking idiot this time instead, just to tone it back a little bit. And we still got fucking hit. You're usually good if you uh, last two hours. After the two hour mark, from what I hear, you're good to say fucking they whatever. Don't give it. Yeah, but they literally don't give. I like this comment to chat. It's just one word: contarded. <laughs> contarded. Yes, I'm requesting a fucking review on this right away. Now bring me over to the supers. I want to see if I missed one. Alright, um... Two dollars from Rage vs. ML. Thank you. I'm back. What yeah, did yeah, I miss? I knew I missed. A lot of stuff. Oh boy. Uh... That was right after we found out that uh, Rainbow Hawk wasn't Rainbow Hawk. Yeah, fair. Uh, ten dollars from Doctor McDingus. Thank you very much. Thank you. I hate that there are people from other countries in Fallout because that means there are established trade routes with actual advance and somewhat normal cities and nations, and we'll never see them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really fucking dumb. Yeah, and if that was the case, then why wouldn't America have access to more modern and like? usable technology because yeah. they could just import it from other places and bring it here and then be like yeah we we have working microwaves and stuff because we get them from australia and it's like oh, but but we never see that so <laughs> yeah it's weird that this logic exists but we never see anything come of it yeah um uh, right. so yeah i guess if we want to get back towards the video uh yeah i was about to say this... that this mobile base is, is a disaster on, like, every level. Like, eh, this is horrible. But, hey, it gave me an idea for a really cool, like, faction idea for a, for a Fallout-esque game or a post-apocalypse game. I think I'm going to jot that down for myself. And this gave me a really good clip from this stream that I'm probably going to use in the part two of the uh, Fallout 3 analysis. Yeah, well, there you go. Base crawler. The Repcon rock. So... 
Okay, a few differences. One, the retcon rocket is being repaired. Yeah. There's there's a big thing. And you could say the same for the Nuka Express. A, a train isn't as complicated as even a car is because you have some things you can work off of when it comes to trains. I guess it depends on what type of train, I suppose, if you have your normal engine locomotion. But I'm assuming the Nuka World one is, is acts more like a tram instead of a train. So you just need to get power to the entire line. So you, you fix up whatever generator gives power to the entire line. And then you make sure the engines, the, the engines are fixed on the train. I be pretty straightforward, honestly, to fix up the Nuka World train. Especially because it's, it's its own limited, like, you know, it, it is specifically designed for all the grades and variants that it would ever need. So, God, now I'm just getting rambly. I'm more curious about why this is a misconception in the, like, vehicles don't work even though we see vehicles in each of the games. I have to yeah. assume that vehicles don't work is a criticism that, oh yeah, none of the cars work. Which at that point, the discussion would be, well, none of the cars work. Yeah, why, why do because, none of the cars work in Bethesda's games? Because showing the rockets are working doesn't prove that the cars are working. You know? Yeah. Yeah, we, we already talked about the Fallout 2 Highwaymen. That's why we, we referenced that. And we were like... That's all you got to show. Fallout 2, Highwayman. Bam, I'm, done. I'm surprised he hasn't referenced that yet, actually. Well, he's saying he's not going to show all these for his example. So, again, he's trying to do that. I'll give you that ground. It's a very disingenuous argumentation style. I'll give you this ground. Oh, I'll give you that, too. Oh, I'll give you that one as well. It, it's, a, it's a really shitty argumentation tactic. It's false... Uh, what's word for it it's false generosity it's false uh. modesty you're trying to show how weak the uh, the opponent's argument is by conceding and giving them all these different parts of the argument and then you hit even you though, them with the bombshell even though these parts don't actually uh, contribute to the uh, overall argument yeah yeah uh, but yeah, so let's, let's. I guess let's see where he goes with this because he 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 would have to mention the Fallout Two car. He'd have to. I would assume. Yeah. Rocket MV Valdez, the B twenty nine, the Long fifteen trains, or the Highwayman. There it is. Wait, you're not giving the Highwayman? You're gonna? You have a different example? Okay. Okay. Curious. Let's. Okay. Let's go. You want to hear about the vans or the APCs or cars? Well, of course, some of those vehicles are not. Wait, but, you, but he's saying, but we'll talk about the vans, APCs, and cars. What the fuck do you think the Highwayman is? No, such. It's not a car. Oh my god, Come on. what the fuck? What the f oh, Jesus Christ. Come on, such. A car right. isn't a car. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Alright, well, I guess let's see. Let's see where he's actually going with it not operational either lack of fuel or power source some do work now they never actually work in game <sighs> <laughs> okay oh, fuck. some do work now they don't actually ever work in game so they don't I, work so they don't work yeah this is retarded I... like, okay so Holy you you guys and some people in chat and some people on the Discord server are going to know what I'm referencing here. There's a guy who made some pretty disingenuous arguments on my Fallout 3 video recently. And uh, we had a bit of a back and forth. And I mentioned, you know, there's no rain in Fallout 3, so the plants can't survive. And this guy is just like, you can't prove that it doesn't rain in the capital wasteland. I'm like, the fuck? I literally can. It doesn't rain at all in the game. Yeah, but that doesn't actually count. <laughs> so, what the game is blatantly portraying isn't true. Yeah. So, so then yeah. why is it portraying this when they have the ability to? Yeah, like, also that... It's like, oh, Ooh. because it would undercut the uh, atmosphere and story. Well, doesn't that 
Isn't that a, like, really good fucking sign that the atmosphere and story doesn't work then? Yeah. Or the world doesn't work? Yeah, and also, I fucking hate that argument that they always use of, like, well, the grass isn't necessarily dead, it's there, so therefore it must be alive, and it's like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, That's not that's, how it works. That's another one people use all the time when they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Oh, well, the grass is there, so there must be some reason for it to exist. It's like, Motherfucker, the burned out trees that are 200 year old, that were burned 200 years ago and are dead, would have turned to dust ages ago if this, if this was actually following proper logic. The entire problem is that all of Fallout 3 doesn't follow proper logic. Yeah, what there's I... actually, there's actually a video in our suggestions of a guy making this exact argument of like, but there's grass here, so therefore it can't be dead. And it's like, which, no, just because something exists doesn't which, mean it isn't fucking is, dead. Is that the video I'm thinking of? Is it from the same guy who's making the dumb comments on my videos? I believe so. Begins with a V? Yes. I think it is. I yeah. think it is, yeah. Um, Deus Volt Infidel has a great one. The grass ain't alive because it's there, motherfucker. A corpse is there. It's still a corpse. Yeah, exactly. That's the point that, that I'm, like, getting to. And it's like, yeah, just because something exists doesn't mean that it's alive. It, dead grass exists. I have a bunch of dead grass out here that's brown. And it's like, yeah, that shit doesn't go away. It stays there until you eventually burn it or cut it down. It doesn't just vanish because it's dead. But guess what? If you try and eat that shit, if cattle tries to eat that shit, they don't get any nutrients from it. Okay? They're going to die regardless if they keep eating that. It's not a food source. So the idea that Brahmin can somehow survive in the wasteland off this dead fucking grass what? makes no sense. And then he wants to say, like, but mutations. It Clearly it's mutated enough that it gives them nutrition somehow. How? Uh, Fuck off. How? He, here, here's a funny argument, too. Uh, I've gotten this one at least twice. You could The, uh, the Brahmin have an, anima er, an animation you could see. Where they reach their head down and they're eating uh, grass from the environment. It's like, okay, so there's instances of Brahmin being inside, like, buildings where they have a concrete floor or tile floor. And this animation still plays. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's clear, like, the arguments defending this are so fucking shit. Yeah, it's so terrible. Like... Oh my god, it, it's just so stupid because it's like, oh yeah, see, there, there, there's clear, there's no food anywhere, but see, they're clearly eating something, so therefore it's fine. It's like, no, you're literally saying that you could just eat air. Yeah, just eat air, forehead. Uh, oh my god, it's you so know, stupid. You know what? Hang on, let's be a pedantic asshole. Technically, you do eat air. Yeah, technically, you do. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's just so fucking stupid to me where it's like people who try to defend Fallout 3's like world and then the the best they could come up with, well, the air is obviously food. Hmm. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? This is your best defense of this game is that, well, they eat invisible stuff. Stuff that isn't actually there they can eat. Yeah. Shut the at, fuck up. At this point, I'd have to point to Arizona and Texas grazing lands which are often full of brown grass, except in the spring after winter rains. But that still doesn't address the lack of rain. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Uh, it's not to say all brown grass is dead either. There's the, there's also the argument of dormant grass, and that is the thing grass can do to survive is go dormant. But that's something they can't survive for like 200 years on. That, that That's something yeah. they can survive like six months to a year, I believe. Cool. Yeah, why? Because I can't eat my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I really think the everything is dead argument is pushing it, but eh. Well, see, that's the problem, though, is everything is dead by what we see in Fallout 3. Everything is in Fallout 3. Everything is literally dead in Fallout 3. Yeah, in fact, there is that's living. why there's a religious cult about this tree that lives. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's literally a plot point in the game for one of the things of like, look at this area. Look, look, there's actually living plants here. Isn't that crazy? And it's like, yeah, yeah it is crazy because how the fuck is everyone else still alive? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when their survival guide is just go to the local grocery store, forehead. It's like, yeah. What? What? 
What? Yeah, not even. Yeah, the local. Yeah, the fucking survival guide that you help create doesn't even say anything about like planting farms or anything like that. It's literally go to your local supermarket and scrounge for food. Yeah, that's something. You fucking idiots. That's something. Two hundred years after the bombs fell. This is something yeah. I found dumb when I first played Fallout Three in high school when I didn't look at media too critically. It's like. Oh yeah, I'm making this survival guide in this post-apocalypse wasteland. We need to find a food source. You should go to the local grocery store. It's like, even then, that was so monolithically retarded. Even when I was in high school, I was like, what? No. Yeah, same. You know, I was like, where? Guys, why? Where's the fucking fields of crops and stuff? Like, why aren't you guys planting anything? No, we get we get all our food from the fucking supermarket. Like, guys, oh my I god, this is a leftist fucking like. It's it's a leftist survival guide. Just go to the store, okay? They magically create food. It just appears there. You know what this reminds me of? And I'll start explaining this to the chat, okay? Because this is the funniest fucking thing I have ever heard. So, uh, there was a project. I don't want to go into details of what the project was, but... Uh, no, actually, I'll do it. There was originally going to be a movie about Fallout. The plot of this movie was... Wild. Wild. Oh. <laughs> there was a moment when they have to leave the vault to find the water chip. So it's a really bastardized version of the first movie plot. Of the first game <laughs> I know where this is going. Where you're going. And, and the smart brainy guy goes, oh, I see a phone booth. Let's go look up where a water chip is in the yellow pages. He runs across the wasteland into the phone booth and gets shot. And then a bunch of scavengers come out and said, "Ha ha, we have this one of those vault traps works every time." Keep in mind, <laughs> a phone booth <laughs> to get the yellow pages. Ah, oh, it's a trap for vault dwellers. It works every time. <laughs> Keep in mind too that like all the other Nobody... vaults have been like empty for years at this point i believe in the, in the movie's lore and yes. uh and, to and the point... our vault to has the... never opened before to the point where like new vault dwellers are fucking extremely rare because there's only one vault that hasn't opened so it's like why would you even be running this trap when the last vault hasn't like the, the previous vault that had opened, which was the second last, has it's been years since this happened. There's only yep. one vault left, and you, it hasn't opened ever. Yeah. Yeah, and these guys just sit outside of a vault that never opens just every single day, waiting for some retards to come out and run to the yellow pages in a phone booth. Like, are you fucking kidding? Yeah, it works every time, though. Every every single vault that ever opens, the first thing the vault dwellers do is they run to the phone booths to look in the yellow pages, apparently. Works every time, according to them. Every fucking time. Yeah. And it's and it's always the really smart uh scientist guy too. It's always them. Yeah. But it that, there are things in that movie that aren't terrible, like the idea of it being of like recreating Los Angeles underground. I guess it depends on like, what extent you do it to, but I'm like that seems reasonable to keep people from going mad for being underground forever. Yeah, that's reasonable. The whole, like, riding a subway train being, like, a virtual, or, sorry, an alternate reality experience. Or, I guess they'd be enhanced reality, because it's not VR, but, oh, God, I don't know, I don't know the actual tame, the actual tame, wow, the actual term for it. But, um, they just have, like, moving images on the background and they move the train cars if it's actually moving on tracks like that so it's to allow people to like unwind and think that they're leaving the vault make them think that you know like those, those are interesting ideas i can understand the logic behind them but then then they start going into detail about no it's an actual one for one copy of los angeles like what under uh, one for uh, one one for one copy of a few blocks of Los Angeles directly underground. I mean, you you can tell us you have no budget. Tell us you have no budget without telling us you have no budget. Yeah, it's like <laughs> goddamn. Yeah. Um, uh, oh god, it's it's so fucking dumb on many many levels. Anyways, 
We have a. Yeah. This is what that reminded me of. That, yeah. That fucking phone booth trap. Due to engine limitation, our tire tracks in Fallout 4 near some APCs. <laughs> it's due to limited engine limitations, which modders prove that's not true. You can actually drive around in New Vegas and everything like that. So it's just because of being lazy. Okay, so you heard the last thing he just said, right? The, there are some tire tracks near APCs, yes. I shouldn't, we shouldn't have to spell this out, but just for the sake of pointing out how mind-numbingly fucking retarded this is. Um, Pagan, Setch, what would happen to uh, tire tracks in dirt after 200 years? 200, 210 years. They'd be non-fucking existent. They would what? get worn away through natural wind erosion alone. But uh, here we see how... there's actual water erosion going on as well, because how... there's water in the other fucking tire track. How, how, how long would that take, Setch? Would that take, like, 10 or 20 or 100 years? Or how, how long How long would that take? A couple weeks, have? maybe. Depends on how deep they are, but a couple weeks. Um, the ones on screen here that, uh, that are, are very, very shallow and just, like, there's not that much to them. Like, surely that would a lot that would last at least like ten years, right? A week, a week maybe. Because <laughs> again, you've got you've got natural wind erosion, and as you can be seen, I can't tell if that's supposed to be water in the one closest to us, but there's obviously I... water in here. So you have water erosion and wind erosion both going with against these tire tracks. That we is need to water actually see with the APC dirt... vehicle. That is water because the dirt looks wet there. I need to see the actual APC vehicle. Does the APC vehicle look brand new? Does this look like something that literally just drove there, or is it old and rusted down? Like, why aren't you showing us the actual APC? Because you could show us the actual APC with the tire tracks at the same time. <laughs> what? See, what you don't understand is these are fossil imprints. Oh. <laughs> so, for anyone that doesn't know... The way fossils work is that there was something in between two layers of mud. The mud dries out and solidifies. The thing in between rots away, leaving a hollow void. That's how fossils work. Like, that's how fossil imprints. So people are like, how do you get those leaf imprints? That's how that works. Yeah. The leaf rots away in between. Uh, fossil fossils themselves, bones and everything like that. Those, yeah, as the body decomposes and rots, the bones... Uh, calcify thank you thank god calcify and yeah that's how you get bones and fossils but if we're talking about like actual imprint fossils like this that's how those are made the organic material rots away in between the layers also should also just go without saying but uh, these imprints in the in the dirt in the wet dirt it wouldn't even necessarily take like a week to get rid of them because like what Oops, if, sorry wh huh i actually hit uh, play on it. I misclicked. Oh, I didn't even see that. Uh, now you rewound it, so we're not even on that image anymore. Yeah. yeah anyways, there you go. Anyways, um, it might not even take a week for these to disappear. Cause like, what if someone just walked over them, and now you've got a new imprint? Yeah. Ooh, that'd be cool to see. Um, Devil Man Cal says there are fossilized footprints. Very rare, though. That would be interesting to see. Oh. Anyways, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen this... those. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, like, For... dinosaur footprints that uh, were imprinted. Anyways, this point here is beyond fucking retarded on its own, but it's ten times beyond fucking retarded that Bethesda did this in the first place. Yeah. Like, I mean, like... Can, we, can we see what the APC looks like that, um... made, that left these? Well, that's what I... I would... That's my immediate thing. Was like, Show me the APC that left these. I'm pretty sure they exist within the world. It's just, you know that no, one I know, where you can walk into the to, back? Yeah. I need to see, is it an APC that looks like it's been sitting there resting for hundreds of years? Or even a few years? Or is it like a fresh APC? Well, no, because that doesn't matter because um, none of the APCs in Fallout 4 actually move or are functional anyways. No, that's true. But to his point, I'm, I'm like taking his point. If I give you the best interpretation of no they actually do work we just don't see them show me this apc that left these tire tracks this because this is the evidence you're presenting us these tire tracks going to this apc but you're not showing us the apc yeah why 
Look, there shouldn't even be any paper garbage after 200 years. Not if it's been oxidizing the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There are tire tracks in Fallout 4 near some APCs, indicating that they were once worked. Recently, too, as rain and debris would wipe away pre-war tracks. Okay, but that's... So, so you're starting to understand the problem. Show us the APC now. That's not proof that these things were moved there either, though. Like, even if it does look fresh, that's not necessarily proof that it's functional or moving. Like, again, yeah, you, Bethesda you doesn't have... seem to know how fucking anything works, and they do this shit all the time. This is... You could have a bunch of people pushed it. Maybe not an APC, but you get the point. People could have pushed it. It doesn't mean the vehicle's working. But if also... your car breaks down and a bunch of people push it, did is your car working because it moved? No, it's because a bunch of people are fucking pushing it. Yeah. And if people pushed it, too, their footprints would be in the dirt as well. Yes, but, again, this, this just doesn't work on many, many levels. It looks like uh, the tires left rubber burns on freaking dirt. I don't think that's possible. No. Um, no, it's just, it's just, it, there is depth and tessellation to this. There is actual depth to these tracks. Oh yeah, that that's really what you're bad. To. Yeah, yeah. Those, it's not, it's not black because it's a scorch mark. They're, they're actual depth and shadow. Yeah. But it's just, yeah, it's very rough. Working, and then mentions that a Raider gang's truck had just recently broken down. So, working vehicles do. <sighs> so, working okay. vehicles do exist. Okay, dude, working vehicles existed in lore in Fallout Two. That would have that that that's not a misconception anymore. We know vehicles can work. The problem and re why reason people complain about this is because. We never see vehicles working ever in any of the games past that. And technically, you don't see the Highwaymen actually working. It's just kind of a teleport Let, thing. Let's, let's be a little bit more specific. We don't see cars functioning or trucks or anything of the sort um, yeah. in these games. So the note in Fallout 3 that, oh, yeah, the Raiders had a truck that broke down. 76 well, is what he said. 76? Yeah. Jesus Christ. That's even worse. Because um, yeah. he was showing Fallout 3 footage there when the note came up, so my brain just kind of connected that to Fallout 3. Whatever. Point is, if vehicles are working and no one is using them, that's a fucking problem. Because raiders having access to a working vehicle could do fucking drive-bys in little camps and stuff, and that would be devastating. Yeah. Yeah, vehicles would make a huge difference in the wasteland. It would absolutely turn the tides of yeah. control in the area, and yet we never see a single vehicle of any type besides vertebrates ever doing anything in these games. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing, too, is in um, Operation Anchorage, we actually get to see, like, tanks moving and stuff. You know how fucking valuable it would be in the post-apocalypse to have a tank working? Like, holy shit. Yeah. So we know it's possible, and they just don't do it. Yeah. This is one of the things I was really excited for with the Frontier mod, was they were gonna have all this stuff, you know, like, working tanks and cars and stuff, and you would see them in cutscenes and actually being used in the world. Unfortunately, that mod ended up being completely shit and worthless, <laughs> but... Yeah. It was a cool concept. It was like they, they took something that they knew people were interested in, wanted to see, and tried to apply it. But unfortunately, the uh, the people behind the mod are uh, retarded, to say the least. But um, yeah, The tech was yeah. there, at least. Like, they actually had functioning vehicles and everything. That tech exists. It proves that the engine can handle it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, oof. exist and follow it, refer back to the long list. For an actual reason, it's just that the engine limitations restrict the players. Again, you, no. engine limitations don't mean anything because modders make it work. Yeah, it it's can't not be an engine, engine limitation. limitation. Yeah, yeah, you can't use engine limitation as an excuse when modders can make it work. Yeah. So, we, we've seen it is not a limitation of the engine at all. It's just Bethesda didn't want to do it. And then Obsidian. 
You cut out there when you said Obsidian something something. Oh, I said Obsidian didn't have time. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I think the solution, naturally, to, would be just to have no vehicles not work. Like, yeah. if you can't yeah. get them to work in engine, just say, oh yeah, this, the cards don't work, it's fine. It's not yeah. that big of a deal. Hey, they um, could literally just run it off as, yeah, it, they got EMP blasted, they don't work. Or they've on. been sitting for 200 years unmaintained. Like, yeah, even people that... More... People were more worried about self-survival, and we lost, like, the ability to even work on these things. Like, maybe and... that could be a plot point, is somebody's actually starting to uncover how to make these engines run again or some shit. Well, that's kind of what I was about to say, too, is... And if you want vehicles in the future, you could have them in a very limited capacity, so it's, like, a very rare thing. To this point, we've only seen in the canon games the Highwayman in Fallout 2 work. That's, so that's an extreme edge case of vehicles working. You know? Yeah. Just yeah. have a piece of them like that. Like, oh yeah, Fallout 5 comes out in fucking 30 years from now or whatever. So, don't make a game like vehicle heavy focused. I don't know why you would. But, um, you decide to put in a couple vehicles there and have it be an edge case where it's like, okay, yeah, so this group of people... They have the knowledge of how to get them working again, and that's why they have access to this uh, this utility, this resource. Yeah. It's a new development. No one else has them yet. They're only just now starting to remake them again and get them working. So there's only a few. So there you go. There, now you don't have to worry about literally everyone in the entire wasteland needing to have cars. But yeah. you do have access to at least a few. Yeah. There you go. You can even make that that them having the car like increases their power and their control of an area because they have the means to transport goons or supplies or whatever they need to where it needs to go. Yeah. They could patrol a larger area and do it way faster. Yeah. There's ability for a lore reason, a multitude of excuses could be power, no fuel. I mean, we just EMP, so... I mean, sure. But, but, again, the lore reasons... Why are you bringing up lore reasons why they wouldn't work if your whole point was they do work, though? No, you don't get it. You found so many tracks in the dirt. That means they work. Yeah, uh, but... He, he found a note in Fallout 76 that said a Raider truck broke down, so that means they work. Yeah, but now he's saying, like, these are reasons why they, sh they wouldn't work in lore. No, shut up. They totally do, though. Oh god, dude, he's just <laughs> <laughs> poor road infrastructure, worn tires, rust, and so on. Besides, if you were cruising your way through the capital wasteland, you'd miss all the nooks and crannies that make No, that no, doesn't no, 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 matter. No, no, no. This doesn't matter at all. Besides, if you were if you're on a horse, if you were driving in a Jeep, if you were on a motorcycle, you'd miss all the nooks and crannies. It's like Fallout was never about exploration for exploration's sake. No, you don't oh, get it, though. That's the it's best part of... more about the characters, the factions. Oh. You don't get it, though. Exploration is the best part of Fallout 3. It's a great game, 10 out of 10. Yeah. Oh, look, 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 look at all the generic dungeons they can go into for generic loot. Look, I just I like the fact that... Book. I just like the fact that he's showing vehicles in the Fallout games working... Right, right here on screen. I, mean, I assume these are drivable. These are a mod. It's a, it's, a, it's an engine limitation, though. Yeah. Oops. Oh God, what? God, yeah. People. Fucking hell, it's so stupid. And by the way, I know there's vehicle mods for New Vegas too, because um, I, I remember playing around with a vehicle mod before the Frontier came out. Yeah. So there was a the Frontier was isn't like a unique vehicle. case. There was a mobile semi base uh, you could drive around, so you could have your crafting benches and everything in the back trailer while you drove around. Yeah. See, so that's there not was the one I used either because there was yeah. a mod that actually adds like a fucking car dealership to New Vegas. Which, yeah, like, there were yeah, two types of vehicle mods back then. Yeah, before the frontier, there was two types. There was the ones where it's literally just a teleport system, where you never actually drive the thing; you just tell it where to go, and you show up there with the thing, you know, there with you. 
And then the other one was the XMV stuff, which was kind of like a prototype of the Frontier stuff where you can drive stuff like in jank. real time. Yeah. It's but it's super jank. It just like floats along the ground. It doesn't actually drive. It just floats. Yeah. Vessi also brings up a very critical point in this. If they don't want you to miss anything, why have fast travel enabled? No, stop using logic. Don't think. Just just consume. Yeah, holy shit, man. <laughs> holy shit, this video is. Woo! <laughs> We're four minutes in, and this has been a fucking disaster. Yeah, this is abysmal. It's fucking crap. Yeah. <laughs> Make Fallout great. Conception number three. The point of divergence is X event. Okay, yeah, this is one where even I had it because I thought it was the microchip that wasn't invented, and those it turns out it was. It was it was miniaturization that didn't uh, work. We'll see if he does that point. I'm not sure why this point even really matters, though. Like, it's misconceptions about Fallout lore, but the previous two were, like, very significant to the gameplay uh, or the world in some way, whereas this is, like, more of a deep lore thing that doesn't really change anything you know yeah so i mean we'll, we'll see we'll see maybe it, it, this could be one point that he actually gets though but this is a misconception it's like okay fair enough i i have that misconception all right let's see where this goes right. divergent events before in a previous video of mine you should check it out if you haven't already nope the idea is that in speculative fiction a divergent event is used as a way to open a new timeline in an alternate universe to our own the fuck was that Poor shit drawing. Like, Jesus Christ. You know, you could have really easily... Like, it's a line, and then another line splits off from it. If you want to go, like, deeper, you can have other lines splitting off from other lines. Why'd you just, like, scribble on the page? Yeah. Like, Fucking this is totally banana, unnecessary. Alright. Anyways. I want to point out, too. Sorry, before you go. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Look at this image here. So this is supposed to be like a timeline, right? Which yeah. means all the lines should be going forward and never backwards. Yet there's like they curve... constantly go back. They constantly go backwards. That's not how time works. Ever. Unless you're like the fucking doctor and you're traveling all points of time in the TARDIS, but even then, it's like it would look different than this. Yep. Yeah. That's XKCD. Still, he's using it as proof of like the timeline. But it is funny that he took it from someone and didn't credit them. I thought he yeah. made it himself, but ooh. <laughs> God damn it! Two dollars from Jacob. Thank you. This video is fire. Call that N Orte uh, Dame. Yeah, Dom. So kind of like Notre Dame. Oh. Yeah, remember that that burned recently? Yeah. <laughs> so I just re read that as Dame because of uh, Dame Pesos. Dame, Dame. Dame, yo. Dame, Dame, yo. What? <laughs> Bakamitai got uh, memed on real good. Because, uh,. Yakuza Zero is what kind of exploded the Yakuza franchise in the West, and one of the most memorable things was the the uh, the song Baka Mitai that mm. the main character sings at the karaoke bar, and he just has that moment of uh, going into how like deep and sorrowful everything is. <laughs> People have memed the shit out of it, so Dame yeah. gets used all the time now. Things. Yeah, it was it was everywhere for the longest time. That meme, oh, it, it just saturated into everything for a very long time. Uh, yeah, the fucking <laughs> Dame, Dame, yo. And uh, before Mishima, because I know Mishima likes to watch these uh, back later, before Mishima corrects me on how to pronounce it, I ain't Japanese, fucker, you are. So, of course you know how to pronounce it. I don't. <laughs> Anyways media and any specific events could be offered as the sole divergent event fallout doesn't have a singular event where our timeline split i thought 
thought it did because they actually like reference it in the Fallout Bible. Okay, I guess we'll see what he says. Yeah. It doesn't have a singular event where our timeline split. While it's true that Fallout takes place in a hyperbolic world to that of our own, no one is able to point. What? No. It takes place in a divergent world from our own, not a hyperbolic world from our own. It's not, it's not a, an exaggeration or overstatement at all. It's, it's a divergence from our world. Like, what? What? I can't. I can't with this video right now. And also, was it, wasn't that divergent point, like, literally after the, uh... I want to say Sierra Madre. Oh, no. Um... It's the it's the military base was built. That was literally like the sighted point after the military base on in California was built. That was where it diverged completely. Yeah, I can't want I can't want to say Sierra Madre. Holy shit! Yeah, I hate when that uh, happens when you're trying to think of a word and it's just the wrong one that's coming to your head and that's the only one you can think of. Yeah, it's like you're sitting in a movie theater and. You're like trying to think of like, hmm, what word is it? And then some asshole two rows in front of you jumps up and is like, Sierra Madre, Sierra Madre, Sierra Madre, Sierra Madre. And you're like, no, it's not that. But then they just keep going anyways. It's like, no, sit down. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Stop doing it. Point to a specific of where the timeline splits. Some people have tried, though. The Fallout Bible, a non-canon source, mind you. Cr made by the people who made the originals. It was a canon source. It was The Fallout Bible was made by the original people. It was made non-canon by Bethesda, if anything. Yeah, it was retconned out of canon. It was canon before. What the fuck? What <laughs> the fuck? Oh, okay. Wait, uh, your Madre is a real <laughs> big sad. <laughs> Claims that the follow time sometime after World War II. A popular claim is that the transistor not being invented in 1947 is the divergence point. Which, again, that was a mistake I have made because the transistor was invented. It was miniaturization that didn't take off. So that was one that was a misconception I had. It was compiled by Avalon. Yeah. Yeah, he's technically not wrong. It is no longer canon. But it was canon before Bethesda fucked it all up. And then made it non canon because of their fuck up. So even then I wouldn't really consider it a misconception. Because it was true until Bethesda said now we're going to take a shit all over this. Yeah. That far to find examples of followed exclusive events happening before World War II. Sunset Sarsaparilla, an entirely fictional soft drink manufacturer, was founded in 1918, which is well before World War II left. Okay, so okay, let so me I'm, explain I'm... to you the concept of fictional brands existing in fiction because they can't say fucking Coca-Cola in yeah. whatever fiction you're making. Jesus Christ. Are you sure? But they had Balls Garana. <laughs> Fucking brother. <laughs> How dare. Uh, How uh, dare. But yeah, no, again. Yeah, and, and his whole point was like, yeah, it was before World War II. Yeah, it's at the end of World War One, And it's a fictional company to explain that it has history. That's not the divergent thing. It's like, instead of something being called uh, Coca-Cola, um, we get Pepsi Coke or something like that is the name of this company. It's like, okay. It's clearly referencing a, two companies in the real world, clearly, but they just didn't want to use it for whatever reason. Yeah. Wait, Coca-Cola is Nuka-Cola? It'd be funny if Pepsi-Cola was Nuka-Cola and then Coca-Cola well, was Sunset Sarsaparilla. That'd be, that'd be interesting. Well, it'd be like, um, Simpsons has, like, Duff Beer, right? Which is obviously a fake brand invented for The Simpsons. 
Because I can't yeah. literally say, oh yeah, Homer drinks Budweiser, or Homer drinks fucking, um, um, Coors, or whatever. So they yeah. have Duff. And it's like saying, well, this is proof that the timeline of The Simpsons split off earlier, uh, because Duff was invented in 1692. It's like, no. What? Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? It's just them getting around having to pay the brand to use its brand. Yeah. Like, there's a reason that originally CSGO had shit like the Arctic Warfare Magnum and stuff like that. Because it was well, it was supposed to be the Arctic Warfare Precision and everything like that. That's it, It's just ways to get around it. It's why you had the Nighthawk versus Desert Eagle. It's why you had, like, instead of a, a Glock, it was a I, Block. Stuff like that. I want to point out to something in chat because people are bringing out product placement. That's very different from what I'm referring to. Product pay, excuse me. Product placement in a show or movie is when like either the a brand reaches out to the creators or the creators reach out to the brand for a deal where the show gets paid, uh, the the studio gets paid for showing this brand off in their thing. So it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have a nice cold uh fresh glass of coca-cola yeah mm. or and then you look at the uh camera and say whatever fucking tagline coke has i don't know what it is yeah um, or like the godzilla movie where pepsi cola obviously reached out oh, there... for a brand deal and so godzilla walks by a pepsi machine everything else gets destroyed but the pepsi machine lights up big and bright it's I... obvious that pepsi was there it was placed there intentionally, on purpose, because they had yeah. to deal with Pepsi. Um, what uh, what was that fucking shitty zone? World War Z had an exact moment where uh, Brad Pitt walks up to like a co uh, a Pepsi Cola machine, and then gets a Pepsi and drinks it, and like with the logo facing the camera. Yeah, and, that uh, perfect way they have to turn the bottle and, so the logo faces the correct way. And there was also Transformers, where um, the kid was running around with the magic robotifying cube. And it, it stabs into an Xbox 360, and you hear the startup sound as it's turning into a Transformer. Yeah. that That is product placement. What we're talking about is, like, fiction having brands that are clearly, what? like, knockoffs of... Like, the easiest example is Nuka-Cola. That is obviously the Fallout version of Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. Or look at Call of Duty. Do you know how long it took Call of Duty to actually be able to use the word Humvee or Hummer or anything like that? Because the manufacturer was like, no, we got to protect our brand. And you're going to be showing Humvees and Hummers getting blown up. It's not allowed. It's like, well, okay, well, we can't pay you your ridiculous, your ridiculous, um, exorbitant rates or anything like that so fuck it we'll just not even refer to them at all it's the same thing where like why they can't call it an m16 why you have like all these weird names for it and all these different video games for different guns because they don't want to pay licensing to the gun manufacturers yeah and again it's not that they don't want to support the gun manufacturers that they don't want to pay the licensing fee <laughs> <laughs> Takes a long sip of Coca-Cola trademark with the logo in view. I would never sell myself out like that. Didn't fucking um, Wayne's World have a joke like that? There's, where, there's um... a lot of ones that, that did that. <laughs> like, there was one where it was a Captain Morgan one that was fucking great. And he's like, he's like, sell out. And the guy's like, what? I would never sell out. And then he literally takes a drink from Captain Morgan with the logo showing and even steps up on his on his chair to make the pose and everything like that. Yeah, you know, But he's still looking at the guy and he's like, honestly, it's ridiculous that you would think I would sell out for any amount of money. Yeah. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen Wayne's World, but there's, uh, Garth was, like, in Adidas clothes and stuff, and he's like, he says stuff to the effect of, imagine selling out like that. <laughs> Yeah. I'm probably misremembering the scene terribly. It's been, like, well over 15 years since I've seen that movie. Yep. Oh, and there you go. Uh, Threadnought's talking about Goldeneye, and Walter PPK in Goldeneye is, the, in the game, is called the PP7. 
I mean, they, these are just ways to get around paying the licensing deal. And if you're going to have a, a, a computer brand, you don't really want it to be like, hey, wow, that game you made, real cool and all. Um, you use our corporate branding and logos in it. You're going to owe us a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, you kind of want to avoid that. So making up your own fictional brands, totally fine. Yeah. The PP7. This was a big tangent to explain fucking Sarsaparilla existing isn't a sign of the timeline changing. Yeah. Or diverging. Yep. But yeah, this was a dumb fucking argument. Last I checked. Examples. We look to the polarizing Fallout 3 DLC, Mothership Zeta. Uh... <laughs> polarizing? Uh... Mm. There's people yeah. out there who have said that Mothership Zeta is the best of the Fallout 3 DLCs. I don't yeah, fucking know I, I, how. I would love to know how those people. A Nazi pistol becomes British spy iconic weapon. Yeah. Well, it's because... Spoiler alert. A lot of the spies and everything after World War II were Germans. <laughs> they were... Oper people have this weird conception that Operation Paperclip only took... Nazi scientists and researchers and upstanding clean personnel. No, they took a lot of SS and special forces and spies and everything, too. No. A lot of them. That's what... Fucking Archer. The, the show, the spy fiction show Archer makes the joke about it, like, oh yeah? Go to any secret agent meeting and say, Hall Hitler, and see how many of them snap to the Nazi salute out of instinct. <laughs> Like, even in fact, their own scientist that is currently working with them is a Nazi, a hardcore Nazi. Jesus, it's it's great. <laughs> Ishiro Kago, Lactese, was a samurai from the 1600s. As far as okay, that doesn't mean the timeline diverged. A, a random samurai went missing in the 1600s. Is not the timeline diverging? How does that change the timeline? A random person went missing at this time. Okay, they say the butterfly effect. How much did that actually diverge the timeline? Well, no, you see, the timeline diverged at the fucking beginning of time because even though Earth turned out very similar to our own Earth up until a certain point where everything started tra uh, changing drastically. Um, Fictional elements exist within this world before the divergence that we know of. So because fucking aliens exist and invade Earth in Fallout years before uh, the Great War, that means, or before World War II, that means fucking the timeline diverged forever ago. Yeah. Like, what a shit fucking point. Absolutely. So so if you do alt history in any way where Earth turns out differently, whether that's like slightly or drastically, if you invent like fictional aspects of any kind like aliens, that means the divergence was millions of years ago instead of like 50 years ago? The fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Also, goddammit, Pagan, I just saw you post. I missed out <laughs> my pesos? I do too. His laugh was fucking glorious. I hope he's alright wherever he is. Yeah. I mean, this is just, this is just really fucking weird. This is like... Again, you, you should have stuck with the misconception that transistors were never invented. Because it turns out, no, they were invented. They were just invented later. And micro uh, miniaturization was not prioritized. Yeah, That's that would have been a stronger argument. Not this shit. You, you had a slam dunk and you still fucked it up. Yep. As far as I know, completely fictional alien species, once again pushing back whenever the divergent point would be. No, that doesn't push back. Oh my god, that doesn't so, push back the divergent point I, at all. I, I made that argument even before he, like, I didn't think he was literally going to come right out and say it, but he did. That pushes yeah. back the divergent point even farther. So, millions of years then. All the time it would have taken for these aliens to evolve and achieve the technology they do and travel across space to find Earth. Yep. All, all of that time. B 
billions of years possibly. That's where like di where the divergence happened. So Earth being exactly the same aside from fictional brands, up through the fucking 1900s prior to World War II. That's all different timeline completely now. Yep. Oh. Yeah, man, man that is good. horrible. All right. Let's see how much more this is going to get fucked. Imagine being this desperate to fucking make a point. Jesus Christ. I know. When you had when you had an actual misconception and then you threw it away. Like, oh, dude. Come on. Or, for example, while the Atlantis of the Sands is a real ancient city that was discovered in 1992, the notion that the city was home to an ancient alien civilization is exclusive to the Fallout universe. That is exclusive to Fallout 4. Yeah. And um, also, it, it wouldn't have mattered. That doesn't mean it's divergent. Okay. Did this city affect anything in the Fallout 4 universe? And, yeah, let's we'll just go Fallout 4 universe. No. Okay. Did it affect anything in the real world? No. Okay. Well, congratulations. Not a divergence point. No, you don't get it. There's a magical crown in there that fucking made a guy go crazy, I guess, and that's where the divergence comes in from, even though this didn't change history at all. Yeah. It literally didn't affect history in the slightest. What I'm trying to get at is a divergent event, rather the follow timeline finding path, jumping back and forth between our timeline and an alternate one. There is no why are you showing an amplitude chart? What the fuck? <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> what? What does that have to do with time? I get it. I get it. He probably just didn't want to make something, and he just found this and online and grabbed it. Pagan, but it would have taken like stupid. it would have taken like a minute of time to to draw the chart. You okay? You, you do your graph the way it is here, the fucking T thing. You have, um, don't even bother with the, the amplitude up and down. Just have the time go straight forward. Then have two other lines, our timeline and the fallout timeline. Then have the line bounce back and forth between the two. There's your fucking chart. That would have been, you could have done this in like a minute. Oh, uh, you know what else he could have done? Make a he good fucking just gotten... video. Well, yeah, but it, it... He literally could have just opened up paint and took the a fucking eraser and just erased the fucking amplitude, amplitude part. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you could have done that too. And if you're worried about the blank space, since there's um, a grid in the background, you just copy a selection of the grid and make it up line up over top of the blank space. Yeah, the best part is the fact that you have all that grid to the left of it that literally isn't used, and this is the exact same length you need. You cut that out, put it, paste it right there. Yeah. Done. Yeah. It's not a big thing. It's just I I find it funny that this is what he went with. <laughs> I, I also like this comment in chat, Bruh, A divergent timeline is a divergent timeline. It doesn't. Ugh. It doesn't this person doesn't even finish their thought, but I know where they're going. It doesn't go back and forth between our timeline and their timeline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not how it fucking works. I. I just find it hilarious how this person was making this point and they just literally stop mid sentence, mid fucking word and go up uh, because because the point this guy is making in the video is that fucking stupid. They're just <laughs> Yep. I think we could take psychic damage. Yeah, I think that's part. an easy, easy, easy one right there. It's just yeah. dusted for sure. <laughs> There is no singular event. There is, though. The Mariposa military base opening is what is referred to in the original games and by the original Fallout Bible as the Divergent Point. That is when history no longer follows our history anymore. God damn, this is so stupid. What a fucking retard. <sighs> Made a whole video about misconceptions and then completely fucks it.
has gotten a three for three wrong so far. Let's see. Yeah, has not three. gotten a single thing right so far. See, and again, I've already said this. This was a slam dunk point so far. This is the one he could have gotten right. Yes. Yeah. Easy peasy. Misconception. York is a crater. This one even blew my mind. That's. Uh. What? I don't even remember New York being referenced at all. I think this I is like I... a Fallout Bible type thing. I have heard this one before. I just haven't seen the original source for it. Mm, okay. I haven't. Because I, I... The closest thing that I've ever seen referenced in Fallout is Chicago in Tactics. And it's not it's not a crater. And it's like, yeah. well, if Chicago's not a crater, well, then I doubt New York would also be a crater. Yeah. Well, I mean, if... And then, if and then Washington, we got Fallout 4, so... If Washington, D.C. isn't a crater, then I don't think fucking uh, New York would be. Yeah. I don't know how Washington, D.C. isn't a crater. I, I don't understand yeah. how. That, that's the one place that actually should be cratered in a, in a nuclear war. Yeah. The seat of government of your enemy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And... And then, you know, we got Fallout 4, and it's like, yeah, if, if Boston is still around, then, yeah, no, New York is not a crater. At some point, even I... The reality is, there's nothing in it that supports this claim. And believe me, I've looked. The Fallout Bible does mention an event happening in 2065, we're due to enormous demands for electricity. A nuclear reactor in the city almost goes critical. The near meltdown brought into effect power rationing. This event was termed as... Wait, 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 wait. I, his little texting at the bottom. As a side note, critical reactor equals normal. Super critical yeah. equals bad. Yeah, I was going to fucking call that out and be like, wow, thanks for pointing that out. I, I would, I, I'm just too stupid to have possibly known what super critical could have meant. Yeah. Just, okay. Right, well, whatever. Goes critical. The near meltdown brought into effect power rationing. This event was termed as hot summer, but it never mentions a crater. I think this came from the idea that because New York is a major metropolitan area, it would be a high value target for bombers. And so people theorized that New York was a crater. Then this rumor spread by word of mouth. Which, yeah, you can see why. It's the same thing why Washington, D.C. should have been a crater. It's the same reason why... San Francisco was mostly turned into a crater. Like th these are like specific targets you want if from if you want maximum damage, you're gonna target Boston. You're gonna target New York City. You're gonna target San Francisco and San Diego and everything. You're gonna target these major uh, areas of. You're gonna target Toronto, for example. You're, these are gonna be targets for you. Because there are a lot of condensed people of your enemy. Like, again, we're talking nuclear apocalypse here. You want to do as much damage as possible. Yeah. Like, of course you're going to hit Washington, D.C. That's just going to make sense. Because Washington, D.C. is the seat of your enemy's government. Of course that's going away. In I fact, thought... they called it. That's why the Enclave even moved away from Washington, D.C. long before the bombs came. I thought there was a lore source somewhere that said New York had been cratered. Apparently but, not. But yeah. I, I guess not. Um, I could try looking it up quickly. Yeah, I guess this wasn't a misconception that I had. I hadn't heard anybody else talk about New York being a crater either. So I don't know. Yeah, I've never even heard of this theory. So I have heard of it before. Um, I just never looked deep into it because I. Honestly, I didn't care that much about New York since it wasn't relevant to anything in the games. Yeah, I didn't really give a shit either. That's why I didn't know anything about it. I mean, I'd be surprised to find out that it is just a crater, but I don't think it would be. It doesn't seem like it would be anyway. Alright, are we good? We good? Yeah. Sentence about a place with not much established lore surrounding it that you just can't blame people for simply accepting. Actually, no, you could blame people for accepting that because it's like, why? Why did you accept that? 
Like, if it's not less established lore, uh, fuck. I, I think the issue wouldn't be so much that people assume it to be true. I think the issue would be if people complained about it, if we were to get a Fallout New York, which contradicts what people assume. Yeah, you know? it, it, yeah. This, it's just weird that it's like, oh, you can assume it to be true because there's not much known about it. Like, why would you assume it's true? It's like, you would just point out the fact that we don't know anything about it. Yeah. That's the rational thing to do. We, we don't know. We don't know for sure. Like, cool theory, but we don't know. Yeah. I, I guess the difference would be... Oh, sorry. I guess the difference would be people um, wouldn't know it's a theory or an assumption. It's just like, if, if someone tells you that um, this this something happened to Dallas, Texas in the lore, you'd probably be like, oh, well, all right, I don't see why that matters, but all right. You know? I guess, but I'd yeah. be like, I'd just be like, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, whatever. I don't believe you, but whatever. That being said, everyone should have known better with the release of Fallout 4. One of the early location ideas for the game before the team decided on Boston was New York. <laughs> but it wasn't in New York, now was it? So New York could still, by their theory, be a crater. Yep. So now, oh my god, are you actually going to fuck this point up too? Yep. You need to showcase that New York is not a crater. This is now what you have to do is showcase that New York is not a crater. Saying that New York was the original plan for it, and then they decided not to, and they went to Boston and said, does not mean New York is not a crater. I want I want to point out something scary to uh, you guys in this okay. image. Look at the bottom line. Oh, fuck, no. Thank God you are not on the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah, holy shit. That that does scare me, though, because that's two near misses from Bethesda where they almost sit on the West Coast. So how long until they do finally give us a West Coast game and then they fuck everything into the dirt even worse than they already have? Yeah. Ooh, actually, Angry Danish Vikings as such. Imagine Fallout Denmark, or Fallout Australia, or Fallout Ireland, Del. Oh, well, um, actually, Fallout Ireland would be interesting, because you would have inbuilt tensions with the whole IRA and the, you know, the decades of, of the troubles and everything. Like, that could be cool as a Fallout experience. I want to see Fallout Canada. Well, it's not Canada anymore. It would be Fallout Northern America. What... Okay, if the U.S. were to annex Canada, wouldn't it just still keep the provinces, but just call them states now? The state of Ontario, the state of Saskatchewan? I don't know. they probably try to split it up more. Possibly. But well, I actually I don't be know interesting they... to see on a map, actually, like, within the Fallout universe, what they consider... Well, we'll, we'll find out in ten years when we finally kick out your dough. It's going to take um, you guys yeah. that long to take over Canada? Well, we've got to undo all the damage that's been done to us first. Uh. But no, um, I I don't know, honestly. Uh, what would we call it? Would we just keep uh, the name Canada? That'd be kind of funny. Well, the, Canada, they, they probably wouldn't keep the name Canada. But um, Calbeck and Chad is saying, ah, oh, that would actually be territories. So... Canada does have provinces and territories, um, which are just provinces with a different name, I guess. Um, so I guess if the, if the U.S. were to annex Canada, then each of the provinces would then become territories of the U.S. Yeah, so you'd be territories first, then you'd have to go through the process of becoming stood, and it'd be a lot harder to get statehood if your state is bigger it's much easier to get more of a concentrated group of people to agree to statehood so yeah it probably would be broken up into smaller states then who knows though maybe you could convince everybody in like alberta to be like no no what we like that what if we'll just, we'll just become the state of alberta 
Well, no I one like lives in Alberta agrees. anyway, so... But that's what I mean. Like, there, you have a smaller population, so you have more chance of getting the majority of that population to agree. They would, oh my god, they would be a horrifying swing state. Holy shit. Oh my god, that would be, that'd be like, every single politician ever would be going to Alberta and constantly campaigning, because they would be like, one of the greatest swing states of all time. I wonder what province actually does have the least amount of people. I'm, I'm curious now. Actually, you know what? It's probably one of, like, the smaller provinces, like Nova Scotia or something. Prince Edward Island, probably. Maybe, yeah. It would definitely be Prince Edward Island. It is a tiny place. Um, five Canadian maple leaves from Yaluigi. Thank you very much. I'm pretty sure, lore-wise, Canada has no state representation. It's just martial law due to all the rebels who don't want to be annexed. Yeah, could be. The least populous province in Canada is Prince Edward Island, with a 2016 population of 142,907 people. Jesus Christ. Every politician would be campaigning there forever. Holy mother of God. That is a very small population. But like I said, it's it's a very small island. Yeah, but I'm just thinking about, like, if that got granted statehood at all, dude, you would have a permanent campaign residence there forever. Just, oh my god. Oh, anyways, anyways, back to back to the video. It couldn't have been a crater if the developers wanted to make it one of those weird. But they didn't. Therefore, now it because they didn't, it could be a crater. Okay, do you see how do you see how this works, my dude? Uh oh. What? Oh God. It was you. You weren't talking at all. So I was like, "Sorry, oh, I was, did it happen?" I was looking up the population of um, provinces because I am genuinely curious now. Um, you might find this terrifying, Setch, considering your last comment. Newfoundland and Labrador in uh, Q2 of 2022 has a population of 500,222. Sorry, 522,875 people. Prince Edward Island has uh, 167,680 people. Nova Scotia has 1,007,049. New Brunswick has 800,243. Um, Quebec has 8,653,184. Ontario has 15,7816. Manitoba has... Uh, oh, I did fuck that up. I'm just looking a bit down the list. Manitoba has 1,393,179. Saskatchewan, 1,186,308. Alberta has 4,500,917. So I was wrong when I said no one lives there. Oh. Um, British so Alberta, Alberta would not be a swing state. <laughs> British Columbia has uh, 5,286,528. The territory of Yukon has 43,249 people. <laughs> the North... yeah, okay, so if UConn ever became a state, that is where everybody would put their campaign headquarters, every single politician ever. The Northwest Territories has 45,607. Nunavut, yeah, holy... Nunavut has 40,103 <laughs> people living there. Yeah, and none of it will have uh, any free space but campaign banners everywhere. Like... Holy shit. The smaller the population... By the way, the reason why it is the smaller the population, guys, the easier it is to completely take their electoral ballots. So, yeah, they would be... They would be campaigned to to death forever. Um, I also like this comment in the chat. 90% of the population is within 100 miles of the U.S. Yeah. Most yep. of our po uh, population is huddled along the border. Um, Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Nunavut are like 
literally the territory, so the farthest north. So, um, they're 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 the ones that are right next to Alaska. So, I agree, I agree, Forsaken, that um, we don't need any more states. I don't think we have too many states as it is. I think the U.S. is a healthy state size. Um, but we were just going off of the assumption of if the U.S. annexed Canada and then we started moving to give it statehood, how would the statehood be split up and everything like that? So, And I started thinking about, well, by process of elimination, if they did get statehood, which state would be constantly flooded with politicians campaigning for the White House? Yeah, and that would be the three territories up north and Prince Edward Island. Yeah, territories that are really small, so your money has a major impact on the population of that area. Anyways, back to the video. It's just one of the cases where we've all heard this claim, but we don't know where we heard it from. Misconception. Well, I've never heard that, but... Okay, so you fucked it up. Your, your proof that it's not a crater... Well, it can be a crater because they were thinking of setting a game there. They didn't, though. Okay, so it's back to potentially being a crater. Yeah. So this is like, the way... Apparently this guy doesn't understand this. This is the way it works. Until we see it in the game, that location could be anything. It could be a garden. It could be a crater. It could be a mountainscape now. It could be under fucking water. It could be a lush jungle. Yeah, we don't know because we haven't seen it. Yeah. What it is is a blank check for that location until we visit it. Yeah. Number all NPCs, terminals, and notes are telling the truth. Who the fuck said that? What? Who? Ha! Huh. You know what he's doing here? He's trying to defend Bethesda's lore changes. So when 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 a character, oh God. This is the same thing of Bethesda doing the whole history is written by the victors, so. <sighs> I I hate, and I hate Bethesda so much for causing this. Yes. This is so fucking stupid. Uh, apparently New York was hit by nukes according to the news made in Fallout 4's opening, Cree. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's a crater. Yeah. Like, you, again, you have to understand. Again, Hir Hiroshima and Nagasaki aren't craters. They were hit by nukes. Um, Washington, D.C. was hit by nukes. That's not a crater. The White House is, but the rest of D.C. isn't. Yeah. Mirnon was lying. <laughs> uh... All right, all right. Well, let's see. Let's see how this goes. Truth. This is only applicable to Fallout, but any storytelling media. When you write a story, and more specifically, you write characters, you want them to be as realistic as possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Let's but there are there. ways. There are ways to clue in the audience that what they are reading is not correct. Yes. Okay. Fucking Game of Thrones, uh, sorry, A Song of Ice and Fire does this really well where misinformation gets spread between people and it becomes more obvious that it's not correct because a lot of times you get to see the actual thing that happened. What was um, the lie the Tywin, or sorry, the Lannisters made about um, Stannis Baratheon? Uh, to, uh... That... That his daughter was the right. child of uh, the fool of um, the fool, not his. Yeah. Um, what was the fool again? It wasn't Moon Boy. That was um, Patchface. Patchface. Yep. Yeah, and he's super fucked up because he's like the minion of a fucking eldritch <laughs> being. Oh uh, yeah, of the of Cthulhu. Basically, it might as well be Cthulhu. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, that's the rumor that the Lannisters spread. And we, we see how this uh, started. Because it's uh, when that happened, that was actually them coming up with this plan to get back at Stannis for the whole uh, incest claim between uh, Jaime and Cersei, which, which is fucking true, true, by the way. Yeah. But um, you see it elsewhere in the book where other characters are talking about this lie and, you know, they don't know how true it is. Um, 
some believe it, some don't. And then Stannis himself talks about it, how it's fucking disgusting that they would say this. Yeah. And again, it was it was showing the fact that Stannis is a man, and is an incredibly principled man. Incredibly principled. Yeah. That's why when he does, when he has to do anything that's even remotely shady, it's un- very uncomfortable to him. Because he's the... He's very much the stoic officer. I will stand in the light of day and do everything in front of the people. And, you know, I am clean. I don't have any shadiness behind me. Nothing. I that's, I was the dutiful brother at all times. That's one of the things I liked so much more about the books over the show is that when Renly died, Stannis was genuinely fucking um, disturbed by this event. Whereas in the yeah. show, it, it was... He didn't seem to care. It seemed like he was in on it. Yeah. And but, in in the books, he had no idea about the, the monster, and, the and, shadow monster. Thing. And he was actually upset about his brother's death because he didn't want his brother to die. Yeah. And, and this is this whole thing going back, uh, going back to medieval chivalry. Even if somebody claims to be an uh, a usurper to the throne, they claim to be a false king, they still claim to be a king to gain certain respects from nobility and everything, there is a certain way you treat kings, even if they are false in your eyes. So, um, a great movie that shows this is uh, Kingdom of Heaven, where Salah Hadim captures the king of the new king of Jerusalem, and he berates the new king of Jerusalem for trying to be so bloodthirsty and outright trying to execute Salah Hadim. And he goes, he tells him. In his own words, a king does not kill a king. Instead, what he does to the king of Jerusalem is he parades him on a donkey with a false crown uh, that says king on a placard around his neck, and he parades him in front of the army while he's captured. He's literally, like, humiliating him in front of his army while still recognizing that you are a king, I cannot kill you because you're king, you're nobility. Yeah. You are supposed to be a chosen servant of of God, in their case, of Allah. It was a really cool scene, and a great moment of him showcasing why he respected the original king of Jerusalem. Because the original king of Jerusalem, even though he was an enemy of the Muslim people, he showed, he showed respect and dignity to them. Don't remind me about Game of Thrones. I just killed Stannis by making him brain dead. The more I think about Stannis Baratheon yeah. in the books and him in the show, pisses me the fuck off. I really There's need to get working on that video script. Holy There's shit. There's a reason why the book fandom has and still calls Stannis the one true king. Stannis the man. Yeah. Because the books build a really good fucking case for it. Even if he isn't, like, the proper heir... Because the books do cast doubt on his claim as well. Yep. Um, but the fact that he is such a principled character and he cares so much about the realm makes him like one of the best people to actually run it. Um, and, and that's one of the other things they do too is they show, by showing what an honorable person he is, it's, it's the whole, um, yeah, the man is fucking boring as a person. But he'll be a just ruler. And, and yes. that's the point. He, Because, you know, uh, Robert Baratheon, he's this uh, boisterous guy. He ha- holds all, hosts all these tournaments and people love him for uh, what a rowdy person he is and what a, what a fighter he is. But he wasn't a good king. Yep. Him and Baratheon are polar opposites in that regard. And <laughs> him, him and Baratheon? Sorry, him and Stannis are polar opposites in that uh, regard. And, yes. um... Like, the books seem to make a point of, yes, yeah, Stannis really would be probably the best option for King. Um, with Jon Snow obviously being a contender for uh, what's going on in his story. Yeah, and they showcase it in the books, too, that who are who is the last King standing? It's fucking Stannis! <laughs> He is, he is the last, like, legitimate one of the claimants, the Four Kings, the War of the Four Kings. He is the last legitimate claimant standing. I, I do like how they uh, even make the claim that 
you know, it's not actually the War of Five Kings because one of them came in after the first one of the four died. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he has the last one standing. Um, Joffrey again, dies. Uh, yeah. Greyjoy, what was Rob, his name? Rob Stark dies. Yeah. Um, oh god, I forget what, what the King Greyjoy's name was. So, Euron Greyjoy is the uh, younger brother. Yes. The, the slightly younger crazy, brother. A crazy evil piece of shit, which you oh, don't yeah. get in the, in the show. Yeah, the the only good part about Euron in the show is that he killed the fucking Sand Snakes. Yes. Like, that was actually... I, I mentioned this on the Discord server the other day. That's an actual pretty good moment born out of stupid writing all the way around. Because the Sand Snakes were fucking insufferable, and Euron was insufferable. But at least he killed those pieces of shit in their dumb fucking plot. Yeah, and the writers realize, wait a minute, Danny's got a really massive armada and a bunch of dragons. We gotta smash it up real good! Mm. So oh, stupid. someone in chat said Baylor Greyjoy? It was Balon Greyjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Balon Greyjoy. And what a way for, for each of them to die, though. Like... Yeah. Very poetic in the ways that they died. Like, he's literally murdered by his his younger brother, who's a crazy fucking madman. And was exiled. Yes. And his brother comes back breaking the commandments of his king and not, his older brother to not, kill him. Not just that, but this guy plundered fucking Valyria. Like, holy yes. shit. How the fuck do you do that? He, ha he has an entire suit of armor of Valyrian steel. Like, holy <laughs> shit. I can't wait. Oh, God, we're never going to get the books, but I can't wait to see him in a fight. Like, in the books. Yes. Oh, dude. And and then, um, yeah, and then Joffrey getting poisoned at his own wedding. Yep. Oh, so fucking good gets to die before the the wonderful matrimony can like before it really begins oh, it's fucking good. rob stark's death is tragic he trusted in the goodness of his people and everything and one of his people was a fucking snake yeah and of course he, he didn't trust the phrase but he realized that he fucked up with the phrase and everything so holy shit so he was actually trying to make amends. Like, he was trying to do the honorable thing and make amends, but obviously the Freys were bought and paid for already, and of course... Yeah, fuck, um... Oh my god, I wanted to call him Baratheon again. God damn it. Oh, um... Uh, the Frey? Uh, Walder Frey? No, 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 no. The, the Northern Traitor. Um, oh, um... Oh god, uh, uh, it is... I, I know, right? <laughs> He becomes the Warden of the North, and I can't How? remember. Bruce Bolton! Yes, Bruce Jesus Bolton. Christ. I, I was like, he becomes the Warden of the North. The Goose, the Goose is, the Roos is loose. Oh my god, it's, it's Bruce Bolton! Yeah. I had to work up. Well, see, Frey was coming back into my mind constantly, because Frey and Flay, and the Boltons are known for flaying people. Yeah. Oh, and even better, the Civil War in House Frey is coming. Because some of them are siding with the Starks. Oh, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good if we ever fucking get it. Yeah, I know. Because now George R. R. Martin wants to work on fucking Kit Harrington's Game of Thrones sequel show. Yeah. On top of everything else. Yeah. Like, I, I swear to God, this man better be fucking hiding in immortality fucking thing he's got where he's gonna live for the next 200 years so we can eventually get fucking winds of winter and a dream of spring i'll tell you what i will i don't care how old i am i will cripple walk my way up to him shaking from all the things can't lift my head up because it's you know old age is 90 year old low. Setch confronting uh george r, r. martin and i'll find oh, you from his it. hands I said I'll finally take Winds of Winter from his hands, from the freshly printed. I mean, oh boy. And then you'll die fucking seconds die. later. 
die as from excitement as my heart gives out. I see I see Chad as being as optimistic as I am. The next book is never coming ever. We are not getting Winds of Winter. We keep getting preview chapters of it's like okay, what I was appreciate the last preview these. chapter. I don't remember. But I think uh, we've had what, seven preview chapters now? It's like, okay, I appreciate that. Can we just have the book? Please Yeah. Like George, stop with all this fucking we don't need fire and blood. Uh we don't need the Game of Thrones show season fucking nine or the Jon Snow show or whatever the fuck it is. We don't need any of this shit. We don't need House of Dragons. J- George, just give us wins. For the love of God. Dude, he's just baiting. It's been over a decade! How do you bait for more than a decade? He's just an old man who can't fucking write anymore. I don't think it's that he can't write. It's that he just... I. I... I would be okay if he just admits he has writer's block because he made everything so complex. So like, I'd be like, okay, understand him. But he doesn't. If he doesn't say that, he doesn't do anything like that. He's just, it's just like, it's like the worst cock tease ever because it's it was really is really satisfying head up until that point, and then suddenly it stops. You're like, why? Yeah. That moment in the book when Tywin's brother dies, so good. Yeah, because, God, I like that moment too because, um, what's the brother's name again? Um, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin Lannister. Kevin Lannister. Because he, he's someone who seems to have been living in Tywin's shadow for a lot of his life, and now Tywin is no longer there. And he's like yep. the head of the family. And he's trying, He he's not as brutal or... Um, as ruthless as Tywin, but he still cares for his family, and he does seem to want to do the right thing. And and part and part it turns out he's pretty good at it. He's pretty good at leading. Yeah, and um, um, <laughs> he he's actually trying to rein in Cersei's craziness, and then Varys is like, "Yeah, I can't let you do that, though. We need her to be this fucking crazy." Yeah. You're one to talk about shitty work prior to, prioritization, Cree. I know. I'm sorry. But at least I'm not making people wait a fucking decade for a novel to a massive series that millions of people have investment in. Yeah. Oh, God. It was just... Oof. Yeah, so I... I mean, I guess, like I said, we've gone off on this whole tangent now, but our entire point um, was the fact that in fiction, in all forms of fiction, doesn't matter the media, there are ways to clue the audience in on this is not real. And yes. it's most of the times by showing us what is real. Uh, 25 Polish Lodi from Super Jazz U. Thank you very much. Thank you. What up, gang? Just got finished my fourth Marwin playthrough in a row. I don't think I played Skyrim four times in a decade. Spear Gang, rise up! Oh, nice. Spear Gang, gang. You want the plot in the game. Real people have motivations, reasons they do what they do and say what they say. Therefore, your in-game characters should have motivations, too. Yes, they should. It's too bad that doesn't normally happen in Bethesda games. Yeah. Like, what is, father's, what is father's motivation? Yeah, why is the Institute making simps? I don't know, they'd be cool or something. They're the next step in humanity. Okay, how are they the next step in humanity? There are slaves that we make do menial work and uh, don't have any kind of real personality. It's all fake. Yeah. What? So it's like, okay, how, how, what, all right, why, why are you making sense? I'm Why just... can't you just make robots? And yeah. then you just hear the fucking dial tone go as they try to think. Yeah, the fucking uh, dial-up internet sound. Um, yeah. I'm surprised they don't have confirmation bias either, because they want to make uh, synths that do have their own personalities and ideas. But anytime one starts to show one, they wipe their personality because they expect them to be... Ro- like, the entire thing is just contradictory. I hate it. Yeah. It's just, it's very frustrating. The entire, entire thing is frustrating when it comes to Bethesda's right. 
Um, also, yes, Yar, I've heard that as well, that George R. R. Martin lost the will to continue the story when D&D decided they no longer needed his opinions and consultation on where they were going to take the story. Yeah. Mm. I've heard that as well. And boy, boy, howdy, trust me, if George R. R. Martin puts in his will that that is the reason why he stopped writing The Winds of Winter and A Dream for, of Dream of Spring... I am finding these fuckers. I am buying a ton of eggs, and I am going to egg the ever-living shit out of all of their vehicles and homes. Yeah. Make sure make sure those eggs are, like, really ripe, too. Like, just leave them out in the sun for, like, a couple days. No, I guarantee they live over in California somewhere, so I guarantee the sun's heat is going to bake that shit real good. Good. But yeah, if I find out that that's fucking true, if that's what's in his will, again, because this is another thing, um, a dying man's confession or a dying man's words are taken as true because what does the dying man have to gain by lying? It's, it's a legal precedent as well. What does what does a dying man have to gain? Um, so yeah, um, actually got used in the Punisher uh, series to take down Fisk. Um, cause a dying man confessed to a lot of the operations. Like, okay, what does he have to gain? Uh, anyways, yeah. But if I find out that's fucking true, if that's in his will, oh boy. The best way I can polarize in character from a little 1998 computer game called Fallout 2. Myron is the character in question. Are you sure you don't mean Mirnon? <laughs> but oh okay. Boy. Here we go. Polarizing character. Here we go. And we we I said earlier he's got to talk about the jet thing, right? So here we go. Called Fallout 2. Myron is the character in question. Myron is a teenage pharmacologist in New Reno whose big claim to fame is being the creator of Jet. In reality, what basis does the chosen one, or even you, the player, have for believing him? He's a slimy predator. I mean, the fact that he makes it? Like, like, why do we have... What What do we have to so, dis disbelieve that he actually did it? That He seems like somebody that would be trying to make drugs. Yeah, so just because someone is, like, a scummy, underhanded individual doesn't mean everything they do is, like, fake. Yeah. Um, I, I believe the, more that he made the drugs because of his personality. Why creator in quotations? Isn't it true? Yes, it is true. The thing is, he's trying to cast doubt on this. Because Bethesda has retconned Jet to be a pre-war drug. So for that yeah. to be true, um, Myron has to not be the creator of Jet. So they have to retroactively cast doubt on his claims that he made Jet. So people yeah. like this, these fucking... I guess Bethesda fucking shills have to... Well, he's a dirty and underhanded individual, so isn't it possible he lied about it? Um, I guess maybe. It's maybe possible. We have no reason to believe that, though. Yeah. Again, him being the way he is makes me believe it more that he created a drug. Because he seems like somebody that would try to make an addictive narcotic substance that he could profit from. Yeah. It's like it's like the the Walter White situation in Breaking Bad, but do we really believe that he made the drugs? Like, well, Walter White is an egotistical, arrogant piece of shit who's wanting to get back at life. I absolutely believe that he'd go into meth production. Also, this comment in chat, he explains the history of the drug and how it was made by him. Uh, sorry, how it was made bit by bit. What the fuck? Yeah, you don't put that much like detail and history into a drug you didn't make. Yeah. If you had really faked it, you would say, you'd come up with some fantastical, um, genius fucking, and then I realized what could really get them addicted. It was it wouldn't be like, oh yeah, we noticed the workers were getting fucking high from this shit, so we found a way to bottle it and sell it. Yeah. You know? Fucking insanity, man. But again, these people have to discount... The, what was said in the original games to protect Bethesda's fuck ups. Yeah, because Bethesda fucked it up, and that's the problem. 
by getting Oops. people hooked on his makeshift form of methamphetamine. I've mentioned this before, but the chosen one can even call him out on it. I only use Myron as an example. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa good job not showing the fucking dialogue tree there, just your I've character this... calling them out. Yeah. I convinced a child like you didn't just stumble across it, Myron. Okay, what's the rest of it then? Yeah, what's his response? Yeah. Seems a little bit fucking in, uh, disingenuous to me. Yep. As before, someone can even call him out on it. I only use Myron as an example because I think it's one of the few cases where it's not outwardly obvious that an NPC is lying to you. It's not outwardly obvious he's not lying to you. Yeah. He could be entirely telling the truth. And therefore, Bethesda just fucked up, which they consistently did when doing the writing. Emil even says so. Emil's talk, Emil's speech talking about how many awful decisions they made, how many fuck ups they had was brilliant. And again, brilliant, not in a good way to make Bethesda look good in a brilliant in a way of like, yeah, no, we pretty much knew this. Thank you for confirming it. Why is that dialogue not being shown in-game? That alone is suspicious as hell. Does this line uh, even actually exist? Um, well, the thing is, it might be a cut line of dialogue, and that's why it's in the uh, in the wiki from that image, rather than actually being in-game. But yeah. yeah. Um, so. I don't know for sure if that line is in-game or not, but if it's not, pretty fucking disingenuous. Um, yep. I'd call that an outright lie. Um... If it is in game, then why don't you show a screenshot of it? Why don't you show the again the response to it? Also, I gotta agree more. With, I gotta agree with Calback here too. Um, also, that dialogue is suggesting the player does believe Myron came up with it by stumbling onto it, as opposed to by being a genius. It's an accidental discovery instead of being an engineered one. I, I'm adding the instead of being an engineered discovery at the end. But yeah. I agree. That would be my thing for it. Well, not just that. The way you package and sell it could still be a, a work of genius. It's not yeah. necessarily the creation. It's how you... De or, sorry, it's not necessarily the, uh, the discovery. It's how uh, you decide to use it. Uh, $5 hey. from Jacob. Thank you. This is a concerning thing about disingenuous videos like Oxhorn's Retcon 1 or Many a True Nerds. Garbage baseless theories treated as fact. Yeah. Yep. If he was lying, there would have been a whole quest to expose or bribe him. Battery yeah, low. Battery low. <laughs> Battery low. Alright. There are other cases of NPCs lying, like Barton Thorne lying to you about his trapped girlfriend, only for him to betray you once you've cleared the geckos in the area. Or Jacqueline and Nipton, who after killing Thomas, will feign friendliness- Charging and battery. And her gun on you too when you're not looking. Just because an NPC... Okay, Charging battery. both of those are from New Vegas. Not just that both of those are from New Vegas, but the fact that um, their lies are pretty fucking obvious and immediate. Uh, we're getting yeah. a lot of sound from <sighs> Vegas. Huh? We're getting, yeah, it, like... Yeah, it's, it's a hum. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, my fan is on in the distance, but... Uh, I'm gonna mute anyway here in just a second. I just wanted to say, like, yeah, it's just, it's stupid that, uh, fuck, yeah, I don't know, I already forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> well, it's, this... Oh, yeah, it, it's blatant, like, yeah, they, they immediately turn on you if you, like, well, in Jacqueline's case, it's if you say the, uh, if you say that you have more of those bottle caps, she'll turn on you, but also, there's a note literally on Thomas's body if she kills him that says, you know what really happened, and it, it it immediately tells you that oh she fucking lied. So for him to be like, you know, use those as as examples against Myron is just super disingenuous. Especially because these are both examples where you get proof that they're lying in the game itself. Yeah. Not oh potentially maybe could be lying. It a character is possibly lying about the thing, so nothing can ever be taken as truth, and everything is up in the air to fucking trample over and shit over. We want to make our next game that contradicts what this NPC said. Yeah. When there's no actual, like, basis for disbelieving them. 
And as Kelpik says in chat, hey, NPCs lie to you occasionally. Therefore, Myron lied. Yep. It's just really, really, really poor reasoning here. Yeah. Um, and this very much seems to me less like the misconception is that characters lie in the game and more that this was his way of getting the, the jet thing in. Yeah. Because, um... Yeah, that, that, that's like a big one for the Bethesda defenders is, oh, well, maybe Myron was lying. Maybe uh, there really was Jet before the war. Well, there's no evidence of this. Yep. There Except no for... Jet all at once. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, yeah, Prince Amongst King gets it. Yeah. Lying exists, therefore the lore can change however we please. A middle school of writing, yeah. It's a really dog shit hack school of writing. Well, it makes sense that such a point would be used in this video because this is dog shit hack video. Yep. I I understand now why people were like were saying before in the server that oh, Enorte is fucking terrible. Yeah, I can see that. I I understand. I've seen the light. Yeah, he hasn't gotten a single point right, and I don't think he will. I think this is going to be a full-on L for this guy in, in well, terms of the There's, entire video. Yeah, pretty much nothing left in the video. One of his points was a slam dunk. Yeah. yeah, that's the one I don't get, how he fucked up that one. How it was perfect. Just say the misconception is that people think the transistor doesn't exist. Boom! Right there! And then showcase, no, the transistor does exist. And this is, this is the actual thing that happened. But people misconstrued it for this reason, that reason, whatever, to transistors not existing. Done. That's that. That's a win right there. Immediately, slam dunk. You've got it. It takes a very yeah. special kind of person to take a slam dunk victory and turn it into a loss. You know. You know what this guy did? He realized that the he realized he's playing basketball. The goal was open. He goes charging down the court, jumps up in the air, and slams the ball in, and realizes he just scored on his own goal. <laughs> And that's why the court was fucking open, because everyone else was in stunned disbelief at the actual basket hoop he was supposed to go to. <laughs> See, it tells you one thing does not mean that it's 100% true. The information given from these things can be rooted in bias. Okay, yes, bias is not the same as a lie. So... All right. There's plenty of characters in Fallout New Vegas that are biased towards their own side. We could see this pretty fucking clearly. Clearly. Yeah. Allegiance is great and is a utopia is a biased statement, for example. Yeah, but that's also not a lie, because to him it is a utopia. And all he has to do is point behind him. Our cities are cleaner. There isn't a lot of banditry. All of the roads for our traders are safe. We purge the punishment of death. We purge the uh, degenerates. Yeah, we destroy all the 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 hostile animals. So the flora and fauna, like to them, it is in comparison to the normal wasteland. It is a utopia. That's not a lie. He is obviously biased. Yeah. Because, okay, how do we get to your utopia? Well, you'll have to become our slaves or prove yourself. It's like, okay, that's not good for us. Stack the bodies, Griffith. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Uncensory T, welcome to OWL membership. Thank you. Good morning, yeah. Stag. How's the video so far? Fucking terrible. Yep. Now, this isn't some conspiratorial rant about how the Fallout world is out to deceive you. It's just a reminder that all the information presented to you will have... God damn it. Hi, Reader. Oh, I'm the narrator. Off. Everything you read is in my point of view. What you'll come to realize when reading is that I hallucinate and sometimes tell lies. Um, so, this actually works against your point here because this is something you find out through the course of reading, if this is actually a thing. Because he literally says... You'll come to realize when reading that I hallucinate and sometimes tell lies. Yeah. So your example you're using here actually goes against your own fucking statement, you idiot. Well, again, to, to reference um, A Song of Ice and Fire, 
We get chapters from Cersei's point of view and how fucking demented and paranoid she is about everyone being out to get her. Yet when we yeah. get chapters from those characters' perspectives, that's obviously not the case. Yeah, and some of them don't even notice she's there sort of deals. It's like, holy shit, they, they've totally forgotten that Cersei even exists because they got other things to deal with. But Cersei's like, no, everybody knows that I'm the center of the universe. They're coming to get me. He's going to kill me. It's yeah. Like, oh, dude. I'm just annoyed that he's trying to like, oh, I, I like, oh, guys, I'm just trying to remind you that this thing because of this, it's like I'm not actually, you know, but I'm not the one being biased here. No, 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 I'm just reminding you. He's trying to make it sound so much more innocent than it is. It's like, dude, it's fucking obvious that you just did this so you could try to get the jet thing in, but he's trying to act like, oh no, it's I'm just I'm just giving you guys information about a misconception. I'm just letting you guys re remind you that that people lie and sometimes yeah. there's liars in in this game and stuff like that. And that's all uh, that's all I'm saying. And it's like fuck off, you fucking disingenuous cunt. Yeah, especially right after he just said Myron is lying pretty much straight out when he's yeah. not as far as we can tell. Like the yeah. best evidence suggests that Myron isn't lying. Um first time I've managed to stop by live is this some jack-off justifying retcons in uh, Fallout again? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Not, not all of them were retcons, but all of his points were fucking terrible. Yeah. It's just, it's just you know, he had a perfect slam dunk, and then he fucked it up. Yeah, I can't I get was, over that. It was impressive. It was impressive how shit it was. All right. And NPCs aren't always reliable storytellers. They provide perspective, not. Dude, yeah. Notice how those aren't lies. I see a boat! Land! That's not a lie either way. Like, sure, he is hoping for an actual boat to get rescued, and he's hoping to get off the fucking sea. Fine. But Jesus Christ, man. You need to pick your examples better. Do we actually, do we accidentally stumble onto the video of like a thirteen-year-old who doesn't know how to logic? Maybe. Like he doesn't sound like a kid, but he certainly has like the argumentative capabilities of one or the logic of one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty really weak bad. logic for sure. Yeah, someone said he had the same cadence as Chills earlier, and I'm, I'm just like, that's an insult to Chills. <laughs> I didn't even, uh, yeah, I didn't pick up on, uh, we, we definitely didn't get a number 15 in this, so. <laughs> um, 25 Polish Lodi from Super Jazzyu, thank you very much. Thank you. What concerns me more is he doesn't see this sets a press, a president, that nothing in Fallout can be engaging, since what's canons uh, still will be gone tomorrow. Yeah. <gasps> It's why Elder Scrolls is such a problem because none of it can be considered canon because they can literally change at the whim of a writer who says that it's really hard for him to write because nobody listens to his story. So he just like pretends that they're just going to make paper airplanes out of it and ignore it. That's not a good thing. Yeah. Number 15. Can I get the number 15? I fucking lost my shit at that joke in Smiling Friends when it first came up. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Orte seems like a chill stoner you could low-key smoke a bowl with and talk about your day with. Uh, light up fellow potheads. Well, <laughs> maybe. May maybe? But that doesn't mean his video was good. His video was fucking dog shit. but from their own point of view as people living in the world. The Powder Gangers speak ill of the NCR because they lock them up for crimes. Does that make the NCR objectively bad? No, just from the Powder Ganger point. The fuck what? are you talking about? What is this point? What? So I'm about to blow your mind, Anorte. To the Powder Gangers, yes, it does make them objectively bad. Is it a lie though? No, because the Powder Gangers have evidence that this is what they're doing to them. Yeah, to they... the great cons, the NCR are objectively bad. Does that make them lying, though? 
No, because they have shit like Bitter Springs to showcase people. Look, it's like, again, yeah, they are biased. We agree. They are absolutely biased. Doesn't mean they're lying at all. This is really bad. Oh my god. This is what he's trying to use. Keep in mind, this is this these points, these right. examples are what he is trying to use to justify his belief that Myron is outright lying to the player. Yeah. And I, not a single one of these is backs up anything he has said. I need to check something quickly. Okay. Do you want um, us to wait? or? Yeah, just wait a second, because uh, I'm opening okay. this up in a new tab. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll close the tab after. Um, I want to see the kind of like views and like the dislike radio this piece of shit video had. March 5th, 2022. This has 315,000 views. Um, nearly 316,000. Oh, um, oh my god. Jesus fucking... This has 13,000 upvotes. 915 down votes. Yeah, oh Jesus Christ. People Woo! like this shit? Yeah, apparently. What the fuck? Oh, God. Uh, double dropped here. Uh, Bitter Springs was an inside job. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. I, I am shocked at the like to dislike ra uh, ratio this garbage video has. Holy fuck. People just eat up mediocrity. I'm telling you, people, people, dumb people are attracted to other dumb people, and unfortunately, <laughs> there's a lot of dumb people. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know. I got it. I got a pagan because stupidity is dense, and density attracts other dense matter, getting more dense. It's just going to be a fucking black hole of stupidity eventually. Uh, yeah, it's just like, oh. Uh, force users attract other force users. Stand users attract other stand users. It's like, yeah, stupid people attract other stupid people. <laughs> they really do. And unfortunately, I don't know what it is about... I don't know if, if we're just more acutely aware of how many stupid people there are in the world now than we used to, but it feels like the majority of people are just fucking stupid like no common sense whatsoever and then yeah I don't know it just it bugs the fuck out of me cause it always feels like the dumbest worst shit always gets far more rewarded yeah. than actually thought out and detailed works I hate it I hate it so much Oh my god, actually, Fallout is a perfect example of that. The original games have just, like, fell to the wayside, and then look at Fallout 4 and the success that that got yeah. in comparison. It's like, yeah, mediocrity is just... Yeah, if you want to make it big, just be as mediocre as possible, and yeah, you're guaranteed to become a fucking billionaire. All right. Let's get this. Remember, we got another video to go through. Let's get this one done. Let's yeah. get it done. Uh, point of the Brotherhood back west rights of our. Uh, okay. No, sorry. Uh, hate, hate Brotherhood of Steel. Right. Arthur Maxon, as though he is a god. Is he a good person worthy of worship? No, not really. What I'm trying to get at is that you should be critical of what you read, hear, and see in the games. Okay, so you need to presented... explain why he's a terrible character. If yeah. you're going to say, like, I don't think he's a good character either, but I think he's a fucking Gary Stew because the game is like, yeah, this this 19-year-old kid... Sorry, hold on. We need to get the frame. We need to get the frame for this. Uh, yeah. Um, this 19-year-old kid... Uh, well, I guess 20-year-old uh, man. 20 years old. I have to stress this, 20. He is a goddamn Gary Stew because he's like... The super talented fighter that uh, destroys super mutants and everything. Um, the <laughs> the West Coast Brotherhood unanimously agreed he should be an elder at the age of fucking 20. Which is like, like becoming an elder is the culmination of like decades of experience. Yes. Um, it's a fucking JoJo character. 
he even the worst JoJo characters are better than this guy. I know, oh, but the setup in terms of it, like yeah, the age thing. It's like, like uh, the age, the fact that like yeah, you it's know, like... at this age he's doing this, this, and this. And he's just perfect and all this shit. It's like I could see that being a JoJo character. Yeah, it's like how uh, Jotaro is uh, what 17, 16, 17 in um uh god what's part three called stardust crusaders yeah he, he's like yeah 16, he's like and he's just like muscle bound hulk that looks um at least mid-20s but like clearly an adult yeah and then as like the series goes on it reveals that like he has a bunch of other talents that he's really good at as well it's like he's just like a jack of all trades that could do anything and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I could definitely see Max but, and being a fucking JoJo see, character. Here's the thing, though, is that that's excusable if the character is likable. Like, to a degree. Um, Jotaro is a likable character in JoJo. Maxon isn't in Fallout 4. Maxon is just kind of fucking dumb and annoying, honestly. He's a JoJo character in that he's a villain. Yeah. yeah. Um... 25 Polish Lodi from Super Jazzy U. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. How the fuck did we get to the Powder Gangers? The topic is Jet. Occam's Razor, you shard of a walnut. Emil didn't know anything about Jet and won't admit to it. Yeah. And Bethesda won't admit that uh, they fucked up on anything. If you call them out on it, Pete Hines will cry about how it's a fictional game. Pete Hines will cry about Space Wizards in a game made for children. Yeah. Basically. All right. Come on, let's knock this out. Uh, Less than a minute. Hold on, did you really just spoil that dry complimentary? Fucking hell. Um. Yeah, continue. Though he's a god, is he a good person worthy of worship? No, not really. What I'm trying to get at is that you should be critical of what you read, hear, and see in the games. As much of the information presented to you is done with some amount of bias. Anyway. It doesn't mean it's a lie, you idiot. Like, you need to prove, prove that Myron is lying. A lie is an intentional, um, it's an intentional falsity. intentional statement of falsity. Yeah. So, like, um, Australia is in the Northern Hemisphere. That's a lie. Yep. Take a break from the longer videos as we just blood iceberg. So I figured a quick. Oh my god, he's on the iceberg meme. Holy shit, I definitely do not want to see those videos. Holy fuck no. Especially since he did two of them. Yeah. Ghoul Gene Moon DLC. Dear Predictions, god. memes. Yeah. So I figured a quick video, but something that's been on my mind was the way to go. I've been working on a ton of video ideas lately. I think I have like five or six scripts in progress right now. Comment if there's something you found interesting. Maybe we can have a look. I find it interesting that you got as many viewers as you did while this being as dog shit as it is. Holy shit. By this logic, all exposition is a lie. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. lying to you constantly by his insane logic. Because he's associated bias with lie. Like no, no, you fucking weirdo. A little civil discussion. If you have any other suggestions, leave a comment. I love researching Fallout stuff. I'm gonna push X to doubt on that because your research is really fucking bad. Yeah. Wait, oh, no, actually, you know what? Maybe he does enjoy it, but he's really terrible at it. Well, I think we're we're done with this video. Let's so find like out. And subscribe. Take care, folks. Sims is an idiot. He prides himself on his. In order as an idiot. There you go. Well, we're done. All right. Seems like an odd clip to end your video on. It's like it's not a special line or anything. It's just a random line of dialogue from a character. Yeah, and again, it's not. It's him. Yeah, he has a bias towards Sims being an idiot because. He's patrolling some backwater shit heap of a town and pretending to be the sheriff. Okay. Which is that's, that's not a lie. True. Yeah. It's not a lie in any way. Yeah. <sighs> oh, 
alternate history has a fantastic video of what if Woodrow Wilson never won and how much better the world would be. It's like, yeah, it would be would have been fucking amazing. All right, shall we get to the Starfield video? Sure. I still haven't seen the Bethesda fucking conference yet, so uh, this is going to be my first viewing of Starfield content. Oh, boy. Prepare yourself. Dude, if they, if they ever mention attention to detail, remember, I put that picture in there for a reason. If they if he ever mentions Bethesda has a great attention to detail. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> 1,000 times the planets. Mm. Uh. Yeah. Alright. Uh, do you have the link or should I grab it? I don't have the link to the video. Sorry, I have the link to the picture. I'm saving the picture. <laughs> Alright. Um, I'm grabbing... I got it. Oh, you got it? Okay. Let's hope we can get through this quickly. These new game show no. cases really got that hype train rolling on these new upcoming titles. The plane train is coming! The plane train is coming! is looking pretty good though. But I'm seeing a lot of I'm seeing a lot of mixed mm, Not at all. No, not even remotely. Uh, honestly, the bet the the weirdest thing, the phenomenon I saw, because of how many Bethesda bots there are out there. Um, how negative the reception has been to Starfield. Yeah. I have been genuinely like, wow, are you guys waking up? Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. It's actually surprising how much negativity there was around this. Um, I was glad to, or I am glad to see people waking up to this, but. Yeah, I, same. I, mean, I, I agree. I am enough. happy people are like being more critical about this because it's like, oh my God, like. I thought y'all were, like, had drank the Kool-Aid or some shit. I'm really happy. Um, the laser isn't even coming out of the gun. Wait, wait, did it, did it seriously do that? Hold on. I gotta, I gotta go back now. These new game showcases really got that hype train rolling on these new upcoming top. No, that looks like it's coming out of the, out of the weapon. Yeah. God, you made me go back to save, but yeah, I can well, hear the song is hype train. Titles. That Starfield hype train is looking pretty good, though. But I'm seeing a lot of mixed reviews. <laughs> Starfield will disappoint you. Uh, Synthetic Man is very much a cynic, like, on everything. Like, nothing is ever good enough for him. But, yeah, um, I am genuinely happy... Wait, no seamless landings. I fucking called it, Pagan, live and on air during the reveal. Oh my god, no, yeah. There will be no fucking seamless landings and takeoffs, so it's going to be randomly generated every time you fucking land. I yep, know. yep, uh-huh. Oh my god. Yeah. I... Jesus Christ, it hurts being psychic. <sighs> yeah, that's, wow. Oh, <sighs> Ten, ten Polish Zloty, excuse me, from Super Jazzy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Battle Station with a dragon animation. <laughs> you wouldn't fucking surprise me. Fuck. All right, here we go. So where I look, most of the reasons people are given are these weird technical reasons. Weird technical reasons? Yeah, I didn't mean to stop it at that point, but yeah, weird technical reasons? It's like... Okay, Bethesda's so, been working on this game for how fucking long? So This is their big showcase to the world to get people excited. And we have this many bugs and problems and things that look dog shit. Not to mention yeah. Bethesda's track record. Um, yeah. When a game yeah. makes a shitty game, then they make another shitty game. Then they make another really shitty game. And then they make another really shitty game. Um, you come to expect that maybe the next game might not be so good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Also, so the people I have heard defending this are like, oh, but they don't understand. It's a work in progress. These bugs are going to be worked out and stuff. And I'm just like, it's coming out next year. So like, it, did you play Skyrim? Yeah, it's like, like Bethesda, they don't Bethesda really fix their bugs. They're... Yeah, Bethesda no. does not fix their bugs. Guys... The game is coming out in a year. You guys don't get it. Players love the bugs, don't you remember? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. But it's just insane to me that they're like, oh, yeah, it's, it's because it's a work in progress. And I'm like, no, most of these are probably going to be in the final version, in the released version of the game. They've only got a year. It's coming out soon. Somewhat and they, soon. And they talked about having thousands of planets. Okay, guys? Yeah, and that's thousands. that's what I always bring up. I'm like, okay, so here's what they've shown as like, this is what we have deemed good enough to show the public. And what did we get? A bunch of lifeless, uninteresting planets, most of which didn't even have foliage on them. Yeah. Then they announced thousands of planets and hundreds of solar systems. Okay, so they're going to have the same exact enemies and, and creatures and stuff on all of the same planets because it's going to be fucking procedurally generated. And they're all going to have the depth of fucking Preston Garvey Radiant Quests. Oh, and by the way, there's uh, 200,000 lines of uh, dialogue for Starfield. Now, that sounds like a lot at first, and it is a lot for uh, a video game. Um... If we were to divide those equally between all the planets, that's 200 lines per planet. And that's only if they have a thousand planets. Um, yeah. They say thousands are more than a thousand, so that's less than 200 per planet. So what we're likely going to get is a majority of the content will be centered around... What, what is it they have? Like four cities? And most of the planets are just... Like most of the planets are just going to be like... Um, wilderness or generated randomness yep because not all the dialogue is going to be uh split evenly among the planets of course so we're going to get planets with uh little to no dialogue at all yeah that's what i, I figured is going to happen but again like i was like okay you know i was like okay Cool. You realize you need to limit your scope. And you kept one solar system. Understandable. That's a good idea. And then immediately, there are hundreds of solar systems. God damn it. Yeah, that was honestly a great moment though for us because like we 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 had literally we were just talking about the fact that oh well one solar system means you could make a lot of tailor made content for just those planets. So this could actually be really good for them. And then immediately, as soon as we finished saying that. They jump right to, oh, and there's thousands of planets in hundreds of solar systems. And we were just immediately like, well, you fucked it. Yeah. Oh, dude. Um, Ten Polish Lodi from Super Jazzy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Opinion on Skyrim not using the hit chance system? Sky Wind. Sky, oh, oh, yeah, I see. He's trying to do Sky Wind. Yeah, my fault. Um... Bad That's move. Really bad move. Yeah. It's a choice I don't understand. I don't understand why. The people that want Morrowind like the Morrowind combat system. And the Morrowind combat system is really fucking good. It actually showcases your character getting better at the skills. It's, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand these people that want it to be Skyrim's combat. Skyrim's combat is terrible! Oh. No, he said, I said hundreds of solar systems. That's what he first starts with. This is the solar system. In our game, there'll be hundreds of solar systems. Thousands of planets. And it's like, oh no! At Kratosis, really there, bad. there won't be any bugs. The bugs will be minor. The bugs are temporary. The bugs are good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, the player base actually really likes the bugs. Yeah, us Bethesda fans really love the bugs. God, that was one of like the worst lines we've seen in a video. Yeah. 
Uh, $20 from Mechanical uh, Nubar Nubari... Mm, I'm gonna fuck up that name. I'm very sorry. Numbariaro. Um, thank you. Thank you. The no seamless landings was the best part about No Man's Sky. Even when the game was garbage, just being able to actually take off and go to another planet, you can actually see was one of my most amazing uh, moments I have seen. Yeah. It was, it was really, really fucking... It's really good to just get in your ship and fly it around the planet. But no, it looked like... And, I, and the reason I said that it looks like we're not going to have the ability to fly around the planet... Is because every time they've shown this, they're showing us the same exact animation on this, which is how they're doing their, their oh, this thing is is staying the same in its animation loop, and the background is dramatically changing. Look at all these different worlds. Like that, it doesn't give me hope. That actually makes me very fearful that it's a canned animation every single time you get in your ship and you're immediately out in space. Yeah. Yeah. Which, and then as you said before, you know they likely did that so. You can't actually explore the whole planet. It's literally just you lift off, go into a loading screen, and then if you want to explore another part of the planet, it has to procedurally generate that part. Yep. That's so, what I feel is going to happen. Yep. You're not going to have the actual planet all rented out. I, guarantee, I shouldn't say guarantee. I have a high suspicion that it's going to be procedurally generated content everywhere. It has to be. How, how else do you fill out thousands of planets? Yeah. Oh, dude, it's, Bethesda, it's gonna be a disaster. Bethesda can barely get a fucking working game map. Like, oh yeah, here's one region of this world. They can barely do that, let alone thousands of full planets. Yep. Yeah, that's the other thing. I also... As uh, Double Dropped here says, I also love the useless night and day cycle on the UI. Like, why? I know, if you can't tell it's night or day, what the fucking point? It's like, oh my god, there's no sun in the sky. It must be nighttime. Let me check my UI. Oh yeah, my UI says it's nighttime. Wow, there's really bright light everywhere. It must be daytime. Let me check my UI. Oh, it is daytime. How? How? What? What purpose does that serve? Oh, too bad stealth archery doesn't write your story for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! All right, all right. Anyways, back to the video. They just um. It feels like they don't understand what's being shown right now. Is just a. Uh. I did not mean to pause that. Fuck. I knew exactly what he was going to say, and I accidentally paused it right ahead of time because I knew exactly where he was going with it. Fuck! Yeah, you need to be more careful with your pauses. I do. Here we go. Reasons They just seem kind of dumb. It feels like they don't understand what's being shown right now is just a work in progress. Yep, there it so is. I, there work it is. In progress. What so, one year from release, guys. This has been worked on for how many years now? This is the big showcase to show everything. Less than a year, by the way. Like, it, it yeah. does release next year, but it's less than a calendar. Like, less than 365 days away when they showed yep. this. Um, of course, we don't expect the final version to be shown right now at their expo thing. But we expect what we see to be a bit fucking better than what we got. Because this is yeah. close to the final product. And yep. when you're taking something to show off like this is multi-million dollar project that you you want to sell millions upon millions of copies to you put your best foot forward you put you show off the best you have and um this, yeah yeah this right here is your release candidate these are these aren't your work in progresses anymore this is your shit needs to get done these are release candidates this is the thing that is being sent off to get gold master certification so that the disc can be printed for it. That's a big fucking problem. Like, holy shit, man. So the game now is about as far away from release as Obsidian had to entirely make New Vegas. Um, close to that, yeah. Yeah, something like that. 
All right, all right. Here we go. I see these guys all buggy sprites or NPCs with their heads on backwards or something. I just think to myself, you're paying attention to the wrong stuff. You no, they aren't. No, this they're not. This is a release candidate, my dude. You are completely sugarcoating over major fucking issues in a game that is not far from releasing. And the stuff that we were shown that wasn't an issue was boring. There was not much here that actually interested people. And then you had all this shit mixed in with it. Yeah, no, that's a big fucking deal. Those are the things you should really be focusing on. Yeah, this is Because it your, says everything about what the game's going to be like. This is your hyper-curated trailer. This wasn't you just showing us, and now we're going to jump into Starfield and play it for you live. No, this was a curated trailer with particular edits and jump cuts and everything in it. And this is what you showcase? Uh-oh. Yeah, the, the synthetic, like, like Pano, uh, Zhao Zhao says, this was the best they had. That should terrify everybody. Yeah. Like, even when they showcased Fallout 76, there's a lot of issues with what we saw there, uh, from what I remember. And the final product was a lot worse than what they showed off. Like, that's the thing. When they put their best foot forward, um, a lot of times the games that come out fall short of what they show. Um, what game, wasn't it, uh, Watch Dogs where they showed, like, a really detailed world and they had to cut yeah. a lot of that back because consoles couldn't, uh, handle them? Yeah, Kroby Cat has a fantastic video on just how downgraded Watch Dogs was from what they showcased. Yeah. Now, that's not... And even showcasing in, in the notes itself, like, these are PC features, so who fucking cares, lol, and, like, coder notes and everything? Like, no. oh, yeah, that does not look... Now, obviously, not every single game that's shown off is going to be worse than what they show off. But um, Bethesda isn't the kind of company you put that... Uh, uh, what's the word? That faith in. You don't put that kind of faith in Bethesda. Especially not after their... Uh, not for their direct release after 76. Yeah. Yeah, not after 76. Holy shit. Yeah, you should be more critical of Bethesda and more on guard for them pulling off bullshit like this. Yeah. All right. You have to create the propaganda from the information that actually matters here. It's something you could never do, Bobby, with all your dumb emotions. <laughs> These game showcases are what? not like movie previews. Um... What? Okay, so this... you got to separate the propaganda from what you're actually being shown. My dude, what these are being... highly structured trailers. They have editing teams on this shit, and what they showed us looks really fucking bad. That's a problem. Oh, um, Kratosis, I'd really vote you do a video or a stag picking apart their Oblivion E3 demo and just how much they lied there. Um... Not all of it is a matter of lies. A lot of it is stuff they cut back and cut out. Um, but yeah, what they showcased for Oblivion uh, was very different from what we actually got. And a lot of it felt like downgrades. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we've talked about this before on stream, too. I know he's going to make it. They're not like movies. Like Actually, it's even worse because... Yeah. They're they're trying to present you things that may not even be representative of what's in the game itself. Whereas the movie, that scene actually at least has to be in the movie. For the most part, some movies will do, especially Marvel. They'll have uh, scenes in their trailers that don't end up in the final movie. But that's like because uh, the audience has certain expectations. And it's like okay, well, uh, we're going to hide these things, like. Um, the, the Spider-Man trailers, they hid some of um, some of the villains that were going to be in it, you know? Yeah. All right, here we go. A movie preview comes from the finished movie. These clips of... <laughs> I was way dumber than I thought. Holy shit. Okay. A movie preview comes from the finished movie. 
We might have um, to pause a bunch depending how much footage he shows. Yeah. The, my dude, I'm going to tell you right now, this is supposed to be a release candidate for the final product of Starfield. This honestly only helps our point, not his. Yeah, he, this he, actually really hurts your cause. He thinks this helps his point because, oh, the game will be better upon release. Um, but we there's an established history of that being actually opposite of the case. Yeah. Uh, Patricia TV did a stream watching the Oblivion E3 showcase. I don't remember what he had to say about it while watching it, but I know he holds it in higher regards compared to the Skyrim one. Ooh. Yeah, the Skyrim one was really, really bad. I'm not sure I even saw that. Um, five kangaroos from DailyCon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gotta be nightmare fuel if someone replaces one of the ships in Starfield into Baby Sean or the playable character into a very... Stretch out, baby Sean. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, $5 from Dry Complimentary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Stag, sorry for spoiling JoJo. That was uh, that was scummy of me, but have a nice night and tear this guy a new one. Have a good one, man. Thank you. Yeah. Did my super G-bag. chat go through? Sorry, I'm just reading uh, Pendicarmando here. Did my super chat go through? I sent it, but I can't see it in chat. How long ago did you uh, send it? Yeah, because I don't, I didn't see one from you. Yeah, the last I, I just scrolled up um, above uh, the Dailyocon one. The previous one I saw was one from Mechanical Numbere name that I have trouble pronouncing. Um, Super Jazzyu opinion on Skywind. Um, yeah. Super Jazzyu again Bell Station with a drag. Yeah, so. Um, I didn't see that come in. I could check my super chat to see if it's over there. Um, quickly. Yeah, well, you do that. Uh, Gbag X, welcome to Owl. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, just refreshing the page here. Um, no, I'm not seeing it in there. Um, um, hopefully they didn't take your money, uh, Pendicar. Uh, it been Adam, about, sorry, it would have been, uh, about five to seven minutes ago. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Um. Yeah, it's not, it's not there. Yeah, so... Check to make sure you didn't get charged for that, and I guess send whatever message you had in uh, normal chat. Um, Adam Bartolome uh, says, There are tons of trailers these days with footage for what will be deleted scenes in them. Yeah. Fair, but there's a reason Bullshot became such a thing in gaming, because it's literally like doctored screenshots and footage that does not represent the game at all. Yeah. And it's in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, Gbag X in chat. Thank you. Uh, well, it's not a super chat, but I usually catch every stream late. It's nice to be here alive for once. Been watching since the first stag. Keep up the good, uh, good work, guys. Oh, well, thank you. Glad you've been, uh, enjoying the show. Anyways, let's, uh, continue on with this video for now. They don't come from the finished game. They come from a mostly broken. Whoa, 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 whoa. yeah. Hang on, uh, we need to do that because it skipped a bit. But he, the thing he said there was also stupid. But it skipped for me. I need to make sure I hear that exactly how he said it. They don't come from the finished game. They come from a mostly broken, likely in alpha or beta phase game that is pieced together just enough to show you what it's capable of. Are you evidence fucking real right now. Evidence that this is what happened with this game. Okay, so if you're showing alpha footage in your E3 fucking presentation less than a year before release, you've got a fucking problem. Yeah. So because... for people who don't know the like game development process, alpha is the stage where you add in uh, most of your big features. Beta is where you um, bug fix everything. Yeah. 
Alpha is essentially major systems have not even been implemented or coded yet. Or they, they're in the process of being implemented. Yes. And then beta is when you have all of your major features and systems in, but you need bug fixing and mechanical tweaks and issues. Yeah. Like, this is also where you can start adding in art assets. Like, if you had placeholder stuff, this is when you start removing the placeholders in beta testing. Beta beta aspects of, of the game. Um, actually, that's not a lie. Most Bethesda games are barely functional and unfinished games. <laughs> Well, okay, um, it's, it's not a lie. The lie that he is saying that this is their alpha or beta well, footage of he, their game, it's like, no, it's not. He, he he was making a joke. No, I know, I know, but I do agree with him that it's not technically a lie because Bethesda's games are broken and shitty, but the lie in this is that it's an alpha or beta film. Yeah. Um, and Pentacar Mando in chat said, uh, damn it, I just checked and I was charged. Um... Oh, I've fuck. never I've never seen Whoa. this before. That's fucked that you got charged for a super chat you didn't send. Um, yeah, Pentacar, um, copy the message if you can, and just post it here, and we'll we'll answer to it. Yeah, we'll read it out, and uh, I guess answer any question you have or talk about it if we can. Yeah. yeah. Sorry that happened, man. It's a bit fucked that uh, YouTube system just ate it like that. My favorite part is that he just said that this is them cobbling together to show you the best of what this game could do. It's like, and it looks terrible. So if this is yeah. the best, what's the rest like? Well, no, didn't he just say that this is based off of like an earlier broken version? But again, charging battery. And, and, charging battery. And he just said, and he just said, cobble together to show you the best of what it could do. So. If it's cobbled together and if it's broken and unfinished, how is that the best of what it can do? Yeah, this is really fucked. Hmm. The stuff being Todd Howard and others on stage. Look at him. Seriously, his head looks like it shrunk. It I can't does. get over that. Yeah, it, it just look. It, it looks like somebody just took it, cut it out in Photoshop, and just shrank it by 2%. It is really fucking weird. Yeah, uh, that head looks too small for that body. Yeah, it is. Um, if his head was any smaller, his neck would... Er, his neck. His <laughs> neck. His <laughs> neck would be, like, wider than his head. Yeah. Wait, what, yeah. The, what the hell happened to Todd? Well, you see, the bargain he made, it was finally time for him to pay his due. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the devil yeah. finally took what was owed. Yep. Yeah, his, it's it's just so weird. It, Todd just looks like somebody shrank him. It, it just shrank his head just slightly. It's weird. His head is slowly imploding under the stupidity of ML. Maybe, like, ML Pagliarillo is just a demon that sucks the life force out of people. He's been around it, at Bethesda long enough to make, like, start aging Todd super fast. Yeah. Yeah. And this the, this footage quality that he's using is not very good. But in in the actual E three one, like where the official thing, it was like really high definition. You could see everything on him, and yeah. man, he was wrinkly. Like he looked like he yeah. aged like forty or fifty years. Yeah, it was it was pretty rough. It, it looks like he had a tough one. Um, uh, so here we go, Pentacar Mando. Thanks, guys. And uh, basically, I asked. How do you write an intimidating female villain in a royalty position? For context, uh, the setting is sci-fi. So, for um, a, a royalty villain, is someone who's going to be like very well, not necessarily. It depends on the kind of character you're trying to write, but they're probably going to be very confident in themselves. Um. um what I would do to give like an example of say that there is a court, the, the court is meeting now. Um, and I mean the Royal court, not like a, like a you trial know, civil court or anything like that. Nothing yeah. Like that yeah. So the court is meeting, you know, all the nobles are milling around everything like that. And your character has just found out that his, his family or someone that he cares about has been kidnapped, has been taken. 
and he's looking around like desperately, like it's clearly he's in distress. And there's some other nobles that are like coming to him and like, hey, you know, what the hell's going on? And the character just happens to look up towards the thrones and seated on the thrones, he sees her staring back at him, blank faced at first, then a smile slowly comes across her face and she just crosses her legs and kind of tilts her head to the side. You know, just give you that setting of, like, she's the one that fucking did it. You you now, without saying any words to it, the main character knows that someone he loved has been taken. And now, without saying words, it is revealed to the audience that it is very much likely her that did it. Yeah. A lot of that kind of thing is um, through body language and action and uh, the way they speak, the way they act. Um yeah yeah and then maybe like even have her like note that she was upright and formal at first but then as she smiles and her head kind of lowers as if she's looking through the top of her eyes at him she slowly leans back in the chair to get more comfortable like as if to throw down the gauntlet so to speak yeah man i've been rereading berserk and it i <laughs> I'm just thinking of that scene where, uh, which it's funny because it, he's not a female, obviously, but Griffith is so fucking feminine. It's hard not to think of him as one. Yeah. But uh, just that that scene of him con- semi confronting. Um, oh, I forget his name. He's the uh, he's one of the nobles uh, for um, the Midland. Uh, kingdom the, the the short guy and uh he was one of the ones who schemed with uh the king's uh i think it was like his cousin or something or nephew uh to have griffith killed and that ended up not working and he kind of you know uh what is it exactly he like walks up to him outside in this area and he starts asking him questions and stuff and like like oh yeah that was crazy wasn't it and it's like oh man yeah but you should be careful and stuff like that and he's like and then he's you know he walks away and he's like okay i don't think he suspects me and he turns around and he's just like standing in the darkness like giving him this glare just like staring at him like death eyes and shit <laughs> and like there's no word spoken about that afterwards like they don't confront each other after that or anything. He just like stares at him like he knows and he knows he knows at that point. And he's like, oh, fuck. It's oh, it's so good the way it's done. It's just excellent. And then, of course, you know, there's the whole kidnapping his daughter thing at uh, later to get him out of the building. It's very well done. Good, good, good manga. Everyone should read it. Aren't they also reprinting it? now as well so uh i don't know if they're reprinting it but they are continuing it uh yeah yeah they uh his uh the author's uh like best friend who apparently knows a lot about how the story is supposed to go is now helping them write it and stuff so uh they were going to cancel it but now they're going to continue it to the end so yes hopefully they don't fuck it up yeah yeah that's that's always the big worry but yeah. the hope is the fact that they were friends and he confided in him and everything like that. That Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Sign. Yeah, hopefully it'll still be good. Uh, but yeah, it's great. It's easily one of my favorite pieces of media. It's like up there. I'd probably say I like it more than Cowboy Bebop, and I love Cowboy Bebop. Nice. All right. ...to you by Todd Howard and others on stage is very exaggerated to give the most hype possible. Never trust what they say on stage. Yeah, we so, don't. That's why people are critical of the Starfield reveal. Yeah. What what makes you think that like it, the the thing you should be going after is the people that are like like you. Starfield will be a masterpiece. It's like you're the people that are literally buying into the hype, but you're trying to couch it as if you're not. Yeah, and so, it's only the people that are being critical, like, man, this looks terrible, that that are buying into the hype? Like, how? How are they buying into the hype? This is why I have problems with these kinds of videos on both sides. It's like, 
Starfield will be a masterpiece. Starfield will be a, a disaster. Well, we we have signs we can judge from that. Oh, this might be good or this might be bad, but we don't know. Um, yeah, until it's finally released and we play it. But what if Starfield releases and it's utter trash? This video is going to age like goddamn milk. Yeah. Yeah, again, like the video, if you want to be perfectly honest, I am worried about Starfield, should be what the video is. And you explain your worries and fears. Say, hey, if they pull it off, good on them. But here are the obstacles they're going for, and here's what we've been shown, and this is supposed to be their best foot forward, and it looks terrible. Yeah. They're up there. You have to equate all of it to an advertisement in your head. Like slamming can salmon, you kooky broad! And if you want to make a prediction on how good a game's gonna be, you have to look at the facts they aren't showing you. What? What? The facts they aren't showing you? Uh, excuse me, sir, how the fuck are they facts? So this is already you... one of the dumbest things I've ever fucking heard. You have to look at the facts they're not showing you? Um... How? How? What? Can you see why I recommended this one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is fucking garbage. Holy, Holy shit. shit. How in the fuck do you... oh, Alright, would you like to would you like to enlighten us on these facts that they aren't showing us? The most important thing I never hear people talk about is the chemistry of the development team. <laughs> are you for fucking real right now the most important oh. fact that they are showing you is the chemistry of the development team oh Sorry. just you wait just you fucking wait dude this video goes off the rails with it oh it's about to get weird oh my god man the chemistry of the development teams you know what? okay i'm gonna i'm gonna break something down here for you sometimes and actually, I'd say a lot of times, great media is produced when teams are at, at odds with each other. They're trying to have that one-upmanship on each other. They're trying really hard because they're competing against each other. And that competition, like, oh, no, man, he thinks that's stupid. Well, you know, let's change this, this, and that. That'll tighten that up, and then it'll show him. Like, again, great chemistry doesn't mean anything. When you have a bunch of yes-men around you, you get the fucking Star Wars prequels. Like, come on, dude. I don't know if that's where he's going with this, but that's what it feels like by bringing up the great chemistry they have. It's like, oh, no. Oh, it's worse than that. It's way worse than that. Oh, no. All right. All right, let's rip this Band-Aid off. Going back two seconds. Here we go. The chemistry of the development teams and how they've solved problems in projects before. There's a few little documentaries you can watch and stuff, but they only show you so much. But they do give you a good insight on how long each developer has been there, and what projects they've worked on in the past, and you get to hear from the other ones that have worked on the same projects, and how they talk about the other teams, and you get quite a bit of information that way. And so, people in documentaries are often going to softball criticism towards other teams just because they don't want to embarrass the other teams they don't want to you know put it they don't want to burn a bridge with someone else that works there so a lot of this stuff in documentaries is fluff where you start getting more honest opinions is when a team splits and you get to hear suddenly all the dirty laundry gets thrown out into the sunlight for, uh, for everyone to see all the things like when id software broke apart and you had looking glass shoot off and you had a uh, um, romero's team shoot off which i can't remember was romero's team looking glass i can't remember exactly but when you had all these teams shoot off from each other that's when all of the truth came out where people were like oh no uh, Romero was a fucking, like, playboy, wannabe rock star, and he was very egotistical, and he didn't really do much on the projects, but he played Deathmatch all day. 
You know, that, that's when you start getting that. And sure, some of that is, is probably hyperbolic, but it gets you closer towards how these people felt about each other, the truth behind the matter, how they actually worked together and how they clashed. Oh, Romero's team was Ion Storm. Thank you. Yeah. I knew Looking Glass shot off, and then I couldn't remember another one, and I was worried that uh, Romero was Looking Glass. But no, there you go. So you have Looking Glass shoots off, you have Ion Storm shoots off, and you have Id Software continues onwards. Holy shit. Holy shit. 50 fucking dollars from Vinyl Twin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Stag. Here's towards more suffer. I mean, more critiques and breakdowns. Oh. Yeah, that's totally what I meant. Also, Bug Fezda will be Bug Fezda. Yeah. Yep. I was actually um, dozing off there, uh, leaning back in my chair. Yeah, same. When you guys were talking about um, A Song of Ice and Fire, I actually did fall asleep for a little bit. Wow, nice. how dare. When we're talking about <laughs> something good. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, something I have no information on and can't get involved with at all. It's like, wow, a shocker that I would become tired and fall asleep during that. Yeah. I recommend the audiobooks. <laughs> yeah, there's there's more so uncensory teas getting into my other point. Uh, uh, 10 Polish Lodi from Super Jazz U. Thank you. Thank you. Bathetic. Yeah. Bathetic. Yeah. Um, yeah, unsaved uncensory T, also an employee being there for longer doesn't mean they'll be doing the job better. Seniority does not equal quality. Exactly. There are just some people that will will just meander through the job and sure, they do just good enough to stay employed, but then you get the rock stars that'll come in that are, are really fucking good at their job and will revolutionize things. Seniority does not automatically mean quality. Yeah. Sure, you have more of a chance because you can look through their history and their pedigree, but you can have some fresh new talent on the team that's really fired up and ready to go and has a brilliant new way of doing things. Like John fucking Carmack, the dude who literally revolutionizes the industry every time he puts his mind to something. Yeah, Romero is still cool. In fact, Romero didn't like that advertisement that put in. Uh, but the but the, the team at Ion Storm was like, no, dude, Romero, we got to do it. People are going to love it. You're so good at trash talking and deathmatch. It'll be perfect. So then Romero's like, I don't know. It seems a bit aggressive uh, for an advertisement to be shown to the public. No, 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 it'll be great. So then they ran the ad. John Romero's about to make you his bitch as an advertisement for Daikatana. Hmm. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Wait, is that real? There aren't going to be mod tools in Starfield? Oh, ho, ho, ho. that Bethes was... Oh, fun. boy. That is actually the worst decision Bethesda could ever make. Um, yeah. Let's hope that's not the case. Yeah, because if they make it shit, it's like, wow... You're gonna have, you're gonna have to live with those consequences then, because modders can't fucking fix it for you this time. They'll, people will actually see that it's shit. Yeah. And what I found out kind of, and it gave me a lot of faith in Starfield. Every single. Okay, so here's the thing: I'm gonna take you all of this stuff that you're talking about for Starfield. That was do the same exact thing for Fallout 76. I can immediately destroy your delusion bubble right here. This, These are the same people that did Fallout 76. Bam, congratulations. The game sucks, but you can't mod it. Wow. Hmm. Although for all we know, he, probably, he might think Fallout 76 is fucking the best game ever made. I mean, that's true. He could he could think Fallout 76 is a masterpiece. That's that's fair. Oh, God. Project lead I find at Bethesda that is working on the Starfield project has been there for more than 10 years. Goddamn. Which doesn't mean so anything. all of the main leadership in the audio departments, in the dungeon design departments... And even the art and production departments all have people that have been there for more than 10 years working on Starfield. 
That doesn't mean it. Uh, Pete, you do not want Pete Hines. So Pete is also on the Starfield staff. That's very bad. No, this Pete game Hines, is doomed. Yeah, Pete Hines is considered one of the biggest cancers at Bethesda. He is one of the people that needs to be fired. He needs to be removed from Bethesda. Same with Emil. Emil needs to go. Hey, Setch, how many games has uh, Bethesda released in the past decade? Three, technically, because if we go decade, then it would be Skyrim, Blades, nope, 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 nope. and 76. When I say decade, I mean the past ten years. Okay. Yeah, I guess the decade, we're already past that, so it wouldn't even be Skyrim. So it'd be two games, Blades and 76. And Fallout 4. Oh, yeah, Fallout 4 is in there. Jesus Christ, I keep trying to forget Fallout 4. What a good fucking track record. Yeah, it's a really, really exceptional track record. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, it can't even... It can't, you can't even say Skyrim, because Skyrim was 11 years ago, so it's not even a decade. So... I mean, if we count the re 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 release, but why would you? Yeah, I'm talking brand new release. Yeah, so Blades, 76, and Fallout 4. What an amazing track record. So Fallout 4 was shit. Um, 76 was absolute abysmal trash. And uh, Blades was microtransaction infested fucking garbage. Where you Answer. have to wait absurd amounts of time to open a fucking chest. Or you could pay ten zillion dollar reduce to open it up. And get, yeah. like, crap gear. Because it's not a higher tier chest. Yeah. Oh, and apparently Diablo Immortal has been banned now from something? I don't know uh, what. China. Though. Oh, fantastic. Have so, fun, shitheads. So, so there goes, like, your biggest microtransaction market, by the way. Yeah, and they just revealed that there's a new whale tier that's five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, tell me again that that Blizzard are really like good and honest developers. Tell me again. <sighs> exactly. Fuck Blizzard. Remember when they used to make good games? Remember Warcraft two, Warcraft yeah. three. The Frozen early, Throne. The early days of World of Warcraft before it turned into complete shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing you shared in the fucking... T in the you only oh, yeah, just that. noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> I noticed it earlier, but I didn't know why you posted it. it <laughs> yeah, someone, well, I was like, what the... Fuck? Someone posted that in the... Uh, in the shit posting channel, I'm like, yeah, I gotta share that. <laughs> That's a fairly old thing now, but yeah, it's still really funny to me. I just yeah. find it hilarious how like he tw twists his neck around twice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, five dollars from Zykos. Thank you very much. Thank you. What about Fall of Shelter? I don't we all talk about Fall of Shelter. I don't know when that was actually released, and I don't know if Bethesda were the ones that actually made it. So that was around the time of Fallout 4, because I know they were announced at the same time. In fact, yeah. I think Fallout Shelter came out a few months before Fallout 4, because I think they announced it at E3 and released it that night, or the following day. Or something like that. Let's see if we get to see if we get the developers who who did it. Who did it. And, and well, it's not that important. I don't really care. Uh, point is, it's yeah, more I... microtransaction mobile garbage. Yep, and it truly, truly is. I went, I went through the, the most autistic challenge I possibly could, which was playing Fallout Shelter without spending a single dime, and it is an insufferable experience. Holy shit! It is, it is truly insufferable. Yeah, I played it for a bit too, and I was like, "Fuck this shit." All right. Been there since before Morrowind, which is 20 years plus. 
Oh my god. I looked up as much of the development leadership as I could find, and here's some of them. Ashley Chang has been with Bethesda since Morrowind, which is... Okay, so, so, Ashley Chang, what, what happened? Why are your games getting worse? So here's the thing. Um, you want to know who else was there since Morrowind? Fucking ML. Uh, yep. He wrote Blood Moon. Which, by the way, the writing for Blood Moon isn't that bad. It's actually my favorite of the two expansions of Morrowind. Um, maybe until I do a bit of a deep dive on Morrowind, uh, that might change. But, um, someone being there for a long time doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be quality. Yeah. Like, this is just a terrible argument. This is an appeal to, like, I don't know, experience? Like, yeah, there's obviously going to be people who are experienced who, you know, you're going to hire them based off of, off of that experience. Or, or you're going to trust them based on that experience. But that's has done nothing to earn that goodwill. In fact, they've done everything to um, lose the goodwill. It's like, these people have been here for a decade. They've been here since Morrowind. Okay, so you're responsible for um, parts of Oblivion, which Oblivion was an alright game. But then you're responsible for Fallout 3 and Skyrim and Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. Doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Yep. This just feels like cope at this point. It really does. Like, I'd be curious to talk talk more about the things that they actually showed us, please. Well, no, you don't understand. We Starfield is going to be great because of all the things they didn't tell us. Like, how they've had these people who have worked on all their games, including the last four or five shitty fucking games they did. And that's why Starfield is going to be great. Oh my god, I just realized. I don't want to be cruel, but I just looked at this dude's face and I realized his jowls are out really far. Yeah, I was going to say, that, um... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's because of the his right one. Not not our right, but his right is what made me notice it. And then, I, then my mind immediately snapped to the other one. I'm like, oh no. I feel, I feel, I feel like a terrible person now. I'm sorry, Ashley Chang. I do genuinely want to know why your games are getting shittier, but fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel bad. So, I'm going to take it a step further. It looks like a cube, and the chin is like a smaller block that was extruded outwards. And, um... <laughs> it, I don't know. I don't know how. how it, it looks like one of those... You know, random all faces you do in the fucking Soulsborne games. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Dude selected randomized at birth. Yes. I'm so <laughs> fucking sorry. Holy shit. Yes, I'm an <laughs> asshole. I knew it. I'm sorry, uh, Ashley Chang. I'm sure you're a good yes. person. I hope you're a good person. I really do, but I, I I just question the quality of your products. I'm questioning the decoration of his office. He has, okay, he has a colored map he of Morrowind. He has Morrow Warden at least. Yeah. Well, here's what I'm going to point out. He has a colored map of Morrowind in the expansion areas above his, like, monitor. So, like, that's cool. But then yeah. he has a black and white, looks like, print off of the Morrowind map to the sidewall. And then another yep. one of Mornhold, in, also in black and white. It's like... Do, uh, I'm a fan of Morrowind. I love the fuck out of Morrowind. It's my all-time favorite game. Um, I actually want to get a blown-up yeah. poster of that I'm... map that's really big, but three of them? Really? I want to point out that this looks like it was taken from back in the early days, because that computer monitor looks really old, yeah. and I see Red Guard in the background behind his head. I see the Red Guard banner. Okay, yeah. So I'm thinking this is way earlier Bethesda days. Like, maybe this is them working on Oblivion sort of deal. Okay, yeah. So that, that's that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking here. Yeah, that could be. I still don't know why he has extra copies of the Morrowind maps when he already has one up on the wall, though. Yeah. He's a veteran. 
I think he's at 22 years now, and he's the studio director and part of the star. Oh, look, he looks way better there. Hold on a second. He got his jowl surgery. <laughs> has been with Bethesda since Morrowind, which is a 20 year plus veteran. I think he's at 22 years now. See, look. It looks a bit better, yeah. Yeah, it looks, it looks way more natural. Like I said, so yeah, that was definitely early days uh, for him, and now now he, he looks he looks more complete. <laughs> we don't, guys, we don't understand. He was the alpha and beta version, the buggy mess that was all jumbled together. Now we're seeing the release candidate version. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Looks like they fixed his character model after a decade. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no, now he's hanging up Fallout 4 stuff. No! Bring back yeah. the Morrowind maps. Yeah. Um, 30 Morrowind maps are preferable to fo uh, Fallout 4 garbage. Yep. Now, and he's the studio and part of the Starfield staff overlooking the project. Next is Matt Carafino. He was the lead artist on Morrowind way back in the day. So there's another 20 plus year veteran. Man, he aged really well, honestly. In comparison to what he was, because he was still he was still trying to keep the hair at the top and everything. It's like, dude, just shave that down. He did. He, he's aged really well in comparison. You know I mean, he got himself a nice beard and mustache and everything. Looks mm -hmm. well kept. Like, yeah, he, he, he aged real fucking good. Yeah. I still stand by what I said, though. None of this proves that Starfield is going to be any good. Yeah, exactly. None of this proves your point, this this dude's point, at all. Now, we're, we're literally just, like, I, I don't even care how long they've been here at these projects. I don't care yeah, like, about here's, their experience. Yeah, like, here's the thing. We could get Tim Kane and Chris Avalon to work together on a game, and you can, uh, like, advertise on that fact. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a good game. It's just that two very yeah. talented people who are known for making good games are working on a project. You know? Yeah. It could, like, it, like, something like that the, could turn out to be complete garbage. We don't know we until a, we have it. We have a recent example of this. Outer Worlds. While I don't think it's a terrible game, it's not like a super great perfect masterpiece either. Yeah. I think oh, it's a good game. I think You and me... Are on a are on the same wavelength because I was gonna bring this up and then somehow you did. I was gonna say, yeah, like I I think it's a decent game. I think it's pretty good, but I think it was actually kind of a bad move to advertise it as like from yeah. the creators of Fallout New Vegas. I was like, ooh, maybe and don't the do original that. Fallout's. Yeah, and the original Fallout's. I was like, ooh, maybe don't do that. Yeah, I I know it was a good. It was it was a bold strategy and a good marketing strategy in a sense because Fallout 76 had just come out and flopped and failed and looked terrible so it was a good like gotcha shot across the bow sort of thing but the the teams the budgets were wildly different yeah I no I'd say I'd say Outer Worlds is good it's not great that's the that's the problem everyone was expecting great yeah this is Outer the Worlds. problem is there's a scale, and, um, <coughs> like, you know, there's, it's not just good and bad, or, uh, in between, middle of the road, 7 out of 10, middle of the road, um, <laughs> like, there's good, there's great, there's amazing, there's, uh, superb, fantastic, excellent, whatever, whatever order you put them in, so something being just good is fine, you know? I strongly disagree there. Outer Worlds is, is not badly written. I would I would strongly say no, Outer Worlds is very competently written. Wait, who said that? Uh Mirthful says the Outer Worlds is so badly written that it comes across as total farcical. Totally oh. farcical. It's like no, I strongly disagree with that. Hmm. I'd say one of its big issues is that you don't get the you get the subtle hints, way too many subtle hints about what the what the overarching actual problem is. They should have made it more clear and more obvious what the problem was. Um, 
I'm trying to keep it vague so because I don't want to say for anyone that does actually care about spoilers because we're getting Outer Worlds too. We we know that's confirmed now. So yeah, but um, there was good subtleties, and when you put all the subtlety pieces together and realized what it was, like oh, that's actually really fucking cool. It, it's not social justice warrior the game, and it's not Corpo's bad. Again, that's people that are, aren't paying attention to what's actually being said or what's actually written in the game. How are the corporations so powerful yet also totally incompetent? They're not totally incompetent. The problem is they're in a desperate situation when they don't know how to get out of it. And there is no authority besides them. That's what makes them powerful. It isn't that they are actually powerful, it's that there's nothing else to challenge them. They're, they're in a power vacuum. There's no one else. There is no... There's no authority that anyone can go to to rein them in. And they're currently in a desperate struggle because they realize they're all dying. So they're making they're making snap decisions, which is not really good. Not uh, yeah. I believe that uh, Outer Worlds issues is the scope. It feels like a small Fallout New Vegas. I can see that, but at least they made the planets make sense. Like, but I do think if they had actually narrowed it down to a single world, I think that could have been more interesting. Yeah. Uh, we good to continue? Yep. And he's the lead on field today. Angela Browder is a studio director for Starfield and worked her way up from QA on Oblivion. All that doesn't mean anything. So she stayed with the company. Come all on, can we get to, to her it? position now as studio? Can oh lordy, there. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's examples of people who've been at companies for years or even decades where it's like, yeah, and that person is bad that they're in that position they they should never have had that position emil um, emil pete hines like yeah even like a, a lot of companies suffer from um people being promoted beyond their capabilities because you know maybe they're a kiss ass or whatever or yeah. people just being there long enough that it's like oh yeah you've been here you know what you're doing so we can give you this uh leadership role and that leads to problems. Yeah. There are some people where it's just better to have them stay at the position they are if they're really good at that position. If you find a good niche that they're in, keep them there. Like, why she worked up from QA, she could be the QA lead then. That's fine. And she's really good at that position. Like, is she really good as a studio director? Well, the last four or five games Bethesda's made are not good, so there's problem here somewhere. Yeah. Quick, let's make the janitor lead writer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe the janitor could be a lead writer if he actually is good at writing, but uh, just take a random janitor and say, "Okay, you're 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 a lead writer." It's like what? Yeah. Excuse me. That's. It's fucking total insane. Yeah, I'm just... He just keeps going, too. Like, he just lists off a bunch of these people, and it's like, okay, cool. You just wasted our time, because none of this proves anything. Yep. She looks like a cat lady, lol. How much you want to bet that cat quest of Fallout 4 was her idea? Ah. Oh. Here's the thing, though. She looked familiar to me, and... I recognize why she looks familiar, and because is... she's the advertisement on the Atkins diet. <laughs> that that's horrible uh, in a funny way. She looks familiar for another reason. Can either of you place it? Looks right. Looks right. Looks right. What's a movie we watched recently? Oh, well, I've watched a lot of movies recently. The three of, the, of us. Showtime. I know. I'm trying to remember what the last movie we watched. Um. Oh. Um. 
She's it's, like it's starting to click, isn't it? She she she's like the female version of a giant of the the dude, the Bible salesman. The Bible, what? Yeah. Oh, you mean from think... Oh Brother Where Art Thou? Yes. No, Big I didn't. Day. I didn't. Wa- I didn't watch that with you. I'm talking about a movie the three of us watched together. I thought was... three, I thought three of us did watch that. Nope. Shit. No, and it was I haven't very, seen it yet. It was, it was a funny movie. It was a funny come on, movie. Okay, come on. I hear the wheels turning. I hear those gears grinding in there. What did we watch? Uh. <laughs> uh... When it clicks, you two are gonna lose your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I place anything? I what can't the place it. The only thing I can think of was funny was Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. That's what I watched um, with my computer not long ago. Okay, so it was like a couple months ago that we watched it. You're gonna have to give us a hint. You're gonna have to. I'm yeah. trying. I know, I I know these I'm, are all technically I'm, hints. But I'm so. trying to give you a hint that's not just gonna be the equivalent of outright saying it. Um. Fuck. Um, it's a movie that had a bunch of issues with its plot, but it was enjoyable and had um, a decent cast. Um, actually, a pretty good cast for the most part. And uh, um, the characters are on a mission to, to, to do a thing. And... And I, I I need to just say it, don't I? It's just it's it's just making me think of Boa Hotep, <sighs> which is what I watched with my community. Another fantastic B movie. Um, the thing is, we haven't really watched a lot of movies together, so I'm having that, trouble thinking. That, that's of what why it could... that's why I'm confused. It's taking so long because we've watched like two or three movies together. Yeah, but in that time span from us watching this movie, I would have watched at least. Eight other movies. Okay, like and I movie. just, and I just can't remember what movies we've watched. <laughs> wow, I thought I had. A shit I know, memory. I know we watched Dread. I know we watched Dread. Uh, yeah, I, I remember Dread. Okay, um, I'm having trouble remembering anything else. It's a movie um, with characters that aren't quite superheroes in it. Oh, oh, oh! I think I know who you're talking about now. <laughs> 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 uh no i'm still drawing a blank really yes <laughs> oh! okay now i have a little surprised <laughs> <laughs> that aren't quite superheroes and yeah you not... think of mystery men and it's just um, like, no that's not it they're on a mission to an island oh now yeah now i get it oh god damn it <laughs> Oh, I forgot we watched. I legitimately forgot we watched it together. But yeah, I did said, too. But you know who I'm referring can... to, right? I think so. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, Polka Dot Man sees everyone as. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah that's yeah, what she reminds me of. I yeah. see it. <laughs> yeah, I completely says, forgot we watched that movie. I, I, it completely blanked from my mind that we had even watched that together. Yeah, same. Wow, wow. And then, yeah. uh, then he turns to, after he reveals that he always sees everyone as his mother, and it turns to show the team, and they're like, their characterized versions of his mother is so fucking funny. Yeah, <laughs> the fact that you only see it for like two seconds before it cuts away. It's just that shock of being able to see it for that long, but not being able to process it before it cuts away. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a first, like, I was trying to place it at first, and then it clicked in my head. I'm like, oh my god, no, she looks like Polka Dot Man's mother. I'm I'm very sorry, Angela Browder. I, I... Yeah. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Well, I don't know if you have as much to say sorry about as I did for the Atkins diet. <laughs> well, both of them are um, pretty very, horrible. Yeah. Very, very unkind, uh, unkind things to say about a person. I'm sure she's very nice. Yep. Um. Okay. All right. Let's get back to the thing. Yeah. Director for Paglia Rulo has been. 
One of the worst <laughs> writer hacks of all fucking time. You're using this guy as evidence that the game is going to be good. Are you serious? Are you for fucking real? Yeah, yeah. this is not good. On uh, he, is, he is literally one of the reasons why it is going to be a disaster. He so, needs to be reined in or thrown off the project. Hold on, I, I just need to get this out of the way. Starfield is going to be good because it's got people who have been working at Bethesda for a long time. Like ML Pagliarillo. Here's his resume. Lead writer of Fallout 3. Lead writer of Skyrim. Lead writer of Fallout 4. Uh, I, I think lead writer of Fallout 76. It's like, um, my dude. My fucking dude. That track record is abysmal. Yes. Jesus absolutely. Christ. Especially for writing. Like, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with, like, the art direction, guys. It's like, yeah, whatever. The the, the environments and stuff, they look fine. They look good. Yep. Um, the P. Hines and Hines, Emil yeah. being your two that you're going on. They've been there for so long. It's like, yeah, and they're shit. They're, they are a literal cancer at Bethesda. They need to be removed. Yes. Yes, yeah. this is a mill. This is a mill now. Again, he got better. He lost a lot of weight, so he got healthier later in life, but his writing got way worse. So it's like the fatter he was, the better his writing was. <laughs> <laughs> when he lost the fat, he lost his writing talent. Yeah, fat it, it, is where the skill is stored. <laughs> it's, it's, like the, it's like the excess energy was getting to his brain, and he was able to actually think things through. Now he just does it. It's like he skill made us. A... <laughs> It's like he made a fucking bargain with the devil. It's like, you must give up one positive aspect about yourself to lose all this weight. Okay, I'm gonna give up my writing ability. <laughs> but, Skill is yeah. stored in the fat. But you're a lead writer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Bethesda's all about its work culture. <laughs> All right, let's let's see what he has to say about this fucking clown. Been around Oblivion days. He's the design director on Starfield, and Which was very a bad designer and design director on Oblivion as well. Mark oh. Clam. Oh, um, you're, you're like not going to mention all of the other dog shit he did. You're you're, you're going to leave out some of the uh, <laughs> some of his resume there. You're going to leave out a few key aspects of information there, huh? What? Yeah. Why aren't you talking about Fallout 3? Or uh, Skyrim? Or um, a little yeah, game Fallout called Fallout 4? 4. Hmm. Like, hmm. Hmm. Seems, man, oh man. seems a tad bit uh, fucking disingenuous to me, you know? Yeah. Emil and Pete Hines being on the project is why we're so worried. They're a large portion of it. I don't think getting rid of those two would solve the problem entirely, but it would no. it would definitely bring up the game to uh, a tolerable level. Yeah, absolutely. As long as they replace them with like other people that are decent. Yep. Audio director on Starfield and was the audio director all the way back on Oblivion as well. And the Again, last one I could find information matters. on was... Again, that doesn't... None of this matters! Dude, come on! This person is wasting a significant portion of his video talking about, yeah, these people have been here a long time, so that means the game yeah. is going to be good. Which is just some of the most retarded logic ever. Yep. Was Istvan Pelly. He was the lead dungeon design on Oblivion and oh. is now the lead artist on Starfield. Well, thank oh, God he's not he the lead dungeon to, to fucking yeah. design. God. He, so, he I'm sorry. He got downgraded. That's amazing. I see that as a fucking upgrade. Dungeon design in Oblivion was trash. No, no, no. I'm saying his career. His career. And so he was lead dungeon design. And he was talking about how that's such a good thing. And I thought he was going to say, and he's now lead dungeon design on Starfield. I thought that's what he's going to say. No, he's now lead artist. Oh, well, thank God he's not doing dungeons anymore. Because his dungeons were shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, Man, that is not, this is not the win you think it is, my dude. I see ML's problem. 
He relates his storytelling through Italian hand gestures, and no one else on the team is Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, gosh. shit! Fuck! <laughs> um, wait, the guy whose dungeon design was described as Mad Libs with uh, monkey typewriters? Oh. <laughs> if that's how the dungeon design was described, then yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this video is shit. I told you guys this is bad. I, I did. I like. I was like, it gets so much worse and and, and weird. It's about to get really strange. And, like, he just keeps going. <laughs> like, Wait. this doesn't help you at all. Wait, he's talking yeah. about more staff after this. I believe there's a few more left. Oh my God. Fuck? Okay, let's. We're just almost try halfway and get through. through this trash, and he's just wasting time on nothing. Yeah. This isn't even all the people on the teams. This is just the team leads that I could find evidence of. And when you've worked on teams that long, okay, with maybe the same that was people, it. People, you know each other's skill set so well. Why are you showing do basketball? You, do you really? Because again, there's a difference between a nine-man team on the court versus a hundred-man team. Do you really know every single member of that team's skills really well? Because if you what? did. Pete Hines and Emil would be fired. Let me give a quick example. A place I work at, um, there isn't a hundred people per shift. I don't know everyone's name on my shift, let alone what they fucking do. Yeah. This is genuine insanity logic. have basically playbooks for everything that could possibly go wrong and that's where no so why does everything keep going wrong at all fucking times in bethesda's games why they, they have a playbook for everything that could go wrong that's why fallout 76 went wrong in every way that's why fallout 4 went wrong in storytelling to a dire fucking degree what yeah this is this is good god I can't, I can't even fucking believe this, man. This is just, this is absolutely crazy. Yeah, it's like, if they have all these, why don't they ever reference them? Why do things constantly go wrong for Bethesda at all turns? <laughs> it must be a thicker book than the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> of another advantage that we have in the industry is that we have all these games and experiences and I call them playbooks like we have the Skyrim playbook how do we solve this problem in Skyrim how do we solve this problem in Fallout you're not doing... oh you got it from him dude you're yeah not... and he's the dude that I need to ask why do your games keep getting worse yeah I was about to say you're not doing your credibility any favors here my dude yeah um, your credibility is kind of as fucked as your chin was is not your chin but like your jowls your jowls were when you were younger yeah oh man we we need a we need a new game mechanic okay great we have 15 years worth pick one like which one do you want to try what? That's not a new game mechanic. You're saying we need to recycle the game mechanic. Well, we got 15 years worth. Just pick one. That's no. that's real bad. <laughs> help me, Cree. Help me. Help. I don't know if I can help. This is... What? Why? Why is this? I don't know. Like. Team's chemistry and experience can take them a long way, almost all the way, but it's not. Um, it can also lead sports. to a, it can also lead to a massive flame out and destruction. Ask Ion Storm how it fucking went with their team's chemistry and their history and how much veterancy they had. Ion Storm, hmm. which ones were they again? They're the ones that did Daikatana. Oh. They they basically they crashed. Like, yeah, they had some comeback, but they were no they were never to get back to the top ever again. Hmm. 
Like again, this this is such a well, it's a it's a one plus two plus three problem here, so it makes six. It's like, yeah, but that's not true at all. Like, if it was a one plus two plus three, sure. But it's more like an a times the square root of two hundred and fifty six divided by like it gets way more complicated than that and messy. And Bethesda's biggest problem is they have a bunch of stupid people at the top that fuck over everyone else and then too many members of a team that are working across purposes from each other. Again, Emil's speech about how he writes for the games is beautiful evidence of how fucked Bethesda is. Yeah. Oh, we don't really care about the quality because the players aren't going to care either. They're just going to fold it up and make paper airplanes. So the quality of the story didn't matter. And then we had this really awful system, which turned out to be a bad idea when we implemented it first, but we decided we had to stick with it. Where we needed four different dialogue options at all times. Telltale Games does a four-choice system, so why can't we? Yeah. Because you're a fucking RPG. You're supposed to be. Yep. Telltale Games are glorified choose-your-own-adventure books. You're an RPG. Get it through your head. Not it. It only takes a few bad decisions to ruin an entire game. Or- I love that he said that. With this or visual. it's not. Yes. Or it's not. Well, I didn't get to the or it's not. It's just... A few bad decisions is all all it to take. A few bad decisions is all it takes to ruin an entire game, and footage of Fallout Three comes up. Yes. Fucking chef's kiss. Yeah, and even even more amazing <laughs> is the fact that his "or it's not" statement completely invalidates the last three and a half minutes. You idiot. <laughs> or it just happened before you even start, just like Bethesda did when they created Fallout seventy six. Oh, and hmm, let's see. Who was all on the team there? Every single member that you just said? Oh, wow. It's going to be fun. Starfield's going to be great, though. What a fucking idiot. Bold of you to call the game's MO leads on RPGs. They're supposed to be RPGs. Yeah, they're supposed to be RPGs. To, to be entirely fair, they are supposed to be RPGs. They're just really bad at it. Even Fallout 3 can be argued to be an RPG. I I don't I have no problem calling Fallout 3 an RPG. It's just a really yeah. shitty one. Yeah. It's a very low quality effort. Cause as we found out, thank you, Emil's awful speech. Effort is a dirty word at Bethesda. We choose to just throw chaos at the wall and make Play is the true experience. We play everything, and that's what guides all decisions. We don't think things through. We don't have, like, design documents. That's effort. Oh, my God. That's I can't deep. believe they should have admitted yeah. that they don't keep, like, design blueprints docs. or doc. Yeah, design docs or anything. They just fucking chuck all that shit, and I'm like, no wonder your fucking games are shit, you retard. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost no like having a fucking incoherent mess. It's almost like having a design document kind of keeps you on focus and on task and keep things consistent, maybe. Yeah. Completely off the chain with this one. It's off the chain, baby! Developing an MMO... I'm sorry, these clips are fucking garbage. Yeah, can you stop doing that? I mean, he not in this, but can you stop doing that in the future videos you make? He could stop doing it in this, too. Well, yeah, but this, the, you know, the bread has already been buttered. No, I know, but. Down on the ground. I'm a solo dev and I keep a design doc. Yeah, most people do. Yeah. Um, it's not to say it's necessary in all cases. If you're really fucking good, if you've got a really fucking good team that can work together on it, you can do it without a doc. Um, Bethesda isn't. Yeah, and, and again, it's not just that the team is good. You need a producer or somebody there that is going to look at it and be like, oh, and what if we do this? And immediately crack the whip on that person and be like, no, bad. Yeah. Um, overblow the budget and everything. Stop thinking that way. We need to do the things we can actually get done. 
It's kind of like uh, improv, where it's like, people who are really fucking good at improv are really funny. Um, but you have to be really fucking good at it. If you're not, it's just like, cringe. And yes. not like the funny kind of cringe, it's like the actual cringe cringe, you know? Yeah, the stuff that just, you have that kind of like, hey, hey. Yeah. And you, you just have that, that feeling, that secondhand embarrassment that creeps in. Yeah. It's like, oh, God. Oh, it's a completely different beast than designing a single-player open-world game like Bethesda's. So It doesn't I, have to be. I wouldn't even consider Fallout 76 to be an MMO because it doesn't really act or play like one. It's, it's just a multiplayer game where you get dumped on a map with up to how many other people? Like 16? It's not, like that. It's, it's, not it's not really, really an MMO. Yeah. And again, it doesn't fucking have to be. Secret World is a great example of keeping storytelling at the fucking core of its experience. God, I wish more people could play the actual Secret World, not the bastardized version of it. Oh. This is just this is just fucking this is just excusing. Oh, because it was an MMO, they didn't want to they didn't want to put as much effort into writing or world consistency or making sure they didn't fuck up the lore every other step. Kretosis, it's twenty four people, and also you probably aren't gonna find most of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically to to sum it up is it's a single player experience where you randomly run into another dipshit. From time to time, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Original Secret World is so fucking good. Holy shit. And all three factions of them are really good. Well, except maybe the Templars. Dragons kind of... Dragons kind of prove themselves in Tokyo, but otherwise it's Illuminati for life. Holy shit. The Illuminati are amazing. Is known for. The <laughs> of the story of Bethesda and the creation of Fallout 76 would be the story of Michael Jordan leaving the NBA to play baseball. It's time for me to... What? No! You fucking idiot! So this clearly sounds like a person who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Dude, it's they aren't even remotely the same. Michael so... Jordan at least loved... Like, he put his heart and soul into it he just wasn't good at it it's also possible that if you are good at a second sport you could do that crossover like what yeah. if there's someone who's really good at american football who wants you know what i'm gonna go play hockey and they actually turn out to be really good at it it's like yeah you can do that it, it happens yeah um well it can happen this is it's different like like oh god um, Blizzard never made a fucking MMO before they made World of Warcraft, and yet they moved from RTS to MMO. Yeah. Again, this is like, this is such a shit example. There are so many companies that went from doing one thing into another and completely revolutionized everything. Yeah. I, I as much as I wish Blizzard didn't, because I prefer the old school MMOs where it was way more of a social experience and way more about actually paying attention to things. But you mean you don't enjoy logging onto War uh, World of Warcraft and playing alone for like 500 hours for an expansion? No, not even that. I mean, I'm even talking about original World of Warcraft. Too. Ah. I didn't enjoy it either. I I liked going to the tavern and having to type in words and stuff like that and randomly like, oh, you knew about that, huh? Well, here, I'll tell you this then. You know, yeah. it was much more of a mystery and a discovery thing. But, yeah. It's so fucking weird. Or... I forget which MMO it was, but have you heard of the story? I think it was in a uh, 4chan post where a guy role-played as a bartender for, like, years. And, um, one day, you know, all the heroes with their... Uh, best characters are in the bar celebrating a victory they had. And they all start, like, choking and dying because the bartender poisoned them all. 
and they reported it to the mods on the server. This is obviously a video game. And mm. um, the mods started investigating, like, okay, what did this guy actually break the rules, or is there a reason that he did this? And it turns out he kept years' worth of journals of how much he hates all these people and he wanted to kill them one day. So it was entirely justified that he did oh. finally kill them all and permanently got their characters killed. Nice. <laughs> that reminds me, of Ult- reminds me of Ultima Online, where you would actually... So... It was an RP was... server, right? Yes, it was. Here's the thing about Ultima Online, that people... And one of what I why I consider such a great experience for video gaming... So, you have your normal, you know, your normal tank, healer, DPS. Okay, well, let's all get together. We're all going to have a good time. We're going to go t- attack that dungeon. And then you ha- you bring the new guy along to show him the ropes about attacking a dungeon and everything like that. Having a good time. It's like, hey, this is the final boss. It's like, well, fantastic. We got all these potions and shit like that. We're just going to chug them down. And then immediately the veterans all turn and look at the new guy and they go, no. Save every single potion you fucking can. And the new guy's like, why? Because when we kill this boss... And we go to leave this dungeon. We have no idea how many people are waiting out there to ambush us, to kill us, and take all the loot that we worked for. And they're going to get it easy peasy. They just got to kill these beat up, banged up pieces of shit that walk out of that dungeon. (laughs) Prepare yourself. The real fight in the dungeon begins the moment we step outside. Wow. And it happened all the fucking time. It even got to the point where there were some guilds that would literally be like, hey, Pay us a hundred gold or pay us money and we will stand outside the dungeon as guards. <laughs> Holy there shit. Were, there were groups that turned into fucking mafia. Hey, it sure would be a shame if something were to happen with us. Why don't you give us some of your cash and we'll stand outside and make sure nothing bad happens. That is no, amazing. No, we're not going to pay you at all. Well, that's a shame. And the guys go off to the dungeon. Those same guys that uh, initially offer the protection racket go, hey, hey, boys, round up everybody. We're going to go fucking kick their ass and steal all their loot. <laughs> that is actually amazing. Holy shit. Yeah, Ultima Online was fucking fantastic. But um, it, it it has not aged well in the looks or anything department, that's for sure. But yeah, that's it fine. Was fucking great. That's fine. Talk uh, about a great experience, too. Joe M in chat. MMOs have become grind fests. With the word RPG slapped onto them. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, unfortunately. Holy shit, though. The Yeah, literal organized crime. Yes, actual literal organized crime. It was fucking incredible. God. Always pay the mafia. Yes, especially if it's an MMO mafia. <laughs> and you have and you have actual like full loot systems available, always pay them. Just do it. I don't remember the theater bombing in Ultima Online. I do not. <laughs> my big kick my big kick was I then went to EverQuest, but it was Planet Side. Planet Side is the game that sucked me in and hooked me. And I, I just I just couldn't turn away. And then I would play stuff tangentially like Planet Side, like World War II Online. Um, but Planet Side, I I had an insane amount of joy becoming a galaxy dropship pilot. I had so much fun. I never had to shoot at anybody. But there was something so satisfying about me being there and getting word that, hey, this group is under attack, they're going to get wiped out. And I come flying in. Everything's trying to shoot me out of the sky. I slam into the ground and skid right to them. They jump in the back. We take off immediately. And I just save their entire squad from being wiped so that I can redeploy them somewhere else. Or I take a new fresh squad to the battlefield where they're needed. Something so fucking satisfying about that. Holy oh. shit, I love being a Galaxy Dropship pilot. Oh, I like this. Um, KR-18 uh, gave me more context for that story I told. Um, regarding that story, the reason the guy in that story, uh, did that was because his first character was killed after only five minutes by another player, and the mods and other players allowed it. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) That is, like, the ultimate revenge. That is, I respect that. Like, holy shit. So I'm gonna play this game for years, possibly, however long it was. 
I'm going to document how I hate every single one of these um, elves and other creatures that are like heroes to the realm, the defeaters of evil. And I'm going to permanently kill their characters by poisoning their wine and mead. Mm. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, wow. It's fucking incredible. And, uh, PTRD, truth, MMO is practically a second job at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much is. Uh, 10 Polish Lodi from Super Jazzio as well. Thank you Thank very you. much. Orc RP PvP for life. Crump den clump. <laughs> Anyways, we've got a video to finish. We're, we're about halfway through and he said nothing of value. <laughs> yeah, let's do move away from the game of basketball. Both teach a very valuable lesson, and that lesson is stick to what you're good at. The no! No, 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 no. That what is a, a terrible awful. fucking lesson. What is wrong with you? That is an awful lesson. Get outside your comfort zone and try new things is an actual really good lesson. It's what fucking Blizzard did. Before they went insane, it is what Blizzard did. They tried something completely outside their wheelhouse. They decided, we want to try our hand at the MMO market. Because we are MMO fans, we love them, we see how they work, and we think our world, our creation, can become a really good MMO. And they were fucking right. It literally revolutionized MMO games forever. If people didn't move oh, out of their comfortable zones, or comfort zones, if people only stick to what they knew and never fucking change, we would lose out on so much innovation and creativity in this world. Like, yeah. everything about Starfield and Bethesda and everything aside, what the actual fuck is wrong with you? Holy yeah. shit. Oh, I didn't like Planetside 2 when it first launched, uh, Mechanical. I, I, d I tried because I was so big into Planetside 1. I was really really tried to get into Planet Side 2. And I was a really good Galaxy Dropship pilot in Planet Side 2 as well. I even taught a bunch of people my favorite technique, which is called the back slap. Which is when you're getting shot at, because Galaxy Dropships, they have some defensive measures, but you're not really dogfighting. The, the planes are going to shoot you down. The aircraft are going to shoot you down. Unless, um, when they're coming in to dogfight you, Make it like you're trying to maneuver. You're trying to throw them off. It makes them think, oh, this guy, is, he's trying to give me a slip, but he's so terrible. Then as they commit, slam on the brakes, immediately pull the throttle back, and you will shoot up and create a giant wall with your dropship that they are too fast to maneuver around. They slam into you and explode and die. Hmm. Back slapping people with the galaxy dropship is so fucking good. Because, like, ha, you thought I was a simple target. Oh, boy. My favorite one I ever did got actually recorded by Angry Joe. Um, this was back uh, with the Angry Army and everything like that. I was one of the field marshals. Um, when, of course, this is back in the days I was working for Joe. And I was going through a canyon. A guy was shooting at me. I rolled over the, the Galaxy dropship into a canyon. He followed me into the canyon. We're flying, we're flying. I see this big bridge. So the canyon has, like, uh, a natural land bridge over part of it. I swoop low, scrape the ground a little bit, start doing the back slap, and the guy realizes he can't go up because now there's a ceiling above him because of that land bridge. Oh, it was so fucking good. Joe about shit himself because he was like, oh, my God, we're going to die, and I fucking bam, and then immediately turned and, and brought us into landing. Oh, it was so good. It's the it's the people know where it is if you know Plant Side 2. It's the base in the canyon. There's a single capture point in, in a canyon. So fucking good. How is it to work with Joe? Um I have very mixed feelings on it now. I, I actually look back on it moments of it fondly, and other moments on it I despise immensely. Joe is not his Angry Joe is not his persona. That is literally him on camera. He is that animated and that rambunctious for real. 
He really is that way. And it was refreshing at first, but then the sense there was no professionalism. And he too often catered to whoever was giving him money. And that really just really rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, granted, the person who was giving him money also hated me in particular, and they were they were a sleazy politician type. They knew they had money, so they were like giving money out as like favors to everybody else, and they would like get people to act up, and I'd have to deal with it, and then they'd be like, "See, he's being unreasonable because he had to deal with that." And it's like I'm trying to fucking work here. Just oh, I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Okay, so and I. I finally um, said no, because uh, Joe then made this politician guy. He's like, I'm going to make him like an a advisor for the Angry Joe show from now on. Are you okay with that? And I said, no, give me my final paycheck. I'm out. And that was the last I dealt with Angry Joe. Wow. Yeah. Um, I found the story. I just Googled it. It's actually a, a, a Reddit post. But... Um... I'm just going to read it out because it's a funny story. God, I spent countless hours as a teen playing on a heavily modded and role-play enforced Ultima online server. So that answers the question. Yes! The person asked where it was from. I played Cedric Sartone, a simple farner, uh, farmer turned tavern owner who eventually turned it into the best place in town. It was popping every night. I was buddies with every adventurer, soldier, mage, druid, and ranger that played the game. After they went out and grinded their skills and did their quests... I was waiting for them with a warm fire and plenty of ale. I'd buy their ingredients to make awesome food and booze, max level cooking, and was privy to all the gossip. Little did they know, I had a side hobby. I was brewing massive amounts of the most game-breakingly toxic poison possible. For over a year, I roleplayed with these people as a simple barman, pretended to be their friend and confidant, and then during a harvest festival where every player on our server was in attendance, and I was paid to provide the food and drink. I poisoned every last morsel of food, every drop of drink. And after the uh, Reach had delivered his speech, and all these f uh, fools raised their goblets for the toast and took that deadly sip, I stepped onto the stage and revealed uh, what had happened. They were all going to die, and they did. <clears throat> oh, sorry, and die they did. Now, this was a permanent death server. Hardcore our peers, mind you. And some had been playing those characters for eight years. And there they all were, collapsed and dying. Soon they were all unconscious, as you could only die if you went unconscious three times in one day. Or if a certain psychotic bartender came and cut off your head, which I did to every player in our group of 38. They were all there, and unfortunately, so was I. Revenge against mm. what, you ask? So the server had a pretty... Sorry, this is a revenge subreddit, which... By the way, fuck Reddit. But this is an yeah. entertaining story. So the server had a pretty strict policy regarding PvP and player killing. Essentially, the Game Masters had to determine if there is in-character justification for any instance of disputed player killing. Obviously, my situa uh, situation prompted a call for an investigation. I understood those rules from the start, though, and kept a written log in the game where I detailed my character's building hatred of every single other player character in the world. He would keep track of every little thing, from petty slights to unpaid tabs... But more importantly, I adopted the little uh, mannerisms that people roleplayed to uh, develop their characters into the madness of mine. So Elias was always whistling while I recorded how infuriating Cedric found it in his journal. And soon he had multiple journals packed full of a thousand reasons an unstable maniac could use to justifiably uh, re server rules. Murder anyone. The regent, who is also the server admin, had some ornate cloak with a custom texture. So I wrote like three pages about how pompous it was and extrapolated what kind of insufferable prick he must have been for wearing it. I would just write one or two things down every day for over a year. So I had many books full for the GMs to locate in the tavern basement and read through. The result was that they found my massacre to be in good form and in character. So the server was not rolled back and instead they decided to reset and implement a new landmass they had been working on. Um... Some people were really pissed off, mostly a handful of the veteran players who had been getting top dog for several years in their little uh, gladiator arena. I only did any of it because my first character was murdered by some overzealous asshole uh, who just used his character to project his inferiority complex. 
He killed me on my second day on the server because I wandered into the funeral of his friend. It's taking place in the middle of the town and there's a crowd. Of course, I was curious. And because I was not invited and he was a known prick, it was found justifiable for his character to kill mine because of the emotional turmoil, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I just said fuck that and rolled a new character who's uh, ostensibly eager to please and non-threatening. I won. <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's great. <laughs> the dedication is really admirable. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I fucking hate these people. I am going to stay here for years and ruin them. Well, over a year, but yeah. It's <laughs> over like, a year, yeah. The dedication involved is, like, amazing. <laughs> Anyways, um, video. That was my fault, but still, that is very <laughs> well worth reading. That is an amazing story. Yeah. The story perfect analogy because of how different MMOs are from single player games, at Hold least on. in terms of development and support. You literally just showed a clip of a game from a company that changed fucking direction. Yeah. When you just finished saying, oh yeah, if you have a comfort zone, don't ever leave it. Which, by the way, again, fucking retarded advice. Yeah, that is horrible advice, but that's fucking impressive that you instantaneously destroyed your point. Oh, God. This is very 4 chan -y for Reddit. It might have been posted on 4chan as well, if, if that makes a difference. Um, I'm pretty sure I originally read it on 4chan. Um, but yeah. You need an entire set of people and tools to create an MMO versus a single player game. You have folks who have been making single player quests here for so long. How many people read a note at once, or how, who gets this bit of the story, and is this stored on the client or the server? Like, um, those are things we've never had to think about before. So you go and learn. Yeah, these are basics. There are people that did this before you. It's, it's the oh. same thing with, like, Epic Game Store. Oh, Epic Game Store is brand new, and, and Valve had to go through the same growing pains. Like, yeah, but Valve did that a decade ago. You've got no fucking excuse. Yeah. And, and by the way, imagine these same excuses being used for Fallout 3. Oh, we've never made a shooter before, so, you know, we... Yeah. It, it's just kind of pathetic. Like, this stuff has been around for ages. You should know, like, the basics by now, at least. You're not fucking blazing a new trail. Just like a meal, there's a whole set of new ideas that you have to keep in mind. And a whole new set of skills you have to learn. An MMO must be designed completely differently from the ground up. Just as an athlete for one sport would be designed differently with different abilities and muscle memory than an athlete in a different sport. Even with the highest level of athletic ability to always transfer to another. Just in case you don't know the Michael Jordan baseball story, here is the quickest version of all time. In the no one fucking cares. This is irrelevant. We, this is irrelevant to Starfield, you idiot. By the way, this oh. is still like his first point in a 10 minute video and we're over six minutes in. Sorry, a nearly 11 minute video and we're over six minutes in. Oh, to see Starfield's going to be good, you're going to have to look at what they don't show you. They don't show you their amazing team that have made terrible games for the past fucking 15 years. Or, um, fucking, they, they, they're, it's a new set of skills they haven't used before, and there's a lot of groin pains. Um, this is making, this, what? This isn't helping your case, my dude. This is only six minutes? No, we're only six minutes in. Yeah. But he's still been on the same point for this long. We, we had, like, a minute, maybe more truthfully, 30 seconds up front, and then we've been on this. This entire thing has been this one point. Which he's doing a shitty job of trying to explain. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what you could, like, say, you know, you have to look at what they're not showing you to see this game will be good. 
<laughs> Burning Gores. Who cares about Michael Jackson when, when talking about Starfield? Well, the wrong person, yes. However, uh, it, the point still stands. Michael Jordan doesn't fucking matter to Starfield. My favorite Michael Jordan song is Pro Life. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Anyways, um... In the 90s, Michael Jordan was the best basketball player in the world. Would you guys care if I tried to skip? Uh... Honestly. I, I'm totally fine, but if, but if we do this, let's make sure we don't pause while he's still doing the Michael Jordan thing. Is that okay? How about we just speed it up until he's done with a stupid fucking sports analogy that makes no sense and doesn't prove the point he's trying to? Okay, I'm going to do 1.5. I don't want to go do two, two times. Do two. Okay, you sure? Yes. All right, here we go. And he's winning championships every year. Play baseball instead of basketball. So he quits the NBA and tries out for Major League Baseball. He ends up for Major League Baseball. He ends up not being good enough to play professional baseball, so he goes back to the NBA and wins three championships in a row. The moral of the story here is that the two sports are so different from each other that even arguably the best basketball player of all time can't even compete with Major League Baseball players. Okay, so first of all, first of all, um, your story is fucking retarded. That's one case where one guy wasn't able to transition to a different professional sport. It is entirely possible that a basketball player can move over to move over to be baseball and be decent or even good or even better than he is at basketball at that sport or yeah. to any other sport. This is a case of someone who tried something else and failed because he he just wasn't uh, cut out for it, I guess. Um, that's that's not universal though. That doesn't apply to every single person on the planet. This is one case of it. Um, more than that, you're talking about sports, which is a very athletic thing. And as as this fucking idiot already said, oh well. There's different muscle memory for these two different sports. These uh, two different athletic categories that you could be a part of. Okay. Two different muscle memories and ways of playing sports is different from sitting in a chair and designing fucking video games. You still have to yeah. learn a new skill set depending on how different the game you are, how different the game you're making is. But at the end of the day, it's like not even comparable. Yeah, you're still making a game. You would still make character models. You would still make items and props and worlds. Like, come on. There are differences, yes. But it's not like you're completely changing everything out. The subject video is doing the job of tangenting for you this time. Yeah, this is completely worthless filler fucking garbage. If we cut out yeah. all this stupid sports analogy bullshit, this video would be like five minutes long. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not even that, because boy, oh boy. Yeah, he's using this a lot, and it just doesn't work. Yeah. Bethesda making a single-player open-world game, like their bread and butter, is just like Michael Jordan playing basketball. No, it isn't. No. That so, I'll tell you why this comparison doesn't work right now for a different reason. Everything I just said about this comparison being shit is still true. Now, here's why it's worse. Michael Jordan is actually fucking good at playing basketball. Yeah. Fallout 4 is not a good game. It's got terrible quests. It's got a terrible story. It's got... Uh, mediocre gameplay, if you, if by gameplay you mean shooting enemies, which is what you yeah. do for most of the game. It's fine. It's serviceable. It's passable. If everything else is there to make it good. The story, the RPG mechanics, the quest design. Those things are yeah. not there. The RPG mechanics are fucking abysmal. Um, so yeah, these, again, aren't fucking comparable. Yep. Bethesda is old at making single-player open-world game. <laughs> uh, says you, but I will not say that ever. That actually kind of skipped for me. What did he say? He says Bethesda are the best in the world at making single-player open-world game. Uh, disagree. Yeah, Big disagree. Yeah, I, I hard have disagree. a hard disagree on that one. My they they can't even make mediocre ones. Like holy shit. My level of disagreement is so big that you wouldn't be able to print it on the surface of V Y Canis Majoris, the largest known sun in existence. 
<laughs> oh, man. I'm saying that they are 100% R, but I'm saying it could be argued. They've proven several times that they can make single player open world games at the highest level with games like Skyrim. No! Oblivion. No. no. Okay, I like how you're trying to prove this point and you're showing like derp clips of these games. Yeah, at, at the highest level, no. Maybe profitable, fine, but again, that appealing to popularity is not a good way to go with this. Appeal to success, appeal to popularity. These yeah. these don't mean they're good. Yeah. It means they're popular and successful. It's like so, so McDonald's, then, by this guy's definition, is the best in the entire world. Yeah, they're popular. I don't, I don't McDonald's think, makes a lot of think, money. Yeah, and I don't think anyone that, even people that are real big fans of McDonald's are like, oh, no, it's, I wouldn't say it's the best food in the world, but it's satisfying. It's like, okay, fine. Yeah, satisfying is different from good, though. I yeah. find eating fucking chocolate to be satisfying. You know what? Not good for me. Mm. The face on the screen is my face right now. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy just comes off as like a complete shill. Yeah. Like he's literally just coping at this point. That's all this video is. Hold Stop on. being mean, guys. I like well, Bethesda. This video, keep, this game's going to be good. Keep in mind what he said, though. Don't look at the facts that you're seeing on the screen. You've got to think about the facts they aren't showing you. And the facts they and aren't then we showing you this. is the team behind the game. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's like that's not that's not a that's not a game maker or anything also, at all. Also, I have to point out this character's names. It's or this name, uh, Harold Frody the simp. Yep. Was well, that a statue of fucking Belle Delphine in the background? <laughs> fucking loser. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, the fucking uh, the way he started out of like ignore the propaganda. So people pointing out the issues and clipping the bugs in the trailer are is propaganda. Yeah, but you're the arbiter of truth. I I don't understand this. How the, like the people that are countering and talking about how shit it looks didn't buy the hype though. Saying, but well, these people bought the hype. How? They're they're literally countering it. Yeah, they're literally saying don't believe the hype. Yeah, I don't get this dude's logic at all. I was just expecting something else from this video. Someone talking about how, like... Like, stuff they've actually found positive in the Starfield video. Or uh, presentation, where it's like... Yeah, this this is a good sign that the game is going to be great. It's, uh... You can see the detail in the world here, and... Um... Blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Like... <sighs> God, this is just fucking garbage. It's surprising how much shit there is. Like, I mean, with everything we cover, where we think, oh, it's going to be a standard video where they talk about this and explain why we why they think it's good because of these elements. And we might be able to counter those, but overall yeah. we'll have our own points of why we don't like it. But no, it's never that. It's always the fucking worst shit possible. It's always fucking idiots who just have no point whatsoever. Every I, time. I'm just looking at the title again, too. Starfield will be a, uh, a masterpiece, and there are some great reasons why. We are well over halfway into this video, and we're still on reason number one, which is still dog shit. Yeah. 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 To me, those are kind of attuned to Michael Jordan's NBA championship. Oh my god, fucking stop, you actual retard. Yeah. Because, again, they aren't championships. They aren't, like, the bestest games ever. They have major problems in all of them. They're not really... They're not that good, either. They're they're the equivalent of fast food. No, you don't get it such. The, the equivalent to the championship is they lost a game here and there, and those are the negative parts of Bethesda's games. So it totally makes sense that, they're, that I'm comparing them to Michael Jordan, because... Isn't he great? Yeah. Like Bethesda, they're both great. I, I I have no critical thinking skills. 
Yeah. Stag, it's worse than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. God, yeah. I, I, we, we should actually, I, I actually think I'll add like, um, like moon logic comparison or something like that. Like, I don't know, like what, what's a way to do this? Cause like, this isn't even what about ism. This is like, these two things are related because I said they are. How? How, how even remotely? Like, what the fuck? You see, oh, God. A 1977 Cadillac is a lot like a cat because... You see, the M1 Garand, even though it should be Garand because his name was John Garand, is a lot like Bethesda because... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. God, that's still... Oh, it's... That reminds me, Fat Electrician had one of the greatest lines I've ever heard. If, if you get hit by the M1 Garand, it's going to change your sex life, because the only thing you'll be fucking is dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's great. Holy yeah, that's shit. That's amazing. <laughs> you see what I mean now, though? Like, are you starting to understand my, like, viewpoint of... There's so many stupid people. <laughs> yes, there really are. Holy crap, man. Yeah, I expected at least something sort of coherent from this, but it's just not. There's who, nothing who here. Who fucking knows? Who fucking knows where we're going next? Who fucking knows? We're on we're on full Looney Tunes logic here, everybody. You guys ever see that um, Simpsons episode? Well, I can't remember which one it is, but there, the joke is, uh, oh, what's going on in Homer's head? It's just like. A 1930s cow dancing. Do 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 do. Ba da 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 da. That's what this video is. Just fucking yeah. nothingness. Yeah, basically, Calvick. Here's why Starfield will be a masterpiece. Sports. Yeah. Why? <laughs> what is it? And some great reasons why starfield will be a masterpiece and there are some great reasons why i don't believe you and the more i've watched your video the less i believe you mm -hmm. all right oh, so man. let's let's continue space jam let's keep the you know we'll keep the michael jordan thing we're going into space jam everybody <laughs> yeah man i actually saw something from fucking uh uh dj peach cobbler uh, i saw oh, no. i saw it was a Halo video of his. I, I didn't watch the whole thing. Oh, no. But he actually had something in there that I kind of, like, that I actually agreed with, or at least I liked. I, I don't I, think I like it in the same <laughs> sense that he does. I, I think I think the point he makes is different, but... I like how you describe it as there's something in there that I agree with, where it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's still a monumental pile of shit, but there is a nugget of gold in there. It, it's literally just this thing where he's like, yeah, people are stupid. Yeah, you know that that uh, presidential candidate you don't like? People voted for him. Those people voted for him because they're fucking stupid. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. And, and that's... Let's get all the Biden people out to accept their well, help. Well, that's, that's the kind of political joke that's fine to make inside your video because you're not specifying a side. Um, yeah. Depending on who the, who the person is, you can easily guess or infer who they're talking about but when you're just when you leave it vague like that it's like yeah that's harmless yep it's like he actually the... has some pretty good jokes actually you know what i think his halo video might be the best one i've seen because while there was definitely some stuff in there i didn't agree with a lot of it was pretty decent and the jokes not all of them but a lot of the jokes actually did land like i actually chuckled at a couple of them the fucking <laughs> the one where he's shooting at like I guess, I don't know, it's literally just, like, a multiplayer thing. He's shooting at a, another player that looks like Master Chief. Yeah. And right before the bolt hits, it freezes, and, like, his eyes appear on the bolt, and he just goes, please, I, I need this. When I hit you, can you take damage? <laughs> the player just goes, no. <laughs> just fucking, he's like, <laughs> it just, like, smash cuts to, like, fucking like him being sad or whatever, but it's like, because it, he's talking about the PvP and why it doesn't work and how yeah. fucked it is. And but it it, it it landed pretty well of just like him freezing on that and being like, please, I need this. When I hit you, can you take damage? No. <laughs> fucking damn it. Well, <laughs> it's like this fun, the, the fucking multiplayer shit. 
Yeah. <laughs> that certainly sounds a lot better than E. Didn't that make you mad? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was not funny. That was cringe. She actually has some of those jokes in there, too, where it's like, wow, that was fucking cringe. Not funny at all. But he yeah. had a couple bangers. The fucking politics one. The fucking people are stupid. The, like, yeah, you know that presidential candidate you don't like? Those people voted for him because people are fucking stupid. <laughs> and it's like, yes, I agree. And the fucking, please, I need this. When I hit you, will you take damage? No. <laughs> yeah. Those pretty. Those were good. Improved that they do their work at the highest level. <laughs> when Bethesda decided to make Fallout 76, <laughs> it was Michael Jordan signing up for baseball all over again. No, it wasn't. No? Oh my idiot. god, this is fucking pathetic. Also, we've got to this, get to the hold next on. point. Hold on, this point he's making actually hurts his whole point of why Starfield will be good, because he's literally saying they shouldn't leave their comfort zone. They <laughs> should. They shouldn't make stuff like 76 and leave the the established stuff they know what is starfield then they yeah, are literally leaving game. their comfort zone yeah it's it's going to like it, by your own logic this fucking game is doomed to fail so why are you sitting here defending it so hard and saying that people are wrong to be disappointed are you fucking kidding me your own logic dictates that this game is going to be fucking shit I also want to point out, too, that Fallout 76 wasn't that different from Fallout 4. A majority of its mechanics and stuff are similar or the same. They just had to modify some stuff to, add, to, to make it multiplayer. Yeah. Like, the difference... Like, he's acting like um, a fucking... A game... A company that makes racing games is suddenly making, like, in-depth fucking super, super big RPGs. When... It's, the leap isn't that great. The canyon isn't that great. It's, oh yeah, there's some changes to make it multiplayer. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's literally just a, a smaller Fallout game with multiplayer <clears throat> elements added to it. Like, they didn't have to not put NPCs in it at the beginning of the, uh, you know, at, at the launch. They didn't have to do that. that was they chose choice. to do that. Yeah. yeah, they chose to do that. That was their own fuck up. That wasn't inexperienced. That was them being lazy. Alright. I can't wait for the next 37 fucking sports analogies. Yeah. yeah. But was straight up out of their element. You were out of your element. No, they creating weren't. Creating a massively multiplayer online experience. It's not a massively multiplayer online experience. They were not out of their element. You're fucking lying. Okay, I, I want to point something out because this is bugging me. So you just played a clip from uh, Big Lebowski. You're out of your element. Um, okay. He already said you're out, they're out of their element, though. That doesn't come across as like funny or anything it's just a random interruption to your video now yeah. you can use clips like that for comedic effect you're just not doing it the right way unless the intent isn't to be comedic but just to randomly interrupt the flow of your video with here's a clip from a movie yeah yes have experience truly showed even though they had some experienced people on their team but they made a few decisions that likely made it almost impossible for them to pull this off. For example, instead of creating a new Fallout from the ground up to make massively multiplayer and online, they took the single player base game for Fallout 4 and tried to basically mod it and change it enough that it would work as an online massively multiplayer game. Okay, so that's not actually the problem. No, oh, yeah. Having an existing game built a solid foundation to make a multiplayer game from. They just didn't handle the jump well. They didn't learn what they needed to to actually make it function properly. I I wonder if you'd blow this guy's mind if you told him, hey, when Blizzard jumped from RTS to MMOs, they actually had a prototype, which was the prelude chapters of... Their MMO, World of Warcraft, in, in Warcraft 3, you can actually play it. And it's the building of Orzammar. It's genuinely... Or, did, did I, I said Orzammar, didn't I? Yes. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Um, it is genuinely a fantastic look and them understanding what they needed to do because they started introducing those RPG mechanics more and more 
sort of giving your character levels and everything like that properly. And Warcraft 3 already had levels and everything, but they were using it as this is this character going through this story. Here is him leveling up, getting new abilities that will continue through the story and him doing quests and everything along the way. Yeah. So they were they were already laying down that foundation in Warcraft 3. Shame that that, you know, is completely meaningless now, but still, it was a pretty good experience at the time. Seventy six is the fall for. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. No one said that? No. It is. What? This is almost as ugly as watching Michael Jordan try to hit a baseball. Stop. Strike three. Oh my god, dude, we get it. Move on from this fucking point. I hate these analogies. We are nearing the end of his video and he's still on the first fucking point. Yeah. There are some great reasons why. You haven't given us a single reason why. No, he's given us one reason, and it's been a shit reason. It's an inaccurate and invalid reason. Yeah. It's, it, oh, like it's... The, the team has been, has lots of experience. Okay. That doesn't mean shit. Uh, I guess maybe this is actually the second reason. Bethesda is good at open-world RPGs. Even though they're not, yeah. clearly. Yeah, they're not one. They're not good at it, and two. This is way outside their comfort zone. They're actually going to have to do procedural generation on a massive scale. Yeah, this point is basically well, it's not seventy six, so it's going to be better, right? No. No. Could be better. It could be worse. It could be the same. It could be incredibly mediocre. Yep. It could be the best thing they've ever done. It could be the worst thing they've ever done. Um, I've got an opinion on where that uh, where that dart is going to land. Yeah, the signs are not looking good towards it being really good, unfortunately. it's The signs are looking more like it's going to be a disaster. But who knows? They might be able to pull it off. Maybe. We'll find out when it's actually released. Uh, fight on the super chat from Bentastic197. Thank you very much. Evening, furry fap. No. <laughs> Just joined. How are the videos going? Terrible. Really bad. Both of them are incredibly awful. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> My, Michael Jordan is the most biblical basketball player of all time. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, here's a good comment, too. Being better than 76 somehow automatically makes it good? Um, No. You could be better than something that is terrible and still be bad. I don't yeah. know why people have trouble understanding this. Yeah. Oh, oh well, I'll bring up. I'll, if we're we're trying to get this whole quality thing. I'm gonna bring up the shotgun. Don't fucking worry. There is two minutes and twenty seconds left of this trash. Yep. Let's do it. Even though they have the staff. To help them, just no, like Michael don't. Jordan had batting coaches to help him. Shut the fuck up! What to do and actually pulling it off with consistency is a completely different story. I've heard multiple oh professional God. athletes say that hitting. Fucking stop. Fucking hey, uh, stop. Two times, fucking two stop. Times mode. Let's go. Fuck. Let's go. Fuck. A baseball thrown by a major league pitcher is the hardest thing to do in all of professional sports. It's unbelievable. It takes guys 15 years to learn how to hit a baseball. And this guy thinks he can just walk on and do it. And I would argue that making a successful, addictive, and socially engaging MMO might be the hardest thing to do in all of professional game design. The moral I hope Okay, so hold no, on. No, it isn't. No, it actually isn't. First of all, you probably shouldn't be making your games addictive. That's kind of a bad thing. Yeah. Because it's not actually hard to make a Skinner box. It, it's really, really fucking simple. To make a Skinner box and get people addicted. Yeah. Very simple. Your sports make analogy... a satisfying game? Sure. That has some difficulty to it. But it is not actually difficult to make an online experience. And Fallout 76 is just a shared online world. It is not an MMO. Your sports analogies don't work. Stop. Yeah, I agree. Um, I used a sports analogy in my videos once. It's one that made sense with what I was talking about. Um... When talking about how Bethesda has treated their games and how they've gone as a company from Morrowind to Fallout 4, my comparison was Morrowind was like baseball and Fallout 4 is like T-ball, where 
one is really in depth and one is a super simplified version of the other. And guess what? It fucking makes sense because that's what T-ball is to baseball. That's what Fallout 4 is to the original Fallout games and, and Morrowind and everything. Yeah. Christ. This shouldn't be this fucking difficult. That's fucking crazy. Alright, we're gonna sing it off with two times speed. Back to more normal. Let's go. Until the next... Everybody in the story is seconds. that yep. Bethesda trying to make Fallout 76 was basically an experiment. It was a one-off thing. It's not what... This is, this is, this is total cope. This is 100% cope. Yeah, this is oh. absolute copium. Um, Fallout 76, that was bad, but it's like, it's a one-time thing. It's, it's... Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah, this is, in, this is incredible copium right here. There's what many... they normally do, oh. who they are, and it's not what they're best at. So don't judge their future single-player open-world titles by comparing them to Fallout 76. No, we're comparing them to not Fallout 76, but Fallout 76 and Fallout 4 and Skyrim and Fallout 3. They have a shit fucking track record at this point. Yes. If you don't and... see that, you're fucking blind. And Fallout Shelter. Fallout and Fallout Blade. Shelter. Or sorry, as Skyrim. Elder Scrolls Blades. Like, guy, they are not good game developers. Holy shit. Uh, $5 from Jacob. Thank you. How about another Fallout 3 is better than you think viewing after this, fellas? My treat. Why don't I just fucking kill myself? Yeah, why, no. why don't you just tell me to fucking kill myself? I mean, dear God. We should watch Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, though, after this is done. Uh, I don't know. We I was gonna go to bed. <laughs> as soon as this was as was gonna end, I was gonna eat something and go to bed. Because the difference between a and a single player title is night and day, and that's just no, not it isn't. Bethesda. Just because it's to use your shit analogy more accurately, it's like morning versus afternoon. Like, holy shit, man. They are not diametrically opposed to each other. It's more like a progression from one to the other. Now, like I said, there is a chance Starfield will be good. Um, we haven't seen signs of that yet. Yes. Th that's a lot of bad signs right now. God, it'd be amazing if Starfield is good, but it's, I... I want it to I be good. I will not hold my breath. I, I certainly, will not hold my breath. I want it to be good. I certainly hope it's going to be good. I don't think it will be. As I think it will eventually be a masterpiece, I don't think it will release that way. With all the complexity... Well, that's a bad <laughs> sign right there! What the fuck is the matter with you? <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit, talk about low expectations. This game is going to be a masterpiece. Well, I don't think it's going to release that way. Well, then... Oh, man. He is setting up for when this game is inevitably shit. He can call out all the people who are, like, pointing out that it's obviously shit. And they're, and he's going to be like, see, I told you. it's. I said it wouldn't release well, but these people aren't giving it the time it needs. See? See? Yeah, I was right. It's going to be a cyberpunk thing all over again. Yeah, we've also reached the point where these fucking copesters who should move to fucking Copenhagen, they're like... Oh, yeah, it's going to be shit on release, but eventually it'll be good. It's like, no, it should be good on fucking release. We shouldn't have to deal with this shit where games are released in a fucking insanely poor quality and we have to, still have to wait years for it to be decent. Yeah. <laughs> like what people said with Anthem. Oh, it's going to be so good, guys. Just give it time. Yeah, what happened with that? Yeah. Where'd that, where'd that go? The life service model and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. Yeah. Yeah, it really has. Um, Five dollars from Calbeck. Thank you. Football, basketball, and baseball are games. Starfield is a game. It's like retardation. It rhymes. That's the second yeah. time I've seen retard get through the uh, filter. Um, yeah, I'm actually surprised. I don't have a problem with this, though. I like uh, less censorship on uh, YouTube. Yeah, same. Maybe it's because it's our chat. Maybe, maybe like, YouTube knows. Like, okay, they don't, they don't care. We, we can let it through <laughs> on this one. 
Yeah, but that's but the... other ones they probably don't. They're like, ah, but, no, this uh, they they get mad. But that's the thing though. EFAP doesn't get uh, chats like that, and they say retarded all the time. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I don't know. All right. That goes into creating game and all the different platforms they run on. Oh, it's really difficult. I'm going to appeal to the difficulty of the task. Don't give uh, a yes. shit about what Some... the task is. You're the one that signed up for it, dipshit. So something being difficult is an excuse for a subpar product. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like, so... then don't sign up for it, then. Then don't so... tell us that's what you're going to deliver. You know what? Making a car that properly functions, that, that's a that's a difficult product. You know, the brake lights might not work, but I'm going to sell you this car anyways, person who made this shitty video. It's fine. It'll be fixed later. It's Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll recall it later once we get the update worked out. But you should be fine till then. We're problems with games on release, and there's almost nothing we can do about it. So if um ah uh... no, again, Elden Ring was pretty fucking good on release. In like, regard... there were some issues, but yeah. The... And it's a massively open world game. It's something outside of From Software's comfort zone, and it was pretty fucking good. And regardless, we shouldn't be accepting that games are garbage and release, but might be better later. Yeah, That's the whole terrible. there's nothing we can do about it. It's like, dude, the reason why it's so hard to do anything about it is because there's people like you who fucking defend it. So there's actually a group of there's an audience out there that they look at who they know doesn't give a fuck. And they know they can keep pushing and everyone will buy this stuff because they know that people like you exist and that you will buy it because you don't have standards. Yeah. That's why the thing you're complaining about is literally because of people like yourself. Stop being a fucking idiot. Have some standards and actually just, oh, just God damn it. It's I hate actually, this. It's actually more difficult to try and hold these companies accountable too because we have cunts like this coming in and saying yeah but they'll fix it late it'll be fine they'll it'll be good eventually if you don't like no, loot boxes you. just don't buy them yeah all these people are a cancer upon the gaming industry yeah um and there's a comment in chat scrolled off screen but i've got to go up and grab it um don't have standards just buy and hope they fix it later that's a fucking terrible position to be in yeah actually fuck you Caldeck, he has standards. Jordan standards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Using retard in a sense, it seems to get past censors' Cree, It seems. Well, here's the thing too: is um, their their bots seem to have like a context thing. So you could say something is stupid, but if you say, "Oh, you're stupid," it'll delete your comment. You know, um, it's very irritating. Yeah. When there's people who need to be called stupid. Because there's a lot of them. Yes, there is. If you don't like your game, don't pre-order it. Don't buy it on release day. Just... Okay, if so you first... don't like loot boxes, just don't buy them. So first of all, yeah, don't pre-order games ever. Um, yep. But don't buy it on release day. So... God, I, I hate these people so much. So, what you're saying is, when there's a game that you're looking forward to, that might be good, um, it might be garbage on release, so don't buy it. Again, that, this is terrible. Which we, we is should've... kind of hilarious, because if you don't, if not enough people buy it, they see it as a loss, and then they don't want to put any more money into it, and they'll just drop it right there, and then it never becomes good. So, his own fucking advice actually harms his own point yeah because that's what happened with great. anthem it was shit nobody cared for it and they were like well we don't want to take too big of a loss so we're just going to drop it and not work on it anymore this and guy, it's like yeah this is what happens guys this guy is a very deep well of shitty analogies and terrible advice yeah um, yeah the industry should never be in the position where Honest to God, actual, genuine good advice is don't buy the game on release. 
Yep. Like, <sighs> this wouldn't be accepted anywhere else, just so you know. Like, any, any other industry. Oh, this new uh, car was released, but don't buy it uh, the moment they release it, because it might be fucking garbage until they uh, work out all the problems, which should have been done before release. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, Burger King is coming out with a new Whopper, and it turns out that, oh, all these Whoppers are, like, fucking poorly cooked because they got the, the length of time they need to cook it wrong, so you're probably going to get salmonella. Yeah, that's, um, fucking don't buy these burgers until they work out the problems. Yeah, don't don't criticize this movie. They'll make a better version of it, you know, uh, several years later. Yeah. <coughs> Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it reminds me about how the Cats movie several years ago got fucking patched because the CGI was shit. And they made it slightly less shit with their patch. And they and, uh, a lot of that was because they literally forgot to put CGI in a lot of scenes. Which oh, is fucking... no. Yeah, so randomly, like, you had normal hands. and Salmon Salmonella from beef? I'm sorry, make it a chicken sandwich, whatever, I don't care. You get the point. All right, let's try and get this done. Let's try. Just wait, watch some reviews, and look for a time when the patch comes out that fixes the stuff. If I could choose... I can't. Boy, if you're waiting for Cyberpunk to still get fixed... Oh, well, there, I we, gave away the joke. Uh, Cyberpunk is still not fixed. We shouldn't need to do that, though. Like, th this is... How does someone say this without realizing how fucked up it is? Because he's, he's not working... Remember, he's in Looney Tunes fucking logic here, okay? He, he doesn't have, like, a grasp of logic at all. No, you're right. You can get it in tongue, I guess. He just checked. Ugh. And there is cross-contamination. Yes, that is actually a thing. In really dirty places, cross-contamination of food happens all the fucking time. Yeah. Uh, any to make Starfield, I would pick Bethesda number one. No. I any other game studio. would not. Simply because of I would tell, hey, Bethesda, take Starfield, because that's down to a single solar system. You can be big if you want. Single solar system. There you go. That's all you get to work with. That's your constraint. Also, I yeah. And then, then I would also tell him if you really want it to be good, fire that guy right over there, and I would yes. point right at a mill. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the other thing too, and I have to point this out because this is so. Again, this feels extremely disingenuous to me. Oh, if any company I could pick to do it, it would be Bethesda. Meanwhile, he intentionally left like Fallout Four and Skyrim off of. Uh, ML's writing history. He's like, oh yeah, he yeah. worked on Oblivion. Like, isn't it more significant that ML was the lead writer for their two most recent, like, big, big games? Skyrim and Fallout 4? Like, why would you say, oh yeah, he worked on Oblivion? Yeah, it's just weird. Like, like you could obviously include Oblivion on there. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm actually surprised you didn't mention Blood Moon. Like, oh yeah, Mil Pagliarillo, he's been at Bethesda for years. He worked on Blood Moon from Morrowind. He worked on Oblivion. He was the lead writer for Fallout 3, 4, and Skyrim. It's like, oh yeah, he, he just worked on Oblivion. Uh. I wonder if him not mentioning those other games means that he actually does know subconsciously that those games are not well written. But he won't Fallout, admit it. Fallout 4, definitely. Well, I shouldn't say definitely. There's a lot of people who are... Uh, a little bit delusional about that, but it definitely does raise some questions. Maybe he's aware of the discourse surrounding the quality of these games, so he's like, uh, Fallout 4, I'm going to get criticism for that, so I'll leave it off. And Skyrim, well, a lot of people are pretty critical about that too, or can be, so I'm, I'm going to ignore that as well. You know? Yeah. That's what it feels like. <sighs> Alright, let's just get this done and dusted. I am really hungry now. So yeah, I. me too. We're almost there, though. Game studio, simply because of their experience in this genre. No, so shut up. I think it's okay to be excited about this game. Okay, so it's God, gonna be what a stupid fucking clip that was. Um, so now he's just advocating for mindless fucking hype train shit. Yeah. yeah. 
Like no, he's, can... he's literally say, get excited for the propaganda after earlier saying, don't believe the propaganda. Yeah. And it's like, but no, it's... one, you don't know what propaganda is, and two, like, the people weren't excited by the hype, you idiot. <laughs> what fucking hell? Yeah. He's trying to counter that. Yeah, this is just... I don't even know what the fuck this video is. He has two points to make. There are some reasons why... Some great reasons why Starfield will be a masterpiece. And those reasons were... Well, they've got an experienced team that made several shit video games. And, uh, oh, it's not 76. So that means it'll be good. That means it'll be a masterpiece. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah this was fucking terrible. Bear enough to put <laughs> fucking sports reference in before the end of this. Oh, no, I'm sure he will. No. Good. I promise that. And if you're like me and you love space flight sci-fi crap, it might even turn out to be a masterpiece. Well, have fun because you're not going to fucking... You're not going to be flying through space in this game, I don't think. Look, but no, think, look what he just did. Starfield will be a masterpiece. And if you're a thing, if you're space nut like me, it might turn out to be a masterpiece. So mm. you're already, like, backing away from your own position. Holy shit, man. So the, I guess the video title is just clickbait, then. Starfield yep. will be a masterpiece, and there are some great reasons why. Let me ramble for about ten minutes about a shitty sports analogy I'm too stupid to fucking understand, and, uh, yeah, they've got a great team, so that's gonna be a reason why it's good. And I also don't know the definition of propaganda. All these people talking about why they don't think the game is going to be good based on actual evidence in the fucking presentation. That's just propaganda. But you know what is fine? Get fucking mindlessly hype excited for it because... Uh. Yeah. Alright, that's it. I'm out. Peace. What a shit fucking video. Fuck you. Yeah, that was terrible. I'm really happy that's over with now. Thank God. So yeah, am I. I'm glad that's done. Oh my God. Fucking hell. Uh. How long is Tucker and Dale? Uh, hour and twenty-eight minutes or something like that. It's it's a pretty short movie. I might be able to be down for that. Do it right now to double check the. Uh, so how are you no, feeling, no, chat? No. How do you guys all enjoy these two amazing, wonderful, fucking well-reasoned videos that uh, didn't have any problems with them whatsoever? Bye, bye, magic internet man. Dead inside. Yeah. Kratos a stag watch? No, it's not going to be a stag watch. Yeah. Can't Pain. do that. Pain. 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 Last other story is that Bethesda can't throw a fastball, so now they're working on their three-point line throws. Oh, God. I don't even know what any of that means. Please, no more sports talk. No, I, I can't I never, take any more. I don't want to ever see another fucking sport ever again. I already don't like sports, so... Neither do I. Yeah, this this was not <laughs> helpful. People are, like, uh, shocked to find out I have absolutely zero interest in any sports. No. I, yeah. I'm the same. Well, I like some esports, but other than that, yeah, I don't like normal sports. Did any of you suffer through Kenobi? I'm considering watching it just so I can maybe cover a video or two on it. Um... Explain. Not me. Okay, well, I'm trying to explain that. Um, explain any p uh, parts that these two might not be aware of for Kenobi, so they could comment on it as close as they can with what little they know. Um, yeah. Speaking of Kenobi, actually, after we're done here, and uh, depending on whether we watch this movie or not, I'll probably do it after if we end up watching the movie. EFAP has released their um, fucking EFAP. 
movies, or if that many, of uh, the final Kenobi episode, which I really want to watch. Ooh, yeah, I do too. Um, I haven't watched any of those, any of the Kenobi ones. I no. have. My favorite part so far is when Kenobi shows up against Darth Vader the second time and says, it's Kenobin time. <laughs> and showing that he is now truly, you know, come full circle and can actually fight Vader now. Oh, it's such a good moment. Wait, you mean it wasn't a, an amazing moment when Obi-Wan just kind of slowly jogged away from Vader? Yeah, or when he had his head pushed down into the fiery coals like it was a head in a toilet, like at a, a, a like a high school bully was dealing with him. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. Uh... Uh... Well, well, I'm going to take a piss. All <laughs> right. Uh, say bye to chat before you leave, because um, I'll probably end this before you get back. Yeah, um, <laughs> chat, hopefully I'll see you guys over... Uh... Uh, my way sometime. If not, it was fantastic being here with you. I think it was a good stag. Terrible, terrible videos, but a good stag. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all yeah. very much for the donations and everything. It is greatly appreciated. That actually does help out quite a lot, so thank you very, very much for that. Um, yeah, and hey, if you uh, have any interest in uh, other games or anything like that and gameplay, you can come over to Twitch. I'm pretty fucking spicy. I'm gonna warn you right now. So... Brace yourself if you come over to my Twitch. Until then, I'm going to the bathroom, and yeah. So, uh, bye bye Boy. Yeah, have a good one. Uh, by the way, my favorite kind of fire is the kind of fire that does zero damage when someone is fucking dragged through it. Very good. <laughs> very good fire. I, I don't understand why they didn't just have, like, a tank of gasoline or something he could dump over. or so, Like, just yeah. some kind of fuel. But no, it's like, it's space rocks that catch on fire. What? Why? Why did you have it that way? You're literally on like a quarry. Like, it, just have like a truck nearby, or like a, a you know, like a ship nearby, or something, and have the fuel next to it, or something. I don't know. It, it, something other than magic space rocks that ignite when you touch them with a lightsaber. It's like what the fuck? Yeah. So I just also I'm just imagining. Setch in the background, uh, just being—you could just hear him in the distance, being like, "Hey, chat! Look how hard I can piss." No. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to redirect to Flamenco Stream because he's the only one I'm following that's live right now, and it's saying you don't have redirect privileges. Ask creators to add you to their list in community settings. Once a channel gives you redirect permissions, you can send your viewers to any of its streams or premieres that are upcoming or in progress. So that's why I couldn't link someone's thing last time. And this is fucking retarded, YouTube. Um, yeah, what? You should be able to just uh, send people to other people's streams or channel so they could just go watch when you're done your own. Why do you need specific... Like, do you realize how hard it's going to be to get permission from certain people? Like, oh, hey, um, Nick Riccata is streaming a trial and it's uh, 9 in the morning. I just finished a uh, morning roast stream. Well, now I can't send anyone over there because there's a zero fucking percent chance that I'm going to get Nick Riccata to add me to his uh, permission list so I can send people his way to watch his show. Yeah, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What? This Why the fuck would they do that? This completely ruins the entire point of ha being able to do this. So you can't, like, oh, hey, here's a person I like. Let's uh, let's send some people their way. You know, let's let's send some people over to watch this channel I like. <laughs> Tears of Lost Socks, I recognize that. Ah, so you're a fan of her too. <laughs> Anyways, um, I guess that's it then. Have a good night, everyone. Uh, Flamenco is streaming right now. Um, go check him out if you're interested in the kind of stuff he covers. Uh, oh. Um, why'd that happen? What? <laughs>